Hello, and welcome again to my YouTube channel. I am May Leitz, also known as Nick Spears. And there's a dog barking outside. I would like to start by saying that earlier today, I saw something very strange. I saw a YouTube video by someone who was claiming like they were ranking it in their top five favorite cartel killings. And in the midst of the video, which I did not think could get more absurd than that, they stopped the video dead to say, cancel culture is actually Stalinism. Dave Chappelle, by getting dates canceled on his tour, uh, is being treated like communist treated people. I thought that this take was so amazing in this video about cartel killings that I just like had an aneurysm in my brain. Like I laughed for about an hour about this. I guess it was the series of images. It was like the first image was like a guy being flayed. Then the second image was Joseph Stalin. And then the third image was Dave Chappelle. And at the end of it, I genuinely asked myself, how did we get here? This was so amazing that I decided to get off my ass and do something with my life. That's right, hello friends, and welcome to the Not Safe for Life Iceberg, sponsored by Plagued Moth, who I believe created it, and I have made some alterations. Okay, isn't that fun? Now we're going to talk about things that you are not safe knowing about. Of course, you would come to me for this. This has gotta be the weirdest way of selling books that anyone has ever devised. But lo, you can buy my book and this is an advertisement for it. I too think that capitalism is strange, which is why I punish Dave Chappelle regularly. Now, let's pretend that you don't know anything about the internet because you're brand new around here. Let's say you just sort of fell out of the womb. Well, the internet is a place where people love to share videos of other people dying so that they can simultaneously laugh about those things and also do this whole stupid, I'm gonna call it racist act of like, well, that doesn't happen here. If there's one thing that the Not Safe for Life community on youtube.com has not yet got around to, it's embracing the fact that a lot of Not Safe for Life content happens right here in the United States. And a lot of it has to do with the police. Uh, Not Safe for Life is kinda exactly what it sounds like. It's stuff that's gonna make your skin crawl because you're going to have to be confronted with the realities, which sucks. See, I used to review movies, which are basically these like things people do with big groups of people like friends, but not really, more employees that they exploit. We'll talk about that later. There's some not safe for life uh, stuff on <laughs> about movies on my list. Anyway, basically, and people try to m like capture the realism of something shocking. And then you've got something like true crime. True crime is a genre basically devoted to learning learning about all the horrible ways in which some innocent person was victimized by uh, some other person. And we all look at this and neuron activation at the, at the real human death and think that we are learning something when in fact we are learning nothing, friends. Don't worry, you're not going to learn anything. Matter of fact, I went ahead and just captured all of this because as I said, all of these videos are pointless. You should not watch any of them. I don't necessarily necessarily think there's much to learn here. <laughs> I know I'm shitting on my own video, but before I finish shitting on my own video, I'd like to tell you five things that you can learn from this Not Safe for Life iceberg. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! <laughs> and I'm just gonna skip all the other stuff. Thing number one, human beings are made of meat. This is an epiphany that we should all have. If you take a cannon and you fill it with meat and then you fire it at a wall, it will splat and be destroyed. This iceberg is essentially a long collection of putting meat in a cannon and firing it at the wall. What do you think you're going to get? You're gonna get exactly what you think. We, human beings are made of meat. There's only so many ways that we can be thrown upon the brick wall. Number two, death is random. Surprise, people die when you least expect it. I mean, sometimes you're like, that, my grandma, you know, she isn't looking too good. Probably got like a couple months left in there. But sometimes you're like, why? 
talking to your car and you're like, oh, fuck. Crazy shit happens every day, all over the place. Honestly, if there's one way to inundate yourself with the concept so that you can get used to it, this is one way to do that. Number three, pain sucks. Don't you hate it when you're being tortured? Personally, I do. I find it to be a garish embarrassment that the United States military is known for doing that. It's okay, apparently all world governments like to torture. Isn't that good? I think it's great. Anyway, so the point is torture is bad and, and we're going to learn that a lot of people in pain is usually bad to see. Is that shocking to anyone? Probably not. Four, some people have really weird hobbies. This one's my favorite because genuinely, until you go down an iceberg like this, you really don't understand the concept that so many people out there really are true weirdos, just like me. Only they're weirdos in ways that I could never Never be because I find it too weird and therefore creepy. However, I like to laugh when someone's doing something that's like their weirdo fascination, but I don't like to laugh when five, the fifth lesson of not safe for life, power is bad. So there was this study a long time ago, okay, called the Stanford Prison Experiment. There are a lot of misconceptions about the Stanford Prison Experiment. Let me tell you about them right now. So a lot of people believe that the Stanford Prison Experiment was meant to teach us or, that absolute power Power corrupts absolutely and maybe this is true maybe that is true what the Stanford prison experiment really teaches us people will do exactly what they believe in their mind that they're supposed to be doing to please the people around them, which includes violence. Violence is tolerable when they believe they're meant to be doing violence. See, I have this theory that if we're told we're bad, that's the only life that we'll ever have. Thank you, Jewel. That was a reference to a Jewel song. So there you go. There's your five lessons of, of not safe for life on the internet. We're made of meat. Death is random, pain sucks, some people have weird hobbies, and power is bad. That's all you need to know. Like, truly, you can click off this video right now. A matter of fact, I genuinely don't feel like you need to be watching any videos about stuff like this, uh, and, and you definitely don't need to hear me tell you about it. Have some expert or scientist tell you about it. If we're gonna go this route, if y'all are gonna stick around and you're gonna listen to me talk about this shit anyway, which I don't recommend, by the way, I recommend that you don't don't do this. But then again, I don't know if I recommend you getting it from any other source on YouTube. If we're going to do this, then we need to do this one big precaution before we jump in. Number one thing, everybody gets it equally. The whole world has to suffer, die, and be miserable. And this is in no way an excuse ever to be racist against any group of people. Number two, being uh, aggressive against queer people is generally bad. And if you've ever watched a lot of Not Safe for Life content, uh, queer people are often the target of violence, which sucks. What have we learned, friends? Let's not be uh, homophobic. And the other thing is like, a lot of YouTubers that talk about stuff like this are constantly prattling on about how they're going to be canceled, or at least how they're criticized for talking about real death and monetizing it. And you know what? I agree. It's kind of shitty to talk about death and monetize it. As someone who's currently monetizing it, I don't feel great about it. I think that one of the general concepts that we keep trying to communicate to people in this world is that Not Safe for Life content is actually about truth. It's about learning how the world actually is. And if it is about truth, then we should make that the number one focus. And we should talk about the the root truth of a lot of the things that we're going to be experiencing here and we're all going to process these things because more than anything what this tells me is we have 20 years of internet trauma that we all have to process because we've all seen this shit it's affected us and then we just moved on so let's not move on let's actually look at the wound and see if we can sew this motherfucker shut Dr. May is in the building and I'm ready to perform surgery. Tier one. Okay, the first thing I'd like to talk about is 9-11. <laughs> 
everybody knows about this because everybody was involved in this because everybody dealt with this and everybody remembers where they were on 9-11. I guess there are probably a lot of young people nowadays who were not born when 9-11 happened. Kind of wild to think about because for my generation, it was like the singular event that defined our entire lives. The reason I put this here is because for many of us, 9-11 was the first time we ever encountered not safe for life content. For instance, I, I frequently say on my podcast that when I was like six years old, I saw people jumping out of the building and crashing onto the ground on 9-11. And that affected my mind. So every time people are like, oh, you've seen a lot of traumatic stuff on the internet, it must have rotted your brain. No, that rotted my brain. I was six years old. <laughs> And I did kind of start a weird quest of death that followed 9-11. Like, the scary stories that tell in the dark books were very, very popular post 9-11 for my generation. And I think in a lot of ways that was because that was people trying to, like, understand and comprehend death and suffering when they were just children. And I think all children would like to obtain this knowledge, and for many of us, it is a rite of passage to know. So we learned on 9-11 that uh, many things are possible. You can just die. <laughs> and also someone can randomly just attack your building with a with a plane and you just won't see that coming even though your government did and they didn't do anything. The funny thing about 9-11 is how you can take it out of context and show it to just about anybody and then put some dumbass political statement following it and then you can try and justify basically whatever you want. War, hatred, xenophobia, racism, all kinds of problems were right there at 9-11. Like, that footage in and of itself has been used to do terrible, terrible things in the United States. It's also been used to do terrible things overseas. So 9-11 is a weird, like, monument to the out-of-context situation. For the majority of Americans, we experienced 9-11 in a vacuum. We were all just vibing, and then this thing happened domestically. But this is not what happened. Like, we had 20 years of war and conflict overseas that led to this, that a lot of people just completely uh, gloss right over. They also gloss over the fact that rampant capitalism in the oil industry had a lot to do with it. There are a lot of variables having to do with like who was in power, what decisions they were making, you know, what led to this. But as Americans, many of us saw 9-11, the shocking nature of it shocked us into a place of racism and xenophobia and warmongering that would define the next 10 years of everyone's lives. In the distant memory, the first not safe for life content because it was was the first content that was both not safe for life and used for purposes that were bad. The next thing on the list is the Abe assassination. The reason I'm putting this on here is because that video was shared goddamn everywhere. Everyone saw it. Everybody was like, whoa, holy shit, that guy just shotgunned that guy. It was everywhere and everyone saw it. I find is common on this iceberg. You know, a lot about this iceberg is like, did you know about this horrible death thing that's caught on camera? But there's a lot of death caught on camera. People have made entire films cutting together footage of people dying on camera. Go look at rodeo accidents for five whole seconds. Have you seen hang gliding incidents? There's this other thing called car racing, which is also known to cause a lot, a lot, a lot of death. <laughs> the thing about death footage is like, a lot of us saw this stuff on the news. Uh, we saw it like parties, like we saw it in compilations, documentaries. I remember Michael Moore used to use a shitload of like really awful, not safe for life, violent content in his documentaries. So everybody just casually saw those. So the Abe assassination was kind of like the last meme assassination, which is crazy to think about, like that there's a meme assassination, but everybody made jokes about this not safe for life content that we all watched. So these two I'd like to start with mostly because one of them deals with like the trauma of our entire generation and the other is 
kind of how we've disseminated that trauma down into jokes. So like there's this theory that goes first as tragedy and then as farce. The idea is that something happens at the beginning of a decade and that thing is tragic. And then at the end of the decade, there's something else and it's, it's, a, it's the same exact level of pain, only it's like humorous. Uh, it can only be seen as a hideous irony, as it's something that we ourselves somehow caused. While all of us were inundated with footage from a political attack when we were children, this influence us in our later life to seek out this stuff for ourselves and understand this stuff for ourselves and even make jokes about it. It's hard to handle being alive. Being alive is a fucking nightmare. None of us asked for this and therefore we have to deal with the trials and tribulations of being alive in the weirdest way ever is how we process that. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up with some of the uh, suggestions from uh, Plague Moths, Not Safe for Life, Iceberg, he's another YouTube uh, you gave me some trauma once. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. We're gonna talk about it later in the iceberg, but you did do that, and I sure didn't like it. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't be friends. I'll be friends with anybody so long as that person doesn't try to, you know, kill me or hurt me in any sort of way. The reason I bring this up in large part is because uh, there's the, the word gore tubers is staring at me, and I'm assuming that what uh, what is meant by gore tubers are people that are like reviewing gore videos, which is a thing now on the internet. As a matter of fact, Vice just wrote an article on YouTubers that review gore content, which is kind of fascinating. Um, I find that a lot of gore tubers, to be honest, have a lot of weird hangups. Like, I have noticed in the gore tubing community, <laughs> the folks that review gore, I find a lot of them really hate Native American people for no reason, and nobody seems to notice. We notice, uh, and we don't love it. The other the thing is that a lot of them are very, very afraid of being canceled, which I think has a lot to do with the fact that they're trying to talk about this stuff. I'm not saying y'all are uncancelable, but I really don't think people are coming after the niche online community of people that look at gore content. Listen, the FBI keeps a record right now of like people's faces that they've seen in child pornography and are actively hunting those people's faces. If your face is not on there, then you have not been canceled. Chill out. <laughs> In a lot of ways, I think that cancellation is something that frequently happens to marginalized people that people see as like disposable because they're like, oh, well, don't really like that person or want them in our community. Perhaps they're autistic. Perhaps they have ADHD. Perhaps they have some sort of debilitating condition of some kind. I mean, I have schizophrenia, so like that in and of itself has been very difficult for me. Uh, <laughs> these videos where they're reviewing gore content is just like schizo posting. It's just the most wild schizo posting you've ever seen in your entire life. So, as an actual schizophrenic, I'm wondering, am I allowed to do some schizo posting? Because if so, I'm going to do some now. All of my content are schizo posts. My book is a schizo post. So get ready, here comes a schizo post. Like, listen, I don't like to be one of those people that hates the newfangled way that things are, but in my day, we watched Traces of Death and stuff like that to, to see death footage, which is great at parties. I will say that, like, <laughs> If you want to have a very, very bad time with a bunch of friends, watching a bunch of like auto racing accidents is a pretty good way to get everybody completely glued to the screen and losing their mind. The reason I brought this up was because I wanted to talk about a very specific Traces of Death like ripoff film. See, when Faces of Death came out and then Traces of Death feature films featuring actual death, uh, there were a lot of knockoffs. There were specific ones about car crashes. There were specific ones about accidents uh, and, and just straight up murders, um, lots of wild stuff, political assassination, news footage, banned from TV. So there's this one called Death Scenes with Anton LaVey as the host. No, I'm not fucking kidding. Anton LaVey hosted this thing and the entire time he's like showing pictures of dead people and he's making jokes about what happened to their like dead body. And you're like, wow, dude, this is so edgy. Notably fun at parties. Let's get on to some actual hardcore, scary, very modern true crime. Uh, Missy Bevers 
is a Middle Othian woman who was murdered and they never found her killer. Now, I know that that doesn't sound particularly interesting. Like, the killer was caught on tape. Now, okay, I want to mention something before we continue. I am not the kind of person that will do the thing where I, like, hold my hand out like this and then I'm like, check this out. And then a video comes up right here and then you have to watch the awful violent thing. See, that's what led to trauma plagued moth. So instead, I'm gonna not do that. That's right. I'm gonna just tell you what happens. So when I was living in Texas, I lived about 20 miles away from Middle Othian in the year 2016. And I remember this case. Very spooky. Guy in like police SWAT outfit walking around a church, uh, basically murdered a woman and then disappeared. Disabilities he maybe had or like different mannerisms, things like that. And then there's a bunch of assumptions to be made that the strange guy hanging around the church in a SWAT outfit probably was the killer, but we don't exactly know what the deal is other than the fact that she was stabbed and he is just never been found. This is of course very, very fun when you're living in this area and you're a woman. Love the fact that this guy is at large which is not good. And the video footage of the guy just like meandering around the church waiting to kill her is pretty uh, scary and spooky and scary and skeletons. So we're gonna move on. Next is the there is nothing video. Okay, everyone's seen this, but it's that scary video of the girl who's like, there is nothing. And then she like puts her head down. We all love this video. That girl is a queen uh, and, and also it's cursed as shit. I think that's the thing that people like about it is that it's cursed as shit. I like it when things are cursed as shit too, guys. Like that's my favorite thing. Now, would I consider this to be not safe for life? I don't know. But I will say that when I was a kid seeing this, I was like, oh boy, howdy. Nihilism. <laughs> Nothing makes one kind of more scared than like a literal omen child being like, hello, there is no God. <laughs> because where I won't believe my funny atheist 15 year old friend, I will absolutely believe a scary little girl on the internet. Next is Kuyang Dayak. I, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. I, as I said, I was from Texas. Uh, I know that's an excuse, but let's pretend for a moment that it's not an excuse and I actually like, I do have a good reason for not being able to pronounce this. Anyway, I do know what this is. Uh, this is a, a person who's just got organs coming down from their head, and it's like a ghost. It's like a spirit, and people apparently become this weird vampire thing when they want to, like, drink the blood of pregnant women or something like that. There's this wild story about it, but either way, there's this old low-resolution video of this thing caught on tape, and it's just sort of laying on a mattress. Now, here's the fun fact about this. This is 100% just somebody, you know, doing this. Um, but either way, it being a low resolution video on the internet reminds me of oh so many things from 2008 that scared the shit out of me back when I was on my MySpace page. Like for instance, oh my God, do y'all remember the fallen angel where people were like, he's in the woods, he's got, he's got wings, there's, there's feathers all over the ground. That shit was real scary, guys. Remember all the alien footage? Remember alien autopsy? Why? Why isn't that on the not safe for life iceberg? Where's alien autopsy? I want to watch people do that autopsy on that alien again. <laughs> All right, so the next thing is World Corp. Now, World Corp is a big topic and it would probably take up like its own video or many videos. I think a lot of people have made videos about this. It is, uh, it is hard to describe what it is. So it's either a band or music project uh, mixed with a weird website, mixed with like an ARG, mixed with weird music videos, mixed with secret videos that apparently potentially contain pet pedophilia and like hurt core stuff like violence against kids it's what they call a rabbit hole you like go in there and you're like what's this about and then by the end of it you're like oh no i don't want to know what this is about anymore so like when i was googling world corp i had many opportunities to dig even deeper in this but i realized at some point that digging in even deeper in it would only lead me to more bad conclusions Either A, this is a real thing where people are sharing videos in, in a sort of secretive sense of child abuse, or it's a fake thing and people are using child abuse as an aesthetic to do their cool uh, music video project. Either one sucks a lot and I don't like it. <laughs> 
so yeah, uh, basically what I wrote in my notes for World Corp was just weird band posts, weird bad videos. And I think that's pretty accurate as to what it is. Do your own looking into this. Maybe one day I'll like look into it further. I don't really see myself doing that. I, I've considered being the kind of YouTuber that talks about internet videos a lot more uh, because they are a lot more popular than film. But also I struggle to find them to be all that interesting after a point. I usually figure out what the deal is and then I can usually run away and never have to deal with uh, knowing about it. Unfortunately, uh, there are things that I do know about, like One Guy, One Jar, which in my notes here, I wrote, Cool Guy has a really weird hobby, which is pretty accurate. Cool Guy has a weird hobby. As I said in rule number four of Not Safe for Life, some people have weird hobbies, and usually these endear them to you. They don't actually really hurt them in your eyes. Like for me, the One Guy, One Jar, uh, dude, you know, he, he and I are cool. Like, I'm never going to be a bitch to that guy. He's just got a really weird hobby, and, like, people give him shit for his weird hobby. Like, leave him alone. Anyway, supposedly he got up from dinner, uh, went in the other room, uh, shoved a jar into his ass. The jar broke, which surprises the audience, but doesn't surprise him. Um, now, the quantity of blood coming out of him may be surprising to him, uh, but it's definitely surprising to us. But either way, we really don't want that to have happened. Like, we really don't want his ass to be filled with glass, which is a strange and very funny thing to say out loud. But apparently, he did. That's right. This guy actually likes uh, cutting his ass with glass, and that was the entire purpose of it. Anyway, he cleaned himself up after this and returned to dinner undetected, which I think is a crazy, fascinating schizo post, my dude. Sounds like some shit I would do. Let's go. All right. Next one is Bianca Devins. This sucks. Um, just, just to say it out loud, just like out in the forefront before we even ever get started, this sucks. Um, this is about an Instagram star who was murdered uh, after going to a Nicole Dollenganger show, which makes too much sense. Okay, jokes aside, Bianca Devins was a uh, an Instagram star who uh, was kind of tricked into this uh, situation where she got in a violent argument with somebody, and that person stabbed her and then uh, attempted suicide. They also took pictures of the stabbing and the stabbing is pretty notable because they take this very pretty Instagram star that you're used to seeing and uh, half decapitate her. So you have to see uh, that, which is bad to see. Now, uh, Instagram and Facebook did a fairly decent job of cleaning up the internet of these images, which I think is cool, but I'm pretty sure they're still out there. A lot of people probably still have them. Uh, they are still very, very bad and people send them to people to shock them all the time, which is pretty sucks because uh, that is someone suffering. And that is also a completely unrelated murder to anything going on on the internet. And the internet kind of has a tendency to take credit for shit like this. Like the internet will be like, oh, well, she was from Instagram. So her death is somehow something that we get to enjoy as a spectacle. And I don't necessarily think that that's true. I generally, I know that this is ironic in the fact that I'm doing a video about extreme true crime, but I find people enjoying other people's death as some kind of spectacle to be kind of shit tier behavior. I don't really like it, to be honest with you. There's nothing all that interesting or entertaining about uh, knowing about that. Um, dudes be killing women. This is not a shock. Matter of fact, I feel like that could have been the secret sixth rule at the beginning of the things to learn is that dudes be killing women in weird ways. And well, it's kind of a power is bad situation. So I guess I already kind of did cover this, but dudes overpowering women and then stabbing them to death is not in any way like a cool or good thing in that it is deeply upsetting and shitty and it should upset you and piss you off. So the fact that a woman just taking pretty pictures of herself is somehow like making herself a target for that kind of abuse is really shitty. Unsurprising to everybody, but something about this not safe for life iceberg was really shitty. <laughs> <laughs> who could have thought who could have figured all right the next thing is called grave robbing for morons this is a video of a guy telling people that uh there are proper ways to grave rob and the entire time he's having this conversation he is holding a human skull this is possibly a student film it looked a little bit like a student film when i was looking at it It looked like a student film that was like shot many years ago shelved and then eventually published uh but it could have been real and if it was real it would have been i mean that's pretty wild but 
I have a feeling that it is a it it, it feels like Jorg Butgerite's like <laughs> student films. If you don't know, know anything about Jorg Butgerite, he directed the Necromantic movies. It feels like that guy's short films. <laughs> That's honestly not all that shocking. If it, it's mostly just like really weird and interesting and gives you a perspective on something that you hadn't already had a perspective on. Now I'm going to uh, add some stuff to this list. Now <laughs> I'm sorry, but here's some fun bonus stuff for you to know about. You can take this home and share it with your friends. The first is the, I, I just wrote rotten meat guy, but basically there's this guy on YouTube who he has the most goaded meat. He has the most based meat. That's right. And that's right. It is just meat that has rotted. He will pick the, the bugs out of it, cook that shit, grill that shit, and eat that shit. And he loves it. So first off, I want to say thanks, Laura. I was in the middle of doing my own bullshit, you know, minding my own fucking business. And then you sent me this bullshit bullshit and I thought about it for days. I matter of fact I was driving and I dry heaved thinking about it while I was driving my car. So if I would have died in that moment it would have been your fault. Um don't eat rotten meat. That's really nasty. You don't have to go very far to see stuff that would genuinely upset the ever loving shit out of you if you knew it was real. Like a lot of accident footage is right here on YouTube. Old documentaries about death and destruction not hard to find. They're right here on the surface web right here on YouTube. YouTube. But that rotten meat guy, he's he's like active right now. How long he's going to be active, I don't know. I can't imagine he can keep this up. More power to you, dude, with your goaded based meat. Okay, to talk about something serious, the next thing is the Twilight Zone incident. So if you don't know about the Twilight Zone incident, uh, it is the Twilight Zone the movie incident, not to be confused with the TV show. The TV show did nothing wrong. Everything about it was perfect. But when they went to make the, uh, the, the feature film, a bunch of 80s directors, more or less, like got together to m kind of polish up some of their favorite Twilight Zone episodes and make them uh, better or make them cool or make them goaded or based. So in trying to make their segments goaded, a lot of decisions were made that were very, very bad. For instance, Steven Spielberg, who was producing the film, allowed John Landis, the director of his segment, to more or less make all of the decisions on his project. This isn't like a totally terrible thing, except for the fact that three people died. So uh, essentially, like John Landis wanted to make this segment of the Twilight Zone movie about a guy who's a racist experiencing racism throughout the ages, and then he eventually has to save some children who are like Asian, uh, meant to show his arc that he's learned that racism is bad or something. So in his like climactic moment of realizing that racism is bad or whatever, a helicopter is meant to fly down and try to attack him as he's protecting these two children. Well, the pyrotechnics got a bit too close to the helicopter. Helicopter came straight down onto those actors and killed them. <laughs> Uh, and this was, of course, all caught on tape, which you can watch on YouTube.com right now. That's right. It's available for everyone to see. And I would like to clarify a couple things about this. First off, many people on the set were saying that they were definitely going to be arrested for doing this uh, because A, they were using too many pyrotechnics. B, hired uh, children to work on the movie, paying them cash under the table, then told them not to tell the fire marshals on set they they like lied to everyone around to try and tell them that these kids were not actually working then in the middle of the night pretty much this cataclysmic thing occur like these kids who were paid under the table illegally working against the standards of even hollywood were killed like they they were killed in this horrible incident because of negligence on the part of the filmmakers so every time somebody's like well john Landis didn't do anything wrong. He did, actually. He he super did. And fun fact about Spielberg, he left the country immediately when he found out this happened. Why, what, why did that happen? What's up with that? Did he know? Do you think he knew, guys? The next thing is Bud Dwyer. That's right. Guess who it is? It's everyone's favorite guy. Bud Dwyer is not that interesting. He's just the first big thing like this, which is to say, like, suicide caught on the news. Like, he was just on the news and he was like, like, hold on, everybody. This is not about you. I have fucked up my financials. I am going to blow out my brains now. And then he did on camera and everyone watched.
watched. And like uh, the the fucked up thing about the Bud Dwyer video is like as you're watching it, you genuinely don't think he's gonna do it until the moment that he does every single time, and you're just like, whoa, he actually did it. I feel like I've seen the Bud Dwyer. <laughs> shooting thing uh, a lot of times in my life probably because like every metal band ever is like this is the thing we put in our music video either way i'm not complaining i mean uh it's it, it's something i feel like it's a rite of passage you see this thing and you're like whoa that's crazy uh it's the first whoa that's crazy of the internet i guess there was this book i was reading a while back called scan lines that was more or less about people that were traumatized by having seen this when they were children and and I found the book to be very much bullshit. Maybe it's good uh, in the end, but I sure didn't make it that far because about halfway through it, I was like, this is, and I put it down. Um, but either way, Bud Dwyer is like a mythical figure of not safe for life, like uh, content. Uh, I don't understand the concept of lionizing anyone really, but uh, Bud Dwyer, yeah, he's everyone's favorite guy. Do with that what you may. <laughs> So the next thing I wanted to talk about was Iraq war footage, which is available to all of us. All right, so we talked about 9-11 at the beginning of this tier, and like the, the thing about 9-11 is you never see the after effect of it in immediacy. Like you'll always see the terrorist attack, and then you never see the moment afterward where you get the decade of bombings of children being murdered by soldiers, rape and murder overseas, capitalist profiteering, off of the war, every single aspect of it is bad. 9-11 seems to symbolize how America felt, but it doesn't actually symbolize what America did. I mean, if you were growing up in the 2000s, then if you watched the television news, like 24-hour news, you saw people die in war on the news. Like, they showed that shit all the time. Uh, like, a lot of people were not deeply affected by that because they kind of felt vindicated like they were watching it going yes good we yes we should kill them that's what and like when I was a kid I was just horrified that people were killing each other like this as I grew up I started to see increasingly more horrific acts of war demonstrated on film saw the horrors for what they truly were <laughs> I feel like watching war footage is very eye-opening because it's like the anti-Green Berets. So the Green Berets was a movie that John Wayne like set to produce to encourage people to go to Vietnam to become meat for machine guns, which super, super sucks. Fuck you, John Wayne. You were probably a white supremacist. Who am I kidding? You literally said you were a white supremacist. Anyway, encouraging people to go and die in a war, you know, is pretty shit uh, because most people don't don't know what war actually entails. So when people make war propaganda, they're usually showing soldiers like going into towns and giving people crackers and diapers and shit like that. But the reality is uh, is more what you can actually just go out there and see. You, you, you should probably have seen some of it because it's pretty fucking gnarly. I think the thing that a lot of people say about the Vietnam War is that no one was ready to actually see what that war looked like. So every time anybody was in support of it, they weren't in support of it long before they saw something and went, oh, Oh shit, maybe this is bad. The same thing is true of Iraq, where it's like, you can support Iraq all day long, but if you watch videos of some of those bombings, yeah, you'll change your tune uh, real fast. Okay, the next thing, we only got two more on tier one, so Jasmine Fior. A lot of people don't know about this. There was a show on VH1. There were actually a couple of shows. They were reality shows where a guy kind of met this model. And over the course of time, in between bouncing between different shows, uh, the guy kind of started to lose his mind because the scrutiny of being on TV um, and also just generally uh, hating her and having just a really warped sense of things anyway, as was demonstrated by him being on camera. You can literally watch this this person go through a season of TV, he absolutely murdered Jasmine Fior and then killed himself. So if you ever want to know more about the, the price of visibility, you know, sometimes VH1 will take a person who could potentially be a total murderer and then just put them on TV in front of millions of people, make them famous, and then this shit happens. Reality TV, it turns out, um, was a fun idea, quickly became a 
huge part of the American cinematic vernacular, but it definitely is not without its bloodshed. There are many people who have died who have been in rela- like in relation to reality TV, but there's a lot more. If you ever want just something spicy to look at, you should just Google deaths related to reality TV. Wow. <laughs> okay, and now we have arrived at the last thing on tier one. That's right, SRS footage. So, did you know that many people trans their gender? That's right. Um, This is not a shocking or surprising concept as it has been around since the dawn of man or woman. (laughs) Well, I guess it's been since the 70s now. People have used SRS footage or footage of people getting their surgery as like shocking footage to kind of demonize queer people uh, and and also to be like, ew, uh, it's so nasty. They're getting their, uh, but their genitals, hot take. It's cool, actually. That's right. Right. That footage, that footage that people keep sending me and being like, is this you? Yeah, it's cool, actually. I like it. Personally, I think that we should be supporting shit like this. And also, maybe it's good that you saw that. You know, medical procedures you know, are pretty commonplace. Like, a lot of people get medical procedures. This is not shocking. And a lot of people have pre-existing conditions that require medical procedures. It's just a medical procedure, my dude. You can't scare me with a medical procedure. I've done seen that shit. You know, years ago, people used to show me, like, trans surgery footage to scare me as if, like, this was going to make me less trans or something. But it didn't work. I I am still here. So yeah, your SRS footage does not scare me. It should not scare anyone. It is cool, actually, and good. So, like, uh, yeah, bring it on, the not safe for life iceberg. (laughs) Like, I could give a shit. I guess we're gonna move on to tier two now. Maybe we take a tiny little breather and we come right on back. Well, look who's back for tier two and I changed my shirt. I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, clearly that means that it's a different day. But no, no, same day. I literally just had to run out and then I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I put on something nice and fresh that was like pretty, you know, and colorful for the death video? I thought it would be a good idea. Okay, welcome to tier two of the motherfucking playlist from hell, the nightmare blunt rotation to end all nightmare blunt rotations. The first (laughs) video on the not safe for life iceberg. What killed the dinosaurs? The ice age. Uh, which, yes, I'm gonna keep making Mr. Freeze jokes throughout the video because icebergs are very funny. Anyway, the first video is the Mandela Catalog. (laughs) Okay, so the Mandela Catalog is genuinely one of the coolest things on this list, but it absolutely does not deserve to be here. (laughs) Uh, I think the reason that it's here is because it advocates for suicide. You're gonna have to try harder than that, sister. (laughs) You're gonna have to defeat me, and I'm the final boss of suicide. (laughs) No, the Mandela Catalog is like an art piece created by uh, supposedly one person that's like what the people what the kids are calling analog horror which is to say it's like horror based on like old media and and shit like that's like found footage that's like you found a weird VHS tape and it was about this thing the Mandela catalog is basically telling everybody that there are versions of themselves that exist that are not themselves and if they ever see their doppelganger they have to kill them because there can only be one and if they can't kill their doppelganger they have to kill themselves once again because there can only be one. This is very funny. Uh, the, <laughs> the second thing about it is that if you see somebody with an impossible physical feature, then that person also must be eliminated. So uh, if you see somebody like, I have this nightmare, this reoccurring nightmare, I'll just tell y'all. I have this reoccurring nightmare, it happens to me almost every night, where I am chased by a person whose eyes are slowly separating from the center of their face. That would be what they're talking about. If I ever see that in real life, I need to kill that motherfucker immediately. Anyway, it's very, it's very creepy. Uh, there was a, like two or three moments in it where I paused it to go uh, get a cookie and eat the cookie because I was disturbed. So, so it's so scary. You might need a cookie. It, you know, the funny thing about this, this whole list, this whole vibe, is that we go from zero to one hundred so fast uh, on this goddamn list. Uh, the first one being the Mandela catalog, something somebody made that is kind of spooky but it is an ARG to Mr. Hands the video about the guy who fucks a horse. So like you see what I mean about the jump in content quality here? It's a different sort of thing. Um, The Mr. Hands video yeah homie uh, sure does fuck a horse and I think that 
that is primarily the thing that's disturbing. Supposedly, the guy who did it uh, had a, a thing where he just couldn't feel an awful lot, or he said that he couldn't feel an awful lot. He didn't have a lot of sensory, so he was constantly challenging himself to do uh, bigger and crazier things. And so taking dick from a horse was apparently one of those big, crazy things. And he did it a couple of times, apparently, uh, before it inevitably killed him. But yeah, homeboy does die from being fucked by a horse, which honestly I think is the most appropriate way for someone like him to have died. I can't think of a better way, really. And I'm sure as he was laying there dying, he was thinking, shit, getting fucked by a horse to death sure is one hell of a way to go. Uh, personally, I think bestiality is horrible and you probably shouldn't try it. It feels like there are many other hobbies. You could go to Hobby Lobby. Well, don't go to Hobby Lobby. Go to like Michael's. Well, I don't know. Is Michael's good? Is Joanne's good? I don't know. Anyway, go to Walmart. Well, Walmart's not great. Go somewhere and get yourself some fucking beads. Make, get some beads. Make some... Look at this. This is cute. Don't fuck a horse. Next... <laughs> Next video. Ah, we have the Eugene Armstrong beheading. All right, so this is like one of those beheadings to end all beheadings. It's like, you you remember when there were beheading videos coming out of like, coming out of the Middle East? Well, this is like one of the OG beheading videos uh, done by Zarkawe, who is fairly well known for doing beheadings. He did many, many, many beheadings. What the fuck is this? Oh my God, it, am I streaming right now? I don't, who is this person? Congratulations on subscribing. I hope no one else subscribes while I'm on this goddamn... Anyway, so, yeah, uh, there were a bunch of people that were kidnapped and uh, and beheaded, but this was the uh, the first beheading, supposedly, uh, and it is a gnarly one. It's a bad one. They sure they sure do it to the guy. I, I think beheadings are interesting because just like the Bud Dwyer shooting, you really don't think it's going to happen until it actually happens. You genuinely are like, there's no way they're going to get that head off that guy. And then they get the head off the guy, and you're like, wow, they got a head off a guy. Guy. So genuinely, uh, you know, a, a lot of people do this thing where they're like, you know, ISIS sure was bad, but you gotta hand it to him. I'm not gonna be doing any of that. There's like a drill tweet someone sent me earlier where they were like, I'm sorry, I'd like to apologize. You absolutely do not gotta hand it to him. <laughs> like, there's no... Yeah, okay, so they're amazing at beheading people. Congratulations. Like, I'm sure many people are great at many strange things uh, that are horrible. We should probably not be... Uh, getting too uh, excited. It's kind of like the cartel. You know, a lot of people are like, they're so creative. No, they're not. Like, <laughs> no, they're not. Like, like there are plenty of ways to be creative. I, I don't think that destruction is necessarily a, a, a complex, creative, exciting endeavor. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've been looking at art in a closed-minded way my entire life, and I need to look at what the cartel's doing over there and be like, ah, oh, yes, art. Uh, no, I, I absolutely do not gotta hand it to him. Uh, Zarkawe was probably a bad dude given the fact that he was cutting people's heads off. Now the nuance here is that America is also a pretty bad dude because they were bombing civilians. Um, everybody's wrong and we get to move on. It isn't that great. We don't have to talk about this particular beheading again. Ah, the Russian brick video. We have arrived Plague Moth at your time in the light. Now understand that you and I have a good little experience change going here. I'm using your iceberg and you're upsetting my brain. We're both happy. However, I would like to say I thought that it was a bit fucked up of you to just deadass play this Russian brick video, like in your video, because uh, like autoplay happens and I was like on... <laughs> I was like working on something and I couldn't just like turn to my TV and shut it off. So it just like happened and I didn't need to see it. So, so uh, that really sucked. And I don't think that people quite understand how putting something like non-consensual like that, uh, that's, that's horrible, uh, into people's televisions on some sort of automatic play could potentially be harmful for their brains. I wasn't a big fan of it. I'm not going to cry about it because like Lord knows I've seen plenty Plenty of fucked up things on the internet. But my dude, like, be a little gentle. <laughs> Please go easy. <laughs>
The Russian brick video is very bad because it is like a demonstration of one of the very, very bad things that I dislike about uh, being alive, which is that sometimes when you're driving down the street, something that can fly out of somewhere not moving and you can crash into it at like 80 miles per hour and just completely annihilate your face. So try really hard not to crash into any unmoving bricks flying out of the back of cars. I intentionally avoid driving behind anyone ever because of this. Like I will stay like 20 car lengths back like an old scared grandma because I have the what the kids call CPTSD. <laughs> I know that if you're at home you're going wow this bitch has all of the mental illnesses and yes absolutely I've been collecting the Pokemon chart this whole fucking time and I'm about to black out this bingo card bitch. The video itself is weird because there's no visible gore in the video. You just hear a family react to the very sudden death of their mother and it's bad. So don't listen to it. Uh, it'll make you feel ill both inside and outside of your body. Uh, there's still definitely a part of me that thinks I'm going to wake up on a couch on mushrooms and have never heard that video. And I would sure love it if that were my reality, but I don't think it's going to be. I think I'm going to continue living. So let's keep moving. The next video is called Check Clear, which I've learned very recently is kind of a big ass meme. I didn't know this when people were sending me this on the internet to try and harass me like a decade ago. It was actually like a funny meme for people. But no, so Check Clear is is a video that is 15 seconds in length, very gifable uh, of a of a man putting his boot on someone's head and then killing a man with a knife. Bad to kill someone, so uh, obviously the video goes in the dumpster, but uh, also it is the original out of context bad surprise. The thing about all of these videos is the, they all have this one thing in common, which is people from the shittier parts of the internet have absolutely used these videos as like a gotcha many, many, many times to random people on the internet that they dislike. For a long time, people did not like me. They sent me the check clear video many, many times and I absolutely did not not click on it because I'm a smart, savvy internet user. Just kidding, I absolutely watched it many times. <laughs> E either way, it's always a bad surprise and you never really want to see it. And when you're seeing it, you're always like, ah, shit, it's check clear. God damn it. Anyway, it's 15 seconds long. And I know that you're thinking, well, 15 seconds, how bad can it be? Very bad. Very bad things can happen in 15 seconds, it turns out. Like the check clear video, for instance. Only 15 seconds, still got the trauma. The next thing is called tailstrike.com. That sounds pretty bad because it is bad. Flight logs. Uh, if you don't know what those are, uh, apparently I learned about them from this book called Survivor by Cuck Palahniuk. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saving that joke for so long and I finally got to say it and now I've completely ruined it because I laughed. Anyway, Cuck Palahniuk. <laughs> Isn't that great? Come on, laugh at me. He wrote Fight Club. Or Ch Cuck Palahniuk wrote, wrote Fuck Club. I learned about uh, flight logs from this book called Survivor by Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, anyway, it's basically the last messages people leave shortly before they die. Like, a flight recorder will record, like, everything going on in a cockpit, just for posterity's sake, so that uh, people don't get sued or whatever, I guess. Uh, in the event of some sort of emergency, they can hear the emergency procedures, all the things. Either way, there are many, 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 many bad, bad plane accidents and plane crashes and luckily somebody compiled all of the audio of the last moments of those uh, so that you can just listen to them. And I know that that's great to do. Um, good for your brain to listen to people die all day long. So yeah, tailstrike.com. Cartel TikTok. Ah, did you know that your faves had a TikTok? Now you do. I sure don't understand why people are glorifying the shit out of the cartel these days as they are rampant capitalist murderers. Let's pretend that they're not. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and let's that the most fucked up element of this entire thing is that it turns out people that kill people are also still weirdly normal like they can continue to kill people and be normal isn't that just kind of a weird thing like that people can do shit that extreme and then just go right back to their normal lives the cartel definitely uh, has somewhat of a presence on TikTok whether it be for recruiting or intimidation and I'm going to throw in something here 
we're probably going to end up talking about this a lot throughout this iceberg because it's like one of my weird pet things that I know about. There's this thing called the School of Americas, which I highly recommend everybody look into. You should look into it immediately. Uh, please look into it immediately. <laughs> the School of the Americas was a school uh, set up by the United States to teach Latin America and their soldiers how to uh, torture and kill communists. Because we've been trying to protect capitalism in South America for such a long time, we will institute uh, capitalist leaders uh, to try and replace like communist ones. We're supposedly juggling a bunch of coups all the time from communist leaders trying to oust the capitalist leaders. So because of that, a long ass time ago, the United States was like, we're setting up a foundation to teach other people how to torture communists so that other people will also torture them. And then we'll make videos about how we torture torture them, and then people will stop being communists. But guess what? It didn't fucking work, did it? That's right. Joseph Stalin, Dave Chappelle. Political correctness is just Stalinism, and it's hurting Dave Chappelle. Because the capitalists are so scared that Dave Chappelle is going to get canceled by Stalinists, they've set up this, like, school where they teach people how to do some of the craziest killing imaginable for the purposes of intimidation. So a lot of the torture tactics and a lot of the, like, murder tactics that you're seeing from the cartel are actually like long forgotten tactics by the school of the americas silently haunting south america for a very long time matter of fact there is some debate as to whether or not the the funky town gore video which we'll talk about way later was actually shot at one of the locations of the school of the americas uh which is supposedly owned by the cartel so that would make a lot of sense if they were all somehow weirdly tied together in a lot of ways the cartel is like silently leading a lot of areas of that neck of the woods and they're doing so uh, through tactics that the U.S. government gave them and through a lot of permissions that the U.S. government is giving them. So I think a lot of people uh, should look into the weird connection between the U.S. government teaching people to kill communists and the rampant capitalism of the cartel happening over in South America. Anyway, look that up sometime, you know, when you're, when you're bored. So so next time you're like, oh yeah, the cartel, they sure are brutal. They're really, really bad. They learned it from watching white people. Yay, white people, the true creators of murder. Next thing, the putrid sex object. That's right, Putrid Sex Object is a fun sex movie for porno to have sex with. Luckily, you know, you gotta have a couple of really fucked up uh, sex things on here. And and I honestly, I'm, I, I'm all about the sex things. Not because I personally am sexual, I am not all that sexual, but think that, uh, <laughs> I think that people having weird hobbies is fun. I mentioned this in my, in my like ranked list. I was like number four, people have weird hobbies. Well, one of them is making really weird porn. So Putrid Sex Object is really weird porn about a, a femme person with a penis having sex with an animal skull, which is amazing. And I know you're thinking, well, that's not that shocking. Well, what if it was freshly that way and a lot of the meat was still on it? So it's kind of weirdly zoo necrophilic. Is that a word? I don't like that aspect of it. It, it just makes a lot of really, really weird noises and it's kind of nasty and at the end you're kind of amazed because she's able to achieve orgasm and you're like bitch how there's like a lot of things going on with this one i i would highly recommend you you check this one out whenever you're whenever you've got your friends over and you're all enjoying some some sex films try putrid sex object next time just to see how your friends will favor with it i'm sure they'll love it and you for showing them next up is zooier than thou which i guess has been talked about to death a lot of people have been talking about this lately but it's apparently just a podcast that exists right now about people who are interested in animal perversions. So uh, people who would like to uh, have a sex with an animal or would like an animal to have sex with them, uh, luckily there's a podcast for that. It's just people that sit around and talk about how they like to do that. Like if that's disturbing for you, perhaps uh, more than anything, it's just kind of like people taking jokes very, very far, really weird. But they also have their own like weird language and there's like, there's like a whole bunch of variables to it. Uh, 
that's strange and weird and worth looking into if horrified by something like that. The things that people do to animals, like to be honest with you on the internet, fuck horrible. And I've been trying to fight this for a very long time. A lot of people think that like I talk about cannibal holocaust a lot because I like to glorify shit or something like that. Uh, and while I do think that that's interesting, I, I must admit, I dislike that that happened in that film. Very much so. I also dislike that it happens in any film. And I've gotten in a lot of trouble in the past for calling out animal abuse in films that I've seen. And I've gotten, I've gotten in a lot of public trouble for that. I'm fine with this. Like, I'm okay with it. I'm completely okay with people who abuse animals not liking me because I think that it sucks that you do that to animals. So, uh, fuck this whole, uh, neck, uh, like, what, it, what is this called? Fuck this. That's what I mean to say. Fuck this. Okay, the next thing is surviving shotgun suicide. Okay, so there's like a lot of videos uh, on the internet of people who attempt suicide by shotgun but do not die. Uh, and, and of course this is bad because then they're like, oh no, my face, where did it go? It's over there and over there and over there. Dying by suicide is not the worst thing that can happen. You can also survive suicide and that'd be much worse for you. Uh, notably, there's this one thing from Traces of Death. It's very brief, but... Uh, uh, you can see it elsewhere on the internet, and it's much more interesting if you see it elsewhere, where there was a, a guy and his homie were listening to Judas Priest. They decided that the music by Judas Priest was encouraging them to end it all, so they decided to end it all. Uh, one of them uh, shot themselves in the head and succeeded and died, and the other one shot himself with a shotgun and just blew his face off but did not die. And then they later reconstructed his face. Of course, this was all in vain because a couple years later he killed himself with pills or some other uh, means, something a little bit more innocuous, I, I suppose. There's nothing that innocuous about, about organ failure. Either way, I think that it's very, very funny that they said that Judas Priest themselves were somehow to blame for this. Like, I, I made a joke earlier about how uh, Nicole Dollenganger hypnotizes people into doing murder, but I did that because that was funny. I don't actually believe that. Uh, I think that Nicole Dollenganger is mostly criticizable because her music is, is a little bit uh yikes but judas priest on the other hand is is just some gay shit uh home home homie is gay he, look at all that leather that man is gay as sin you wanted to kill yourself because that man told you to oh man like <laughs> i just i genuinely am of the mind that if you're killing yourselves because of anybody told you to do it that's a pretty weak choice that's like a pretty pretty lame choice there are better things to be doing and also i don't listen to people when they tell me what to do Go fuck yourself. Anyway, so what this boy should have probably done was tell the ghost of Judas Priest that was telling him to kill himself to go fuck itself, but instead he did blow his face off. Uh, and there's many, many, many memes about it. Uh, I I don't really enjoy the, the concept of, like, you know, enjoying somebody's suffering too much, but I will say there's been a lot of very bad <laughs> surviving the shotgun blast sort of videos on the internet. It is a unpleasant thing that happens to people. If I were you, I would avoid I would avoid doing that if at all possible. So yeah, uh, that that is that is all that really is to be said about that. Just like apparently don't listen to Judas Priest uh, or or else. And then I'm just gonna add the Bjork stalker thing here, which I talked about on my iceberg, but uh, my movie iceberg. Isn't that funny? What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. <laughs> There was one about cinema, and we ended up talking about this bullshit anyway. So here we are, back at this bullshit. Um, but Bjork, the Bjork stalker, uh, yeah, I, uh, Bjork was dating Goldie at the time. He, uh, the, the stalker, uh, mailed a bomb, but it did not reach anybody or cause any damage, I believe. And then he shot himself. It, people have memed it. It's like it's like the Bud Dwyer thing. So it's fucking weird to me how like we've decided to meme a lot of these like these first two. T Tears of like bad not safe for life content they're just memes like they're just memes that people have shared on the internet for the last like 20 years we are going to get into weirder stuff there's a lot of weirder stuff as it goes down there's a lot of hardcore uh terrible things on there and then at the very bottom of the list we have a bunch of shit that i'm probably just gonna not cover because why would i want to like who the fuck wants to talk about child trampling not me i don't want to see it and i don't want to know it's real uh now i i'm aware that it's 
real. There's a lot of horrible like stuff that happens to kids on the internet, just like there's a bunch of bad stuff that happens to animals on the internet. You can go ahead and assume, extrapolate if you will, that if a bad thing happens to an adult, it is also possible to happen to a kid, and seeing it happen to a kid is not very good for your mind. So I personally would avoid uh, fucking with anything like that. And also, I would like to mention once again that the FBI currently keeps a list of, of images of people that they have seen in child porn videos. Like, they'll just screenshot a child porn video with, like, a dude's face or, like, a hurtcore video or shit like that. And then they'll just find that motherfucker. Good. Find that motherfucker. <laughs> There's no really great reason why a YouTuber, especially one like me, needs to be talking about shit that is the FBI's fucking concern. So I don't have, like, a whole lot of, uh, I don't, I don't really want to go into it, if that makes sense. Because, like, it's not, uh, something I feel like anybody can make any entertainment about, and you're pretty much just saying the exact same thing the whole time, which is, like, cautionary, don't look this up, Google this, don't do this, don't look at this, I haven't seen this, I'm never gonna look at this. The reality is, you can't see any of this shit, uh, without really, really looking. Nobody should be really, really looking. I don't even know what goes into really, really looking. The, the only thing I'll say about that as far as, like, where we're going is, like, I'm pretty much gonna do my absolute best to avoid talking about anything doesn't, like... <laughs> have some sort of like internet grit. This is a this is really truly an iceberg about internet grit. It's not really about um, the depth of the atrocities that can be committed on the internet because we all know what can be done on the internet. Why would we want to know what can be done if what has what has happened that is either strange or violent or somehow meaningful? Uh, if it's something like that, I, I'm absolutely not interested in it and that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, and so when you conveniently see that I've deleted a lot of this shit off of this iceberg, it's because I am, as the kids say, too much of a pussy to talk about it. And by that, I mean I think that it's fucking lame and worthless, and I don't want to talk about it. And with that, I would like to say thank you for coming along on with me to this on this journey to, to filth and absolute horrors. Uh, I have better content that is both currently being made uh, on the internet right now Right now and waiting to be published because it's been copyright claimed so don't worry content better than this does exist by me on the internet please go enjoy it and also as I said this was a very strange and covert way to sell my book fluids which does have a dead bird on the cover so you know it's within your interests there will be links in the description but also please if you could go down hit subscribe hit like on this video share this with some friends uh, you know friends you dislike, perhaps. Friends that you would like to see harmed in some sort of way. Uh, if, if you have a friend that you're like, yeah, I hate that bitch. She's got an ugly hoe face. Then send her this video and give her a really bad case of goosebumps. Also, if you love what I do, consider supporting me on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Nixfears. I know everybody's got a Patreon and uh, I don't love the idea of monetizing a lot of this stuff, but I do think that there is some fun in talking about it. And if you think that there's some fun in talking about it, you must think that there's a little bit of fun in me. And if you think that I'm fun, perhaps giving me a dollar, open up some new possibilities, huh? Think about it. So I'll see you next time when we're talking about something probably worse. I would also like to give one last brief shout out to my music. I have an album uh, called My Dead Neopets uh, by May Leets coming out on Halloween. I'm very excited about it. Please go check it out. I, I worked really hard on it for like the last three months. So I uh, really care about that one. Um, um, check it out. Anyway, uh, I'll see you next time. Um, and hopefully by then I haven't been turned into some horrific not safe for life video for you to enjoy. Just imagine me, your friend May. <laughs> anyway, this has been healthy. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. Wow, hello, and welcome back to the literal weirdest way to sell books that anyone has ever, ever come up with. Hi, I'm still May Leitz, or Nick Spears, and this is part two of the Not Safe for Life iceberg. Now, if you are unfamiliar with what happened last time, I highly recommend you do not watch that video. I am making yet another video for you to attempt to fall asleep to and then fail. So uh, online, a couple people said a thing where they were like, 
clearly, if May is doing this iceberg, then May has become jaded. And I just want you to know, I'm not jaded. You are. That's right, bitch. I'm a bloomer, okay? You know, we, we used to look at stuff like this and get all doomery and shit. I look at all this shit and I get all bloomery now. I'm like, that's right. Fucking fuck despair. Let's go. Like, I'll fucking throw hands with despair any day of the week. More than anything, I think going down this list is a, is a pretty decent way of us all picking up arms and fighting despair head on and actually winning. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to recap a couple of little things, like specifically the things to learn about not safe for life content. As I said prior, there's not really much to learn here. And so because there's not an awful lot to learn, it's questionable whether you should even be sitting here watching this or laying there trying to fall asleep while listening to this. It's okay. So the things to learn are as follows. Number one, did you know that human beings are made of meat? Yes, it's true. If you really, really look at it, human beings are just kind of meaty tissue that can be uh, absolutely destroyed. So, you know, I guess that's fun. I mean, if you're in to see people get their meat fucked up, I guess then that's okay. That's pretty easy. Number two, death is random. Sometimes you're like, I really want this person to live forever. And then they don't. It does happen. And it is heartbreaking. And it's a reality that we should be aware of. But once again, we don't despair. We tell the people that we love, we love them because we know we might never see them again. This is just the reality. Number three, pain sucks. Yeah, uh, torture bad, actually. And uh, if you want to, if you want to see tangible, real world examples of torture being bad, welcome. You fucking found the right place. You found the exact right place. Number four, some people have really weird hobbies. It's not that they're psychopaths whatsoever. You know, they just got a weird fetish. They just got a weird hobby. And over here at Nick Spheres, we don't kink shame unless it's like predatory, right? And number five, predatory stuff sucks. Power, it turns out, is bad. Even in a microcosm, if some dude has power over a woman and then murders her and is like, here's the video, I posted it to the internet, what is satisfying about that at all? I'll tell you what, fucking nothing. It's just a bummer to know that people can overpower other people and kill them at any given moment. So yeah, you, you learn by watching this that power, it turns out, is very, very bad. Bad for your brain, bad for your meat body, and also bad for your soul. Now, before we get too deep into this, I'm gonna do something I never do, which is I'm gonna I'm gonna e-beg, I'm gonna ask you at home to go ahead and like this video of which content you have not even seen yet, and also consider subscribing to me, a YouTuber you've never heard of. Uh, if you could do that before we even start, I think that'd be fantastic. You know, uh, I understand withholding one's like and subscription until they have been given a good video. Well, in that case, get the fuck ready because I'm about to give you a buck wild video. I'm about to give you a video that will haunt your nightmares forever. And you know what? I'm never even going to show a single fucking thing. Okay, I lied. I am going to show you this thing. My main goal is to blow up. Okay, but understand that the reason I showed you that thing is I have recently decided to blow up on the internet and act like I don't know nobody. I've also decided that it's time to become a lesbian farmer in the middle of nowhere. So, in order for me to do that, I need to blow the fuck up on the internet. My music needs to really take off and people need to buy this fucking book. And so I was looking at the book and I was thinking, how the fuck do we do this? How do we sell this book to the masses? And clearly the answer is talking about death and putrid porn for hours. Are you excited? I'm excited. Without further ado, let's just get the fuck into it. I know that y'all are hype. It's tier three. Welcome to part two, bitch. It gets worse. All right, friends. So we learned a lot of shit in the last episode. Like we learned tons of stuff about human behavior. Our favorite little thing to learn about. One of the basic tenements of life on earth, a thing that many of us up until that moment probably hadn't considered. But that's that a lot of people have very, very weird hobbies. The the human behavior itself, in a completely non-sexually gratifying way, is just kind of a really weird hobby. 
Like, it's just a weird thing that people know about and the, a weird thing that people do. Tier 3 in specific is very much about some weird proclivities that human beings just can't seem to help but have. And so the best way to start off with that is with Gusso Milk, which is an extreme scat porn video. Okay, it's actually a couple of those. I believe there are sequels. Amazing, uh, amazing uh, talent on display here. I The thing about Gusso Milk in specific and the thing that I will never not remember about it is there's like a part where a bunch of people fire milk out of their ass like just just firing milk out of their ass and I think that genuinely is so amazing that in and of itself it doesn't seem to trip me up too bad I'm like you know what I'm kind of here for it like imagine the creativity required to really think to yourself holy shit I think I do really want to want to learn how to reverse my milk enema I'm just saying and it takes quite a person uh, to get four of their friends together and be like, hey guys, I've got a really wild idea. And see, I think the internet is amazing because it means that people with really strange behavior can, can just like meet each other and then they can have fun. And I think that's great. We're gonna talk about Armin Muse later. He, he's like a homie that did exactly this. He was like, I love the internet. I get to meet exactly the kind of person that I want in my life, you know, to end it. But yeah, I mean, it goes goes without saying that this is pretty not safe for life because like I don't know anyone who would watch this and then be like yeah I'm healthy like yeah I'm fine this is normal I'm normal and everything's good I'm not necessarily saying that it's the worst thing in the world it's not the worst thing in the world uh it is just really really strange now as I said in the last thing I am in no way showing you any images from any of this stuff because in the past I saw something that I was not prepared to see on youtube.com Com, and it tripped me up so bad that like genuinely I was like fucked up for a couple months So like I had to like get over that kind of shit It's a different thing for everybody The thing I was talking about last video was that the Russian brick video got stuck on my TV And I couldn't shut it off and it freaked me out Well, I feel like you never know what kind of thing is gonna be the thing that really pushes somebody over the edge uh, And makes them feel you know like shit or they get some trauma or you know generally have a, a shitty outlook on life because of something they've seen. This totally happens. Matter of fact, in my comments section, a lot of people were talking last time about they have engaged with shit like this for years and have only just started to really analyze why they were engaging with it and what exactly it was doing to them. But the thing I have been arguing this whole time is that it, I don't think that Not Safe for Life content is doing anything to you besides just telling you what you already know. Like, you know all this stuff about life. Life. It's just one of those unfortunate things that we don't like seeing and we don't like knowing is like a part of life I feel like if anything this series I really want to explore a lot more of that like effect of things and less the historical value of the stuff Because there is no justification even contextual and the context never makes me feel particularly better I try to provide context where I can or where I feel that it's useful But overall I feel like knowing about how this kind of shit happens happens is like sure it's important but also we're dealing with how the content itself has affected us and how we're going to live our lives differently based on the shit that we've seen so because of that like yeah i'm not going to be showing any clips i i think that it's kind of diabolical to to do so i i would not do so to you this is about us processing a lot of the things that we've seen on the internet and trying to more or less uh, understand them and maybe move past them that would be nice as i said Said, I'm all about the bloomer lifestyle these days. I'm all about like, you know, I'm happy. Like things are good. I understand that there is no God and life is meaningless, but I could give a shit. I mean, what has that ever stopped me from doing anything? I got too much shit to do to care about that shit. I got to do stuff. I got to watch Gusso milk. You know what I mean? I got to get out to that farm and, and be a lesbian, okay? And the only way I'm gonna do that is if I continue to watch stuff like this. I might as well put my knowledge to work. The next thing is genuinely one of the most unhinged things I've ever seen in my entire life. And no, it's not just because it's shocking, because everything shocking about it is shit I've seen elsewhere to like more impact. This thing, it's filled with the wildest ideas. So there's a short film on YouTube right now called Food of Violence, which, yeah, I really don't recommend you go looking at uh, unless you can handle it, A, and B, if you're 
are curious, it has some of the worst ideas I've ever heard, but I'm going to share them with you, and then you're going to think that they're really bizarre, and you're not going to believe that they're, that they're real, and then you're going to Google it, and you're going to go, wow, holy shit. So, Food of Violence is a 11-minute documentary about people who eat babies. And I know you're thinking, wow, that's diabolical. Okay, so so the argument at the beginning is arguing that people in China put baby fetuses in soup instead of like pork belly or whatever, and they make this like wicked soup with it. I personally hate that and don't like that that's a thing. And uh, throughout the, the film, I will admit this, like it absolutely deserves to be on this not safe for life iceberg, specifically because it is constantly chock full of the most exploitational images of dead babies that I have ever fucking seen. And look, I, I, I know that complaining about seeing dead babies is like so surface level when it comes to this kind of shit. But like, it's how they're using the dead babies. You know, it's not like they're just showing me dead babies. Using footage of dead babies to scaremonger about Asian people having baby soup. Now, I know you're thinking that's like ludicrous. That's like wild. There's no way that's real. And it is. The real surprise comes five minutes in to the film when very suddenly they say uh, there is a business in the United States right now that is selling baby fetuses to the Pepsi company. And you're like, that's a wild take. I wonder what business it is. And then they're like, it's Planned Parenthood. And you're like, oh, here we are. It's a fucking anti-abortion film. I fucking wondered why this entire time they were showing me abortions and trying to be like, abortions are scary. Sure, an abortion is, is scary, but it's also like a fact of life in many countries. So uh, it's kind of the thing that I was saying about SRS footage where it's like, it's a medical procedure. Medical procedures are spooky ooky. Like, what do you fucking think you're gonna see. So there's that, and you're like, okay, so they're now arguing Planned Parenthood is literally selling babies to Pepsi, and you're like, there's no fucking way they actually believe this, and then the documentary filmmaker goes, for instance, there's this wonderful American journalist named Alex Jones who talks all about it, and then they just cut to a clip of Alex Jones unironically saying that Pepsi is made of baby fetuses, and they get the baby fetuses from Planned Parenthood who sells the abortions. There's no fucking way that that's real. So then I uh, googled this because I was like, there's no fucking way that there are baby fetuses in Pepsi. And it turns out the person that wrote the original thing saying that there was baby fetuses in Pepsi later apologized and was pretty much ridiculed by all of science. Uh, Pepsi is not made of fetuses. And also there are many, many, many chemicals that are in a human body. So the coincidence of running into a human body adjacent chemical in like a product is probably not that shocking given that there are pieces of us and there are pieces of other organic matter and sometimes they mingle. It has absolutely nothing to do with Pepsi intentionally taking babies from Planned Parenthood, chopping them up and putting them in the big soup of Pepsi. That's not fucking happening. <laughs> so Alex Jones is unironically cited in Food of Violence as a legitimate source which should clue you in immediately on the fact that this film is made by a fucking fool. So it's made by a fool. And it's a bunch of abortion footage. It's really, really awful to look at. You hate to see a bunch of dead babies. And they're clearly using the dead babies just to get under your skin and be an asshole. And they're arguing that fucking Alex Jones is right about anything. Kind of amazing, to be honest. And as we know, Alex Jones never lied in any kind of criminal sense. Definitely that never happened. It's not like he literally just got fucking uh, fined as shit for doing exactly that. It's not like that happened whatsoever. Anybody who's like recommending this to people and being like, yeah, this is like a very legitimate thing. Fucking bullshit. Anybody who's recommending this has bad motivations. Like they either didn't watch the movie and were just like, yeah, this is fine. Let's let's just tell people to watch this. They're like, did you know there are dead babies in a movie? And it's like, well, yeah, if there are dead babies in a short film, like, okay, mind blowing shit. But also, wow, uh, why would anybody be like, yeah, this is legitimate. 
All right, so the next thing is something that unfortunately seems to be very legitimate uh, as I've researched it, which is the Animal Farm mixtape. There was a weird time in history where the Mr. Hands video was not just that. It was like a bunch of people were doing shit like that, and they were doing it with like film equipment, and that's spicy. Okay, so there's this woman, uh, there was this woman named Bodil Johnson. I, I'm going to attempt to pronounce that as that. I am, again, from Texas. Uh, she was horrifically traumatized. She died when she was 40 from alcoholism or the results of alcoholism. Most notably, she was a star in many, many bestial pornography films. Here's the thing about this. A lot of people think that there is a video out there that exists called Animal Farm where this one woman just bones a bunch of animals. That is supposedly what people think. In reality, what it is, is she boned several animals individually and they were all filmed individually and then they compiled them all together and called that compilation Animal Farm. So it's not really a mythic thing, it's just a thing that like people are really uncomfortable having exist and they don't really want it to like surface in modern times. So this this thing is supposedly not out there. It, it Maybe it is, maybe it's not. There's apparently footage of it in a couple of different mixtapes and shit like that. And again, there is footage of this one and like some teasy stuff about Animal Farm on the internet. When it comes down to it, it is a collection of really awful bestial films that led to, like more or less led to this woman and being traumatized and drinking herself to death. And maybe the animals had nothing to do with it, but you know, I have a feeling they probably did. I don't think that most people could have sex with animals and then live to have a successful conscious. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, here on Nick's Fears, we don't kink shame, but we do dislike it when people have sex with animals without the animal's consent. I mean, the animal obviously is not consenting. It feels almost silly to try and break down why having sex with animals is wrong. You know what? That's why they pay me the big bucks, I guess. Anyway, so, like, yeah, it's it's just a bad thing that supposedly exists, and a lot of people have seen pieces of it, uh, or whatever, and apparently people have compiled it. As far as, like, on the internet available for people to see. I couldn't find it, and I don't think I'd like to watch it. Uh, maybe avoid this one. But I think this also kind of goes into the people have weird hobbies thing, but the woman herself was a lot more, like, preyed upon. So that kind of fucking sucks. Uh, we hate that. Next up is Hidden YouTube Gore. Hi, friends. So it turns out that we're on this website right now called YouTube.com, and YouTube.com has this reputation for being an all-smiles-over-here kind of place where everything goes goes right and nothing goes wrong and everything's fine and everybody's happy and everybody is performatively like lying about how happy they are so that people don't realize how absolutely miserable everybody seems to be. It's a big website filled with lies is my point. So as one of the liars on the website, I would like to tell you that there is a dark side to the website. I'm not going to say there isn't, uh, but it's always been there and people have always known about it. People upload shit to YouTube and YouTube does does not catch it all the fucking time. And then even when YouTube catches it, after it's garnered some level of reputation or been out there long enough, YouTube usually is just like, oh yeah, I just age restrict it and let it stay. As I said with Food of Violence, like there are documentaries right now on YouTube, horribly shocking content inside those documentaries and YouTube in no way has done anything to prevent people from seeing them. Now, I mean, is this the worst thing that YouTube has done? You know, no, I mean, the, the the fucking harassment problem probably is a, is a bit worse. That does not stop people from literally uploading a Serbian film uncut with all the stuff in it like on YouTube and people can just dead ass watch it. There are a lot of these like videos that are like 60s and 70s like accidents, suicides, even like murder footage and shit like that is just dead ass right here on YouTube. Like they're in no way hiding this from being a thing. Uh, I think even Traces of Death is on YouTube. Like it's not hard to watch people die on the internet it turns out in fucking those michael moore documentaries you literally see like fucking people die in war and people die casually and in shootings and shit like that and it's just like dead ass in the documentary and the documentary is just dead ass on youtube so it's not like you have to go that far to accidentally stumble upon some very real world gore or some people fucking dying dude and i'm gonna talk about this like in the next part i think uh there's also police shooting videos 
videos. Like, videos of basically police shootouts, you know, there's that. Basically, every traumatic video that we've experienced of, like, police brutality in the last few years is just sitting on YouTube for everybody to watch. You know, it's not hard to find. There are only certain things that they really pull, and even when they pull it, they don't get everything. You can't get everything. It's still on the internet, and it's still on YouTube. It's just a little bit harder to find if you're not looking for it. Okay, so next up is something called Red Asphalt. Red Asphalt, in and of itself, is like an educational film about what can happen if you, like, buck up in your car and you fucking die. And there's a lot of footage of people, like, super duper dead in their car from car accidents. And, you know, that sucks to see if you've never seen shit like that before. I mean, I've literally been driving along and seen shit like that. So it's not like this is new. I grew up in Texas where, like, thousands of people die on the road every year. So I've seen some shit as far as, like, road carnage goes. So nothing in Red Asphalt really shocked me. And also quite a bit of the stuff in Red Asphalt is also found in, like, Traces of Death or the series and then, like, other sources. It's not, like, the original source. It's usually just, like, a compilation of some of the worst stuff. And there's admittedly this one video where there's, like, some people, like, pulling the disintegrated pieces of meat of a man and putting it onto a tarp. That part kind of sucks. It's, as I said, we already know this stuff. Going back to our initial learnings, number one, people are meat. And number two, death can surprise us. So it's basically just, unfortunately, a collection of people where death surprised them and they learned very fast that they were made of meat and then their meat went fucking everywhere, dude. So if like your vibe is, is looking at literal just like puddles of meat that used to be called people, then, you know, car crashes might be your thing. <laughs> I don't necessarily recommend that anybody look at any of this. Oh man, there is definitely something fascinating, like really fascinating about horrific car accidents because, I mean, obviously you have the question in your head like, well, how the fuck did that even happen? When something's moving very fast and then it abruptly changes, sometimes that can end catastrophically for both the metal and the person inside the metal. And ultimately, we are literally sitting inside of speeding bullets driving down the highway. I don't know. Maybe I just have a lot of car trauma because when I was in Texas, it was just like car wrecks fucking everywhere constantly. The lesson to learn here is that, you know, be safe. You know, understand that the, the car you're driving is pretty goddamn uh, dangerous, dude. It's dangerous. It's a car. It's not a big deal. It can just totally kill other people. So now, unfortunately, I am going to share personal anecdotes as we go because, like, if I don't, then I feel like I run the risk of uh, completely missing out on telling y'all about some of the things that I've experienced in my life, letting y'all get to know me in a more in-depth way. And, you know, the things that you learn about people are not always good. When I was in high school, there were two horrific car accident issues that I will never never forget. The first was a friend of mine on a lot of drugs and uh, super crossed a median and was driving in a car full of people. They hit a, a family in their car. Literally all the people died and it was like a horrific tragedy for the majority of our high school and like they never had to show us anything that was like blood on the concrete or anything like that or blood on the pavement is that what it's called? You know like car accidents especially like fake or real or disturbing or whatever footage of people dying in car accidents. They didn't really have to show us that shit because like we already knew because we watched our friend die. And then the second thing is uh, there was a girl who was sitting like hanging outside of the passenger door of her car and they were driving very, very fast. She fell out and then got hit by like several cars at once. Like not at once, but in a row, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, she was fairly popular in my school and she definitely absolutely super duper died and it was horribly gory and everyone had to watch as people cleaned up her body off the concrete as we were going into high school the following day. This shit is so much of a fact of life and no, we don't like to see it and also, there is no real value in looking at the suffering of other people and being like, ah yes, good shit. Understand that uh, this kind of shit, if you've never experienced it, like red asphalt or some shit like that, is going to wake you up to this reality. I got woke up to that fucking reality when I was like a kid 
kid and I saw that shit. So you and I are not the same. Robert Beckowitz is a dude who died. Okay, this story is wild. A woman got her new boyfriend to kill her old boyfriend with a gun. Not to, I guess, waste a good photo opportunity. They all took a bunch of naked pictures with the corpse and then slowly over the course of a couple of days, they started mutilating the guy and like, and I know you're thinking there's no way they took naked sexual pictures all the way along as they did this, but guess the fuck what, my dude? They did in fact take like a shitload of very sexually explicit photos uh, of them with the corpse. These are also very on the surface web, uh, in my opinion, like, yes, they're shocking, but as far as, like, other shit that's here, like, this is not that shocking to me. It's more just, like, absolutely fascinating. Supposedly don't remember doing this, and they were also on, like, heavy, heavy drugs. So, like, imagine this scenario where these two people, heavily under the influence of drugs, are like, dude, what if we, as we cut this guy up, like, have a little fun with it? You know, we take our clothes off, have sex on top of him, take pictures of us doing so, you know, take pictures of us putting his penis in his mouth which is true by the way they did in fact do that this shit is fucking bananas b-a-n-a-n-a-s it's wild i don't i don't understand what happened here so the one thing i'll say about plague moth's iceberg that we're currently going over is that i feel like each thing kind of leads fairly well into the next thing so like the next thing is serial killer mementos i would consider this robert beckowitz thing to be somewhat of like a serial killer memento where they were just like well let's fucking document the shit out of this uh which is horrible we don't like to do it they should, probably shouldn't have killed and mutilated a guy in the first place the pictures are wild and the fact that they just so casually were able to do that without at any point having some kind of existential crisis that was obvious on the film no they had no problem with this they were completely okay with it but now we're going to move on to serial killer mementos because you would think that this robert beckowitz situation is somewhat unique but you'd be fucking wrong because there's a lot of people who have taken pictures of the people they've killed in funny weird positions so if you know about uh jeffrey dahmer at all everybody i feel like should should have some cursory understanding of jeffrey dahmer jeffrey took a lot of polaroids and he got weirdly creative in them so supposedly there are some that are like available and everyone can see them and then there are some that are just like gone and no one can see them but uh there definitely is one where he put like a severed head on a chair and it's really weird there's other positions where he tried to like beautifully pose the mutilated body of one of his victims it's really weird dude one has to question the motivations of like a person and how exactly somebody goes about just like casually photographing them in that state and not feeling ill they just so casually can take pictures of, of the dead and mutilated it's fucking bizarre and to, to move on only slightly, I mean, we're still on the serial killer mementos, but not necessarily a serial killer, but I mean, did kill in a serial fashion. Uh, Ilsa Coach, Koch, Cock, Coke. Anyway, she's a Nazi. Uh, she 100% cut off people's tattoos and then kept them. So she, when caught, had a collection of skin, like tattoos that she had stolen from prisoners that she mutilated over the course of her time at a concentration camp. She later felt horrific guilt for this and killed herself. The fact that she like was like, I'm gonna keep all these tattoos. Fucking wow. <laughs> now, uh, there's also Ed Gein keeping skin and uh, you know, you know he, had, he made a lamp. He, he made a lamp. Some people you know, they make a lamp. It's, it's whatever. There's like a weird tradition of serial killers keeping pieces of their victims as some sort of like keepsake. These are just a couple examples of some kind of horrific mementos that people who killed a lot of people kept you should look into this yourself if at any point you're curious about like the true crime element of what the fuck kind of shit did people keep as mementos from the people they killed and how the fuck did they go about like remembering that you know sort of in their day-to-day -day life okay so not everything on this list is going to be pleasant or even tolerable unfortunately so we are getting now i think into the less interesting things and more suffering shock and torture torture kind of things. Understand that the things we're going to be talking about from henceforth are probably going to be notably really, really bad. If we're talking about notably 
really, really, really bad things, then hopefully we can uh, inside a lot of these things if we stumble upon them or somebody's like, hey, have you seen this thing? Do you want to see this thing? You will know in the back of your mind what this thing is already and you won't need to go looking for it. And isn't that wonderful? We love to be informed because if you're in an informed consumer of gore content, then you can avoid the stuff that's really going to hurt you. Isn't that lovely? I think it's great. So uh, we've got surviving a machete. In my notes here, I wrote, oops, this one's a fucking bad one. Don't watch this. Uh, woman's face cut in half with machete. A lot of people on the subreddits talking about this make the same joke, which is that the, somebody with a machete turned her into a like a South Park Canadian, which I fucking hate. And I don't like that joke. And fuck you. Nah, so like uh, homegirl definitely got a machete to the face. I don't believe she lived and she lost like a pretty significant portion of, of her face. So like you really hate to see it. It's pretty shit. I despise it. And also there there's this thing where a lot of people watch this video without audio and they're like, I don't really understand what I'm seeing. But then they watch it again with audio and they can hear the woman screaming and it really starts to get to them because they're like, wow, what an inhuman scream. I hear this a lot actually on the internet. Like I was I was dunking on morbid reality in the last video because he said that <laughs> Dave Chappelle uh, was being uh, attacked by cancel culture, which was Stalinism because he had to cancel exactly one tour date. Anyway, I thought this was more than anything, just some silliness. Typically in his videos, he will say that people make an inhuman sound or the sound is inhuman or they look inhuman. I think this is the wrongest way to describe this. I, I think that to, to scream with such intensity is to be human, be mutilated, and to be disfigured, and to be attacked, and to f feel like shit, is to be human. I feel like if we exclude screaming and suffering from the roster of things that humans can do, we're really in hot shit here, guys. Like, we've got to be able to scream and suffer. So, yeah, I, I understand that it's a colloquialism to say it, it sounds inhuman to hear someone scream like that, but the reality is, is like, nope, that is just really human. It's more human. More human than human, one might even call it. Okay, so the next thing it says here is ISIS child soldiers, which, like, okay, who is surprised? Raise your hand. And and I mean this, like, in a war sense. It's like, whenever there's some kind of war thing, there's no ethics. There's no rules in war. That, I mean, there, there are. There are war crimes and things like that. There's this, like, very anything-goes attitude that a lot of power takes towards going at war. So the fact that there are child soldiers is not surprising to me, given that there's also child soldiers in like Africa and South America and places all over the planet. So this shit happens and that is worth noting just immediately. And so is ISIS like in and of themselves unique for doing this? You know, no, many people have done this. And what exactly does this entail? Well, if you've read Berserk, you should have a fairly decent idea about it, to be honest. Like, it's it's just they kidnap kids or they enlist kids because parents sold them off or they s stole them. Uh, and then they kind of immediately condition them for war. And like war training is, is really, really brutal. And then getting into war and actually participating in it is really, really brutal. So oftentimes these kids like will grow up with war being the only thing they know. And then later on in life, if they survive that long, then war becomes a part of them. Them. Violence is all they know. That in and of itself, I think, is the not safe for life aspect of the concept of a child soldier. It's just like taking somebody, immediately throwing them in the throes of war. They're just going to remain in the violence industry for the remainder of their life. Don't enlist children in war. That's bad to do. But also, I just kind of feel like this being included here is a little bit edgy. Like, it's true. You can Google this and find that this is true, but it's also just like not shocking information to me. Googling this and reading about this this and being like, yep, that's a thing. I've heard about this. This, ha this has happened for a long time. This happens all over the fucking planet and it sucks. So I'm going to remove 
ISIS from this and just say the concept of child soldiers is real bad and many, many institutions on the planet perpetuate child soldiers and child slavery even. Speaking of children in war, uh, I have included a bunch of stuff on this list just like it did with the last one where it's like, here's a bunch of shit that you should know about that you might not know about and maybe this is an opportunity for you to learn. Girl from Syria is a picture that a renowned photographer took of a little girl who like escaped a, a bombing in Syria and she looks exactly like you think she would look. The image is, is particularly haunting because it, it just like personifies face of the Syrian child in the midst of all of this. If you are ever speculating about the effect of like war and shock on a person, you can literally see it in the face of this child. And that, in my opinion, makes this photograph like so horrifying to me. Yeah, I fucking, I know exactly what that emotion is. And like, while I can't know the depths of what this child has been through, the world has a tendency to turn you into girl from Syria. And I sure hate that. Obviously, I can never relate to girl from Syria's actual tangible pain, but I do feel like I deeply connect with this image. Okay, the next thing is Lucifer Valentine shit is what I wrote down, but okay, so to, to briefly recap this, uh, Lucifer Valentine is a director of like a bunch of what I'm gonna call experimental horror puke torture movies. So there is like a lot of different uh, varieties of the way in which he achieves his general vibe, but his general vibe is get a hot woman to take her clothes off and then puke all over the place. The The climactic periods in his movies are typically dudes doing the puking, so that's a little whatever, that's a little something, but there were women in his films that he mistreated pretty horribly, somewhat well documented by people that were around her. There is a woman was performing under the name Amira LeVay, she later died. Pretty mysterious circumstances. I don't know exactly what the deal is with that. I, I only briefly knew her, like, personally, which is weird to say, but I did communicate with her a couple of times, which is kind of wild because she's no longer with us. And I've also communicated with Lucifer Valentine a couple of times. To be honest, I don't know exactly if her death has anything to do with him. Probably not. All of this stuff coming out very in rapid succession was just like, Amira LaVey has died. Lucifer Valentine abused people on set. These movies, if you just look at them and watch them, you're like, well, fucking obviously there's like horrific abuses occurring. Like, how would you get this shot if the director himself was not mistreating the cast member? It's like weird because it wears its abuses directly on its sleeve. And everybody knew this, like who'd watched the movies, but no one did anything about it. No one said anything about it until very recently. Yeah, it's, it's it's really weird that Lucifer Valentine was largely accepted in like the extreme horror community. You know, just one of the guys. He was just kind of like everybody else. You know, he's like that. Maybe he was, but I don't think that the August Underground people quite had these problems. Those movies look like they were at least somewhat exciting to make on the on the part of the people that were working on them because they were doing some wild shit and more or less getting away with it. As far as Lucifer Valentine goes, like these movies have always felt like his weird, dirty fetish movies that he watches to, you know, get his rocks off in the middle of the night. So he films a bunch of hot women taking their clothes off and puking. Like, yeah, he mistreated the shit out of some of them. Who's surprised by this information? Not I, and I've been near those people. Okay, the next thing, I'm call I called it Tightrope Guy because I can't remember the exact name, but this is a video that I've seen like a million times in my life, and it, it just always sticks with me. So there was a, a, a lad who was going to do this like really long ass tightrope walk. Unfortunately, on the day of some pretty high winds that supposedly they somewhat ignored, like they knew that there were somewhat high wind problems, but he was like, ah, no, I can do it. I'm the world's greatest tightrope walker or something like that. Uh, so something to that effect. And he walked out on the tightrope, got about halfway through, and then a big gust of wind came along and he super duper fell and died. And it was a long fall and everyone watched 
that part about it is the the most like scandalous i guess is that literally there were like a crowd of like hundreds of people and they all watched him like fall and die at the exact same moment i feel like this story is the story of human hubris like depicted in a moment <laughs> because there really is no good reason why someone is walking a tightrope between buildings i mean that just seems like kind of a kind of an activity you do when you've completely run out of other things to do this one is, is fairly goreless and it's really really old very authentic so you know it's literally that happening so if you can handle the concept of it this one might be just dead ass on youtube fascinating death video we should champion the fascinating death videos and we should also challenge the notion that death videos cannot be fascinating i think they can be fascinating i think sometimes the video feels hideously inappropriate for anyone to ever ever have seen for instance the like surviving a machete video i don't necessarily think i needed to see that but the tightrope guy yeah i'll fucking watch the tightrope guy any goddamn day that video is so fascinating so yeah it's just one of those things uh i've actually got a couple more little fascinating things before we move to tier four so fucking get hyped the next thing is the ruth price 911 call so there's been debate about this for years and years about whether or not this is fake or real and some people say that it's fake and it was used for police training fucking horrifying it's just a woman is like hey i think something's going on then she like disappears and then you hear this absolutely horrible scream like it's a pretty simple 911 call it's just a really bad phone call to get like i personally would really like it if i never got a phone call like that oh my god so more or less it's just really freaky i'm obviously not going to play any of this stuff for you but like i will say that this stuff in my opinion is pretty fascinating fairly worth your time if you want to learn about something really weird and while we're on the topic of 911 calls i put the weepy voice 911 call i don't know if y'all have heard of this but people on the internet have memed the shit out of this so this is like a thing people 100 have heard of but the weepy voice 911 call is a nightmare it is a nightmare it is the scariest fucking thing like i hate it it is so creepy on many occasions played this like around people to be like hey check this very scary thing out and we all have a good time enjoying the very scary video if we're talking about something that's not safe for life but also is genuinely like scary like it bother me it disturb me it upset me emotionally the weepy voice 911 call is a guarantee to make like at least the next hour of my life really weird so you know you got to throw that one on rotation sometimes when you're at the party come on so someone last time made a joke that they googled my nudes and they thought that those were not safe for life so i just decided to put my nudes on the not safe for life iceberg i thought that that was a fairly decent idea you're right they are real and they're real bad uh but also you know the reason my nudes are, are not safe for life largely is because like he, he, no one can see how hot i am and survive get fucking wrecked it's tier four time bitch Okay, so before we go down tier four, I wanted to quickly issue a couple little tiny baby corrections from the last video. Okay, so the one guy, one jar, he filled up the, the jar with water so that it wouldn't break fairly regularly, but this time, like, he did not do that, and that's why this video in particular is so bad, even though, like, he had done this uh, prior. So him breaking the glass in his ass was not actually the goal. He was desperately trying not to do that, but it did happen anyway, so uh, that's kind kind of a, a bummer time. I got a, a very angry phone call in the middle of the night last night uh, from Laura, the person who told me about the goaded rotten meat guy on YouTube. And she told me it's actually called high meat, uh, as in like higher meat or ascended meat. And it's actually really good and we should all eat it. Laura was really mad that I demonized people that ate rotten meat. And also it's called high meat, not uh, to be confused with goaded meat, based meat or any of the other amazing colloquialisms I came up with uh, to describe the phenomenon of people on YouTube right now very literally documenting themselves eating rotten meat right now. So uh, go check that out. Now you have actual actual leads on how to find this. It's called high meat. Yeah, get high and 
have some meat. And now with that, we can we can move on to tier four. And oh boy, what an exciting time. Everything on tier four is a fucking bummer. There's some stuff that I added at the very end of tier four that I kind of was like, I feel like these things are worth talking about, but I don't feel like many people are going to do the work to sit down and actually talk about them. So uh, the, the big stuff is at the end of this tier uh, where we talk about some pretty harsh shit. But up until then, you know, it's going to be about the same stuff. There's actually quite a bit of things on, on Tier 4 that is that are comparable to things on Tier 3. Uh, but, you know, just slightly worse. Just slightly worse. All right, buckaroos, let's prove that love is real. Tier 4. Um, the first thing on Tier 4 is live streamed death. It turns out anybody can live stream shit, you know? So if somebody wanted to live stream, you know, people dying, they could do that and that would be fine. I mean, they'd have to catch the stream eventually and then eventually shut it down. But most of the time with these live streams where something horrible happens on the live stream, these things run for like hours. Not great. <laughs> So there are a couple notable ones, like I could name drop a couple of suicides or a couple of homicides that have happened on Facebook Live. Frequently talk about like the Ronnie McNutt thing. Um, topic in and of itself is how fascinating in my brain it is. If they want to be loud and proud about their death or suicide, they can do this in a very public way. People will see it. Like it's not something that ends up being avoidable. So there's actually quite a bit of like wild shit that goes down on Facebook Live. So one time on Facebook Live, now I don't know if this like is a real thing or a fake thing it's just something I saw At one time on Facebook live I saw somebody threatening to break into somebody's hotel room where they thought they were having like sex like they were cheating on them so the person like kicked in the door and ran into this room where these two guys were chilling in a hot tub together and then she like took a toaster or a microwave or some shit off the wall and threw it in the water killed both of the men with like electrocution so I absolutely dead ass saw that years and years ago and that really fucking got to me the other thing I'm gonna mention is this one time I saw a lion attack on Facebook live really got to me like I still think about this like all the fucking time in specific like both the lion and the guy fought and the lion obviously won it tore the sky limb from limb like by the end of the the first round of lion versus human fighting they were both like really really exhausted and the lion just kind of like laid down on the guy's like mutilated body and just like took a little nap and the guy is just like laying there horrified occasionally screaming and trying to figure out what's going on while this lion is just dead ass taking a little sleepy poo and then later the lion wakes up and finishes the job before a bunch of people run in with guns and shoot the lion so um pretty horrible shit on facebook live live. Turns out anything can be live streamed and most of the time when something like wild or crazy or important is happening, people are like, we should film this. And by filming it, they occasionally capture some wild shit that we all end up seeing for years to come in our nightmares. Next thing is called degloving, my friends. So degloving is one of those things that like is obvious to anybody. <laughs> I hold up my hand and I'm just like, here, let me show you. <laughs> like, uh, no, 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 like degloving is a thing that totally uh, can happen with skin, and that is really freaky and weird. And I think a lot of people know that that can happen with skin, but they just don't want to think about the fact that that can happen with skin. Notably, Gerald's Game, the uh, book slash Stephen King ad ad adaptation film, uh, has a moment in it where a woman has to deglove in order to get out of like a situation. And I fucking passed right the fuck out when I saw that in a movie and it was fake and it still really got to me unfathomable level of pain like one can can imagine like the concept of something degloving to put it uh, like very bluntly it's basically when the bone itself and the skin are act as two completely different entities so it's not like the hand itself comes off it's just like just the skin on the hand comes off so then you've just kind of got like a skeleton hand you know that's kind of rad. 
that you've got a skeleton hand. We've actually technically got two skeleton hands, but we never actually see the skeleton underneath unless we're one of the lucky people that get degloved in our life. And then we get to see our skeleton. Also, in the Plagued Moth video for Not Safe for Life, he was mentioning that when he brought up degloving, it wasn't just because he wanted to talk about people losing the skin on their hands, even though personally I think that's the most fascinating aspect of it. A, a lot of parts of the body can just deglove, like the skin just kind of sits, you know, like on the thing. If somebody wanted to like completely remove the face, they could in fact do that. You can, it turns out, deglove a face. You can also deglove just like any skin that's sitting loose, horrific and unbelievable, but is absolutely true. So it's just another one of those people are made of meat. Do you know how weird it is to be made of meat? Do you know how weird it is to be made of meat? To be made of meat is to know that your skin and your bones are completely separate entities and they can just act completely separately, which is a little horrifying. But it's also, we introduced this idea here because later on in the video, or later on in the series rather, we're going to be experiencing a lot of people who were degloved in certain different ways through, you know, no fault of their own really. Okay, the next thing is the Russian lathe in accident. I don't know how to quantify this with words. So there are some things truly in this world that are kind of beyond words, but uh, I can't help but mention them because they're just fucking bizarre. But it turns out if you get caught in a lathe, like the lathe is this very complex piece of machinery, is way stronger and way more dedicated to its fluid mov m like movement than you in particular are. So it's like a decent way to get caught in something and then spin until there's literally nothing left left of your body. So the thing about a Russian lathe accident, uh, which is caught on camera, is you literally watch a dude go splat. Once again, humans are made of meat, so this is not a surprising notion. The surprising aspect is just like how unbelievably convenient this is for absolutely demolishing a person. Like, y this person goes from a walking, living, breathing, talking human being to like a puddle in minutes and you're just like, holy shit. So yeah, be careful around your Russian lathe if possible. You might be the next victim of a Russian lathe accident. I live in Colorado, so there's a lot of machinery and shit here. There's a lot of people that, that work in the industrial kind of world. And so there's a lot of industrial accident shit here. I mean, that's, that's not shocking to anyone. I have in my personal life never come across a lathe accident until I saw this video. And I was like, wow, that is a bad way to die by machine. There are many, many machines that can absolutely annihilate you. If you've ever seen fucking psychotic forklift accidents, that in and of itself will turn your skin white. This Russian lathe accident is a fuck. Be careful around machines, my dude. All right, so the next thing is wear your seatbelt. I, I think that um, this kind of goes along with the thing from the last year about how car accidents can absolutely melt you. But there uh, totally was this one very specific case of this very pretty woman who got in a car and got in horrific accident. And um, I'm going to Google this right now. Like, oh, okay, I found her. Her name is Nikki Katsouris. Uh, she has... Oh, no, don't show me that. The person in question for this is Nikki Katsouris, who was like this person who was in a uh, horrific car accident. She was just in the worst fucking car accident goddamn ever. And the car accident like very literally just melted her. Like there was nothing left. Once again, this is like one of those situations where someone was reduced to largely a puddle of meat. The pictures that leaked about this are very, 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 very bad really really bad like I'm not gonna say they're not bad I've seen quite a few really fucked up images of a uh, post accident and these are really bad so keep in mind that these are really bad but the worst part was like these pictures ended up getting like leaked people started harassing the family by just sending them images of their daughter as a puddle which fucking sucks like is so awful but of course like this is the internet 
everybody's like got that whole harassment brain for some reason and they're just like yeah we should use this against people who are innocent so like luckily very recently kiwi farms went down which is good because kiwi farms has goaded many 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 trans people into suicide and lifelong depression which fucking sucks uh, i have personally been a target of them and that shit's garbage being a target of that i understand the wave of harassment that usually brings like pictures like this and inundate somebody with that until they themselves like start to feel like akin to that suffering and it just like starts to tear them apart because it's just not something that people should have to see you personally would probably hate to see your own daughter turned into a puddle and then they show you that constantly like more than anything i think that this is a cautionary tale about the fucking internet the reason this in my brain is here is not because a woman got in a bad car accident i think that the problem here is that a woman got in a bad car accident and then the internet used that as an opportunity to dunk on some people in like a horrific way that proclivity like a piece of being human is something i personally really wish wasn't an aspect of being human fucking this sucks because the internet is garbage so, I mean, there's a little guilt even associated just talking about people who have lost their lives in horrific ways on the internet and being like, hey, everybody, guess what? Like, here's some shit that happened. But more than anything, I think it's only worth mentioning shit like this when there's something to learn. And I, I think if there's anything to learn, it's that the internet and the people on the internet can be so detached from their own, like, reality that they can use this kind of shit to harm the families of people who have died in these accidents and that makes no fucking sense. Like there is no good reason to do that other than being an evil fuck. And if it happened to you, you personally would probably uh, not want to live much longer shit like this had happened to you. But a lot of harassment brigades on the internet don't necessarily give a shit uh, that this could be psychologically damaging. Moreover, they're trying to cause damage. People taking something like this, running with it, and then causing damage with it is just not a planet I really want to be living on but oh well can't do anything about it now we're already here next up is the dagestan massacre now understand i'm i'm um what they call american that's my condition okay i have a lot of conditions but my primary condition is that i'm american this video is bad to watch uh, i don't recommend watching it because it's really bad i know i say that about every fucking video that we come across but the dagestan massacre video in specific is like they catch like six guys these these chechens catch six guys and they're like well we're going to kill each and every one of them individually and then they kind of procedurally kind of go about slitting each person's throat and then like one person gets away so they shoot that person but then they get to the last person things get real bad because like seeing a bunch of people die without context is like you know in and of itself its own can of worms as far as uh, you know horrors go the the guy begging for his life and being like hey i can give you whatever information you want you literally don't have to slit my throat guys and then them doing it any Anyway, and him being like, oh, come on, please, can we just not? And like them killing him anyway, and then like his facade slipping and him going into like a, you know, I want my mom kind of vibe is really hard. Uh, it's just, it, it's like one of those moments where it's number five on the list, which is power is bad or like people in power dynamics over other people is just like shitty. So like this is one of those situations where it's just a bunch of people with knives have a power dynamic over this guy and this guy's bad begging for them not to do what they inevitably are going to do as they're fucking killing him going you guys seem like nice guys you totally don't have to do this they 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 do it so yeah it's a bad video i mean it's mostly bad because like nobody likes to to see somebody suffer but I, I find the cordialness of this war dialogue to be the most harrowing part of this video. It's not about them slitting people's throats. If I if if I wanted to see shocking slo throat slitting, there are plenty of beheadings and fucking whatever shit check clear you want on the internet to see. There's a weird almost procedure to war-like POW massacre. It's just like the, the, the mundaneness of the video is almost the most harsh thing about it. They are just having a weirdly cordial conversation about hey you don't have to slit my throat could you shoot me instead that'd be kind of rad actually having to reason with death like right there in in like this war scenario where everybody feels like well this is what must happen that part in, of, in and of itself makes this video really kind of shocking and disturbing
disturbing. We don't like to see people reasoning with basically a brick wall over something, turning them into meat, which kind of blows. All right, next up is Isis Chainsaw's Children. Okay, so this is the edgiest thing I've ever seen. And just like in the last category, like there seems to be a weird thing going on here where this iceberg really wants me to think that Isis is like the worst group of people ever. And you know, like, I'm not saying that they aren't. I'm just saying like, you don't have to try this hard to make me feel like they've done war crimes and shit. Okay, is it true? Probably, I mean, people in Isis have probably chainsawed a child that that does not surprise me um that that in no way i don't know is that is this shocking i guess it's shocking i mean it, it's one of those things where it's like it's a combination of words you can put together in an order and i can like imagine that that's probably possible in and of itself on a microcosmic level there's no real value to comprehending the fact that isis chainsaws children in the same way that there's no real value in knowing that the cartel chainsaws children or anybody chainsaws children like is it possible can it happen? Yes. Uh, is it good? Obviously not. The concept of chainsawing children is pretty fucking bad. You didn't need to put ISIS on it even though ISIS has done it. Many groups of people have done it. It's more just like also ISIS does it. So there you go. So what I'm saying is I think including this at all uh, is like the edgiest thing anyone has ever done. Like hey let's just casually throw did you know ISIS totally chainsaws. There's just no tangibility to this for me. So there's not, not anything for me to tell you that's like, here you go. Like here's some meaningful information. It's just it's just a thing that is is staring at me on this list. And of course I did enough research to know that it's like a thing that happens, but beyond that, am I really surprised by this information? You know, not really. All right, next up is the Jonestown audio. Now the Jonestown audio, um, this in and of itself, I feel like, is is interesting. A permanent document. I've actually sampled this in music because I'm crazy. I don't know why I'm like this. I do have a new album coming out. It's called My Dead Neopets. Go check it out. I know this is like a really weird time to bring that up in the middle of the Jonestown conversation, but like, fucking go check it out. I have a book too. Go check it out. I'm fucking, yeah, I want to be a lesbian farmer. So uh, speaking of lesbian farmers, Jonestown was the original lesbian farm. So the audio is really, really bad. Uh, everyone I feel like everyone on earth has heard this audio, but if you haven't, maybe consider taking a, a little looky-poo on it. Uh, he he convinces these parents to kill their children, and he convinces these people that are, like, currently being shot by people, by, like, armed guards. Chill out. It's fine. Being shot is fine. What's wrong? Terrible to listen to. Unfortunately, we don't really get an awful lot of outside perspectives of Jonestown inside the actual tragedy. It's not like there's a third-party source that's experienced the, the savagery. It's mostly, you know, hearing uh, Jim Jones himself talk everybody through those last moments. And that is horrifying to hear. I do wish for an outside perspective, like somebody seeing this and experiencing this from, from outside of just Jim Jones's perspective. So the, the hardest thing about this audio is like hearing the background of where you can hear people actually suffering and being shot and killing their children and all kinds of shit. Uh, Meanwhile, Jones is talking. Jones takes this very like, well, this is what we've got to do. This is what people have had to do throughout history. This, we all knew this was coming kind of approach to it. And that in and of itself is kind of horrifying because he's like convincing people to kill their families. Uh, and he's doing it fairly easily. And only a few people are really fighting back. And those people don't make it very long. So yeah, this one makes my skin crawl, but is it the Dagestan massacre? No, but it's just like, it's a really bad event in history. And the fact that we have have this like permanent document of what that the what those last moments sounded like for those people fucking unbelievable all right, it's our main man, Tim McLean. Okay, does, does, uh, surely people have heard about this by now because I, it's in Plague Moth's video, but this story is really wild. Okay, so a guy like fell asleep on a bus. This guy moved over to sit next to him and then apparently became like somewhat offended at some point by something that Tim McLean did. Or according to the guy, he was 
uh, told by God that he had to kill the evil next to him and just tear the dude apart. So not only does he start stabbing Tim McLean, who is sleeping on this bus in front of many, many people, by the time the bus has stopped and everyone has gotten off the bus, he has decapitated this dude. He cuts out his eyes, his nose, his like a lot of his extremities. He performs cannibalism. He supposedly eats his heart. He puts pieces of his face in his pockets. The guy has quite a time with this person's dead body. And this happens just dead ass on a bus. And somehow they were able to arrest this guy without like any real repercussions. It's kind of like, I find this fascinating sometimes that like sometimes they bring these like horrific people who are doing horrific murder in completely fine. Like the Christchurch shooter, like they just brought that dude in. Like how, how did you do that? They can't seem to bring a black guy in for a fucking counterfeit bill, but they'll fucking not kill the Christchurch shooter. But anyway, so the, the Tim McLean situation, it's just like somehow this guy like just completely went off on this sleeping dude's body and just ripped him to pieces. And then after ripping him to pieces, like really showboated about the fact that he had ripped him to pieces and then went on to live a full, complete life. I don't even think he's in prison anymore. Holy shit, dude. Imagine sitting on a bus, like, next to that guy nowadays, like, on an accidental level. Like, just like, oh shit, hey, you're that guy who fucking tore that dude apart. What's up, man? Hate to be on a bus with you. Uh, please don't do it to me. I can't imagine this, uh, but supposedly this all had something to do with, like, financial trouble, something to do with God, something to, it's just very bizarre like the whole situation is very bizarre and there's no like open and shut way of viewing it it's just a really mysterious brutal fucking kill out of nowhere crazy true crime story i don't know there's this book by jack ketchum about a girl who what who had her vagina burned with a blowtorch and it's really fucking bad uh i feel like it's comparable to this where you know some things you know they're possible but if they put this like creative almost option c spin on reality at that point you're thinking like wow i didn't know that was even humanly possible so the isis chainsaws children thing yeah it doesn't surprise me doesn't shock me but this tim mclean thing blows my fucking mind it's something that you personally couldn't make up turns out truth is largely stranger than fiction i think more than anything that is what this teaches us and we don't need to see a video of this happening to know that this happened all right next up is unit 731 i wrote here in my notes japan Japan did some wacky tests on the human body using POWs, which I, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty accurate. So yeah, Unit 731, there's, there's like a lot of films about Unit 731, and I do think, I could be wrong here, but I do believe that they have, they have a few of their things videoed, uh, that you can see, like they had things filmed. They did all kinds of stress tests on the human body using prisoners of war and people of the, of the, of the ilk. So they tested like, well, okay, what is the actual melting temperature of the human of human flesh like what is the actual freezing temperature of human flesh close or far does a landmine need to be to kill somebody versus just mutilating them you know what happens if you let a bunch of rats literally eat a person there's there's like a lot of questions they sure did uh figure out but the, the one that really gets me for some reason about unit 731 is there was a part where they tested uh pressure on a human body and they applied applied enough physical vacuum seal pressure on a person that their organs come shooting out of them. Fucking crazy to me, like horrifying. You just take, take a person, make them pop like a pimple. But no, notably, there's a movie called Men Behind the Sun about Unit 731 that is pretty solid if you want to ever learn about exactly what the deal was. There's also this movie called Black Sun, The Nanking Massacre, which is a sequel to Men Behind the Sun that is about the Nanking Massacre, which... I feel like is somewhat tangentially related and hardly ever mentioned on any lists like this for some reason, but it's also worth looking into. Um, all of these like kind of World War II atrocity things are fascinating and interesting on like a historic level, but also on a medical level, like the shit that they fucking learned about the human body is wild. And also the way that they obtained this was horrifically unethical. So you can't even really celebrate in any sort of capacity the fact that this was done because like you can't even enjoy any aspect of the of the biological
psychological lessons that we maybe have learned. <laughs> Basically, it's just the world's most fucked up study. And oh boy. Okay, so now we're moving into two things that I wanted to include here before we leave. One of them is something that's later on the list, but I wanted to talk about it here because I wanted to give it like special time and spotlight. Uh, and that is coldness in my heart. Coldness in my heart, which is not something you should probably Google, uh, is basically just a really, really awful case of self-harm. The reason I put this here, like the majority of people on the internet are going to shirk and avoid talking about self-harm in any sort of way because it's kind of one of those things people are scared if you bring it up it's somehow going to cause itself so like i'm of the mind that trauma doesn't really show up just because you mention it the simple mention of self-harm i don't believe instigates people to self-harm i think the thing that instigates people self-harming is feeling like no one is listening to them or feeling like they have the inability to communicate with the people around them in my onion largely the biggest reason why people end up self-harming and the reason I say this is because I personally have self-harmed. Yeah, no, uh, I, I've self-harmed in my life many times. Like, I, I'm completely unashamed to say that this is an aspect of my life that I have uh, dealt with. It should not be uh, all that surprising who I am, where I am, where I was in my life, all of those things. And in self-harming, a lot of times I learned that the reason that I was self-harming was because I felt like I wasn't being heard or no one was attempting to communicate with me in any sort of meaningful way. Ironically, the more we shirk and hide from the conversation about self-harm, the more it ends up causing it because it feels like you can't talk about it in any sort of meaningful way. So yeah, coldness in my heart is, is like a very, very bad case of self-harm. But at the same time, I don't believe that knowing about that makes me want to self-harm, but rather it makes me wish that more people were communicating and talking about self-harm. So I'm gonna tell a brief story. I dated a guy a couple years ago, tried to shock me once by pulling his phone out and being like, hey, look what I did to myself and just showing me a video of him self-harming in like a really, really awful way. And of course, everybody uh, can agree with me that it's it's pretty shitty to just like show somebody your own self-harm and be like, hey, isn't this something? You know, trying to get a reaction out of somebody like that's pretty shitty. But at the same time, like the, the only reason I was so deeply disturbed by seeing that uh, was because like I knew that that self-harm was a personification of the internal pain that he was feeling that I personally couldn't do anything about other than just talking about it. And if he didn't didn't want to talk to me back about it, then we never really got to a place where we could talk about this like horrific thing. So more than anything, I think I learned in that moment that like the reason a lot of us don't want to talk about this stuff is because it's sad. Like it's fucking sad to feel like there's nothing you can really do for other people to prevent them from hurting themselves. But also understand that self-harm in a lot of respects represents taking an idea, an emotional, like metaphysical pain something you can't begin to understand putting it on your body like in a tangible way so that you can observe it and you can like take care of it it's hard sometimes when you have an emotional wound to know how to take care of an emotional wound but you do know how to take care of a physical wound because it is so practical so oftentimes like self-harm is an act of taking something that is esoteric and making it literal so that you have to take care of yourself so that you have to put yourself back together so that somebody is taking care of you. So it's even sadder than than like you can even just on your face realize, but I think that the big aspect of what makes it so sad is the fact that people don't fucking communicate about it. Like people pretend like it's one of those hot button things that you just don't talk about because it's potentially triggering. And the thing is, yes, it is potentially triggering to talk about self-harm, but it's also really fucking triggering to never ever ever hear anybody talk about their own personal personal experiences with self-harm to make it feel like it's something that we all kind of are dealing with in our own way. So yeah, I, I will happily be the first person to say that I have self-harmed in my life if that means that the other people who have self-harmed in their lives don't feel so fucked up about it. Because like there is an aspect of it that is fairly normal. Like people have tried to experience this in their own safe way the majority of their life. So yes, there are extreme 
terrible cases of self-harm, and you can just deadass see that on the internet. That's not shocking. And seeing that, more than anything, is largely really fucking sad. There's, like, no conversation that can really occur that could make that situation any better. When you're me, I guess, when you see somebody self-harm online, the thing you really want to do is just be like, hey, you know, not are you okay, but can you tell me with words what you're feeling? We shirk to the concept of the emotional reality of that thing. We are all apparently too scared to ask those people what they're feeling or to even understand what those people are feeling. And instead, we're too focused on how potentially upsetting it is to see somebody hurt. But the reason that it's upsetting to see somebody hurt is because we genuinely care about human beings. <laughs> it's never really a solution, but it does solve a certain emotional problem that comes from a lack of communication you know, it almost becomes a victimless crime because you're just like, I understand why that person is doing what they're doing. I just hate that they're in that much pain. I think that should be the message. No one on earth should ever feel like shit for self-harming. If you're gonna feel something about somebody self-harming, you should feel like empathy for what they must be going through that has brought them to that situation. And if anything, we should probably be openly talking about the emotion that lead to such things and not shirk from it and hide from it to maintain this like bullshit internet positivity where everybody's happy and everything's great. Not everyone is great and not everyone is happy. A lot of people lie about their happiness while experiencing the worst emotions Im imaginable and no one will fucking talk to them about it. So like the fact that the internet makes a spectacle out of someone who's self-harming is really fucking shitty, but also the concern trolling bullshit of like, wow, don't do that. That's really bad for you. Like a lot of people can't fucking help it. And if they can't help it, how exactly are they meant to communicate exactly why this is happening or how this is happening? So we, we need, I think generally to stop avoiding the realities of life in a way that is actually emotionally damaging to people. Because when we do this, like shame about these sorts of sorts of things compounds the problem. When you add shame to self-harm, you get worse self-harm. So more than anything, I want to pull the stigma and the shame off of it immediately just to say, I understand. I understand. I have been there myself and I understand. And like, I do think that people need to be in a, in a space where they're talking about this kind of stuff more. A lot of people in their time, in my time on the internet, have reached out to me to tell me that they are self-harming or they're suicidal. In the past, I have taken time to try and talk to those people and be like, look, I too have been in that situation and I like, I know what that's like. But at the same time, like it, it has weighed on me and there's been some traumatic things that have happened to me based on, you know, I, me having my YouTube channel and people reaching out to me and telling me that they were suicidal weeks later, finding out that that person didn't make it. Like that person did in fact die. Like I've, I've had several people that I've known in my life just disappear like that many times. And it is harrowing. I've even had people reach out to me and be like, Hey, can we just hang out? I would love to hang out with you. And then for whatever reason, I'm out of the state or I'm busy or something's going on. And then that turns out to be the last time I ever see them because it turns out when they were reaching out to me to hang out I was like the last person they thought could potentially hang and then when they were like wow there's no one that wants to talk to me then they're just gone shit like that ends up manifesting as like guilt and then that it ends up manifesting as self-harm and it just ends up in this big horrific cycle because there's this big stigma about people being like hi I'm really depressed I'm feeling like killing myself hi I'm feeling like <laughs> self-harming and because we don't communicate about it in an open way, people end up more victimized by it. They probably would have more friends in their life taking time to help them, you know, if there wasn't this like horrific stigma around communicating to other people that this is a situation you're in. People like conflating that situation with their own guilt it ends up being a situation where nobody gets any help because nobody wants to really act as like a doctor of self-harm and be like, let me help you with your emotional problems. But also nobody wants to be the kind of person who says, hi, I have emotional problems. So like, honestly, I think, I think the internet <laughs> would benefit a lot from more open emotional conversation, but uh, asking that of the internet is very, very hard. So the only thing I'll say is instead of putting some bullshit phone number on the screen and saying, this person's gonna help you, 
because like there are so many documented cases of fucking phone lines not helping people. The reality is, remember that there is no fucking shame about suffering. You should feel no shame for suffering. And if it were up to me, no one would feel shame for their suffering. And we should all be communicating more openly about our suffering because having negative emotions is not inconvenient or bad. Having negative emotions is human. False positivity that the internet generates where everyone always has to be happy and everything always has to be working out. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's bullshit and it's bad for you and it's hurting you. We should just go ahead and abandon that and try to emotionally communicate in an open and honest way in the future. So with that said, I have absolutely self-harmed and I have absolutely attempted suicide. And that is not a joke. It has happened many, many times. One of the things that I never tell people is that uh, two years ago, I tried to starve myself for over a month. I only nearly survived. Uh, I survived because somebody got me a shitload of smoothies and an IV, and that's how I made it. But uh, th yeah, that was last year. Like that literally happened. People on my YouTube videos commented about me getting thinner and thinner, and me looking shittier and shittier and unhealthy. Most people took that as an opportunity to dunk on me and say that I was like anorexic or I was like overly obsessed with my self image uh, or that I was like engaging in some toxic positivity. But the reality was, is I was like, I couldn't hide like how it had affected me. I could not hide what it looked like or how it affected me. When it got dire to the point where I was genuinely like, okay, probably not going to survive this. I was barely okay with it because I was the only person who knew it was even going on. Like everybody else just watched me drop weight and didn't think that anything like all that serious was going on. But the reality was it was very serious. Coming out of that was largely about realizing that the despair that I was feeling and the things that I was feeling leading up to that were not nearly as valid as the emotional pain that I was feeling, which was valid. So that thing I said at the beginning of this whole video where I was saying like, I used to be a doomer, but now I'm a bloomer. This is literally what I mean. And if there's anything that I've realized in the last year, there is something I should be doing for the world. Even if it's talking about shit like this, I need to be encouraging people to see this as like, yeah, you can see despair. It's literally right there. You can see it and you can choose to be like, fuck this shit. I'm going to live my life by my own terms and be happy and communicate how I want to communicate. And if I want to tell people about the things that have happened to me in my life, I should be able to do that. Largely, my, my main point here, I know that I've been on a soapbox for a hot minute. I think that we should all get to a place where we're a lot more open and honest and emotional with our friends about what we're going through. And also we should realize that nihilism has two sides to it. There's the side where you can go, wow, we're all meat and death is random. I should be paranoid constantly that I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be killed randomly. And that's true, you can be paranoid about that or you can let that thing motivate you to bloom. You can say, yes, life is short. Yes, pain is real. Yes, like stagnation is the thing that's gonna kill me. Like emotional stagnation. Letting myself feel something that's stupid for like a year because I don't communicate it with people. Shit like that is withholding my ability to be happy on earth. I should bloom past it. I should say, fuck that. I do and say what I want and I feel what I want. And if I dislike something, I say it. Something is hurting me, I say it. And I don't tolerate the things that, that break me down because there's nothing wrong with being sensitive and there's nothing wrong with being emotional. We're all emotional and we're all sensitive in pretending that we're not and having to tough it out through bullshit literally kills us. So we need to be more careful about that, both on the side of people that feel they can't communicate because of all the shame that's built up around self-harm or suicide, but also from the people who feel like it disrupts their, their toxically positive bubble to hear that somebody else is, is not doing well. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about before we move on, hopefully that... <laughs> didn't completely just blow me off off course because I did just say a bunch of big stuff. But no, so last time on my video, I talked about the School of the Americas and I brought it up very briefly, um, but I wanted to give just a tiny bit more context so that people knew the extent of how bad of a problem the School of the Americas is. So it's also called the Western Hemisphere Institute. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you a, a couple little fun facts about it. Uh, the United States military themselves never found any torture information in 
the in the curriculum they were teaching at the School of the Americas. Like they never found any tangible thing that was like, yes, torture is good and this is how you should do it. Because they never translated the documents in from Spanish. So when they finally translated the curriculum at the School of the Americas from Spanish to English, they determined there were just textbooks on torture that had been spread around for two decades or some shit and no one ever noticed because it was in Spanish and the US Army was too lazy to uh translate it. Also, who gives a shit because they benefited from this directly, it turns out. Absolutely is totally okay that with the fact that they taught all these people to torture because that's like a big aspect of all this. So in no short uh, list, I guess, here is a list of just some and it is a handful. There are only a couple people in, in this list. Keep People that have graduated from the School of the Americas. Okay, okay. So two dictators of Argentina uh, graduated from the School of the Americas. The dictator of Bolivia at a time. The torturer that worked for Pinochet absolutely graduated from the School of the Americas and learned to torture there. The Ecuador dictator at one point, there was an Ecuador dictator that, that graduated from there. There was a series of Colombian murderers that all came from the School of the Americas. The Haitian dictator, which fairly well known for killing just tons of people in a big genocide. Uh, yeah, once again, Western Hemisphere Institute, like, of fucking of course. And then a bunch of Honduras death squads were also taught there. So remember that these people, these dictators, you know, these torturers, uh, murderers, and people that were meant to maintain capitalism and destroy communism, 100% were taught by the U.S. how to do these things. Like, so the reason that a lot of this stuff has manifested into, like, the cartel and the rampant capitalism and violence of the cartel is because a lot of this shit stayed in South America in curriculum and they've been teaching this shit to people for years and this is kind of the way that they get what they want in that sort of uh, situation so is, isn't that just fascinating I again I've said this before but I really actually genuinely think you should google this learn about this because this has a lot to do with everything that's coming in the next video like the majority of the next video to be honest with you is gonna be yeah card tell killings and people getting cut to pieces. So get ready for that and understand that the reason that a lot of that is the way that it is is because the cartel like learned it from ev all of these like all of these South American uh, you know murderers and torturers have shared this information passed down through the decades. So th if, if this is your homework. If you're going to learn anything like do a quick Google of the Western Hemisphere Institute so that when we go into the next part you know the cartel stuff probably won't be nearly as shocking to you because you'll be like, oh, okay. So this is a School of the Americas vibe. It, it helped me kind of like learn the place of all of this stuff so that I personally could mentally process it because it is fairly challenging to try and process some of this stuff. So like any help is always worthwhile. I try not to let anybody like Google stuff or look stuff up unless I feel like it would actually personally provide them with some sort of alleviated context to make them feel better. And like while I I can tell you where a lot of this stuff came from or the history around this stuff it doesn't really matter at the end of the day we're still just talking about that concept that like vibe or how that affects us today the reality is a lot of this stuff is fairly new some of this stuff has happened in the last like three to five years which is kind of wild to think that we still live on a planet where shit like this is possible but it is absolutely possible right now on this planet that you're currently on and you're in one of the bodies that is made of meat. It does concern you, and I know that you feel concerned. We should all feel concerned. Like, when you see the video of somebody getting fucking killed, it should concern you. I find that my concerns are usually alleviated by learning about world politics and learning about system. We want to say that all of these things are individual acts that have individual context, but the reality is, is these are all products of systems of organization and systems of arrangement. ISIS, just like the cartel, are organizations. They're arranged a certain order. And the order itself is usually the thing that is that's leading to these deaths, not the in not a lot of the individual humans that are doing it. You have to trace back the original like idea. <laughs> Where did this come from? And why does this organization still exist? What are they fighting? Are they justified in fighting that? Talk about that uh, more as things go on, but identify systems 
and understand where those systems kind of come from adds a justifiable level of context so you can see also how uninvolved and small you probably are in terms of the whole world. Because ultimately we're talking about world issues and there are a lot of these that are happening directly dead ass in our backyards, but some of the stuff is happening, you know, based on like 30 to 50 years of buildup, like an explosion of violence like that needs to be understood through those lenses of context. And with that, my friends, we have reached the end of tier four. So that's like, yeah, that's four tiers of the Not Safe for Life iceberg knocked out. We got five, six, seven, and eight to go. Uh, and eight is mostly shit that's happening to children, which fucking sucks. So a lot of that stuff is just gonna get fucking skipped because I don't want to talk about that. Turns out I too have childhood trauma and I don't really feel great about monetizing my childhood trauma. I want to come up with any situation I can to try and get everybody to be on this like more open and emotionally communicative sort of platform. So I want to use my platform to encourage people to do shit like that. So as I said, this is all about me blowing up so that I can uh, go be a lesbian farmer in the middle of nowhere. So if that is the vibe, consider giving me a dollar on Patreon Patreon that keeps the lights on, uh, keeps me doing what I'm doing. I'm also a writer and musician. That's more my like personal shit that I'm like really working on. So like supporting those things are supporting my art and I love that. So like my book, I, I make a lot of jokes, but I genuinely love uh, with all my heart because I put my heart and my soul into this book and I'm writing another book, which I'm also putting my heart and soul into, but this one is here now and a lot of people still haven't read it. We've done 3000 copies of this, by the way. 3, thousand people have read this book, uh, which is amazing to me. I love that. Um, if you would like to be the 3000 and first, please consider picking one up in the link below. Also, as I said at the top of the video, subscribe and like would be super cool to do. Sharing my videos, retweeting my videos, telling people about them really helps. Yeah, I decided I want to blow up and act like I don't know nobody. So you got to really, really help me with the whole blow up thing. Because uh, it turns out talking about uh, literal death is not a fantastic way to make fans. Uh, <laughs> who could have seen that coming? Anyway, so thank you all so much for being here and consistently being here and like being here for literal years at this point to hear me talk about just whatever. Very unironically, I don't want people to think that I'm jaded because I'm actually less jaded now than I've ever been in my life. Like I care more about everything I think now than I ever cared before. It's, maybe it's a product of age. Uh, I'm getting older. and But more than anything, Thing, my goal is to elucidate an actual conversation on trauma. Like, I want us to be able to actually talk about the traumas that we've faced because we've been on the internet and a lot of the traumas that we've had in our lives that have led to content that people have seen on the internet so that we can better understand why all of this stuff exists and what about it is wrong or bad or atro uh, like an atrocity or a war crime or, you know, whatever else. So thank you all for coming and watching watching and being here. I will see you next time when we talk about excessively worse than this, but uh, hold on to your hats. Maybe I made a video, a uh, video essay about the Holy Mountain. I made this video essay about a month ago. Well, I actually made it like three months ago and I just finished it a month ago and it got copyright claimed and blocked worldwide. So if that video eventually comes out here in the next few days, I, <laughs> I have been fighting to get that fucking video up for so long. So I really hope everybody enjoys it um but keep an eye out for that and i'll be seeing y'all real soon with uh with part three of this and then i guess we'll do a part four and call that a party and uh and then i'll probably snip all these together into one large upload and then upload that uh and call that good so um with that i will see y'all next time uh, i have been may good bye <laughs>
Nailites, your sleep paralysis demon. That's right. In the middle of the night, you might wake up with me on your chest and then you're really fucked. Since last time we talked, I've become a Stacy now, apparently. I said that I wanted to blow up and act like I didn't know nobody. And guess the fuck what, guys? I blew up. And then I started acting like I didn't know anyone. So I guess that means that now I don't even need to ask, but I'm going to do it anyway. Would y'all like to subscribe and like this video before we continue? Perhaps a good idea. Help other people also be exposed to this torture. Okay, jokes aside though, if you haven't watched the prior parts, my whole bit here is that I'm talking about not safe for life content, but I'm trying to do it through the lens of actual media literacy so people uh, understand what they're seeing. So if you're new to not safe for life content, uh, I don't know how you would be. As I said in the prior video, we all saw 9-11. We're all familiar with not safe for life content. So as I've prior said, there are things to learn, but there are only a couple things to learn. You really don't need to know about anything other than that. Uh, but let's say you're a curious being. Let's say you are a uh, the kind of person that would watch my prior parts over a hundred thousand times. If that's you, then boy howdy do I have some stuff to tell you. Things to learn about Not Safe for Life content before we get back into the tiers. The only things you're going to learn, however, I am adding some new rules. That's right, I'm adding some new things to learn. See, I said that there were only a couple things to learn about Not Safe for Life content. Number one, human beings are made of meat. It's it's a fact. Number two, death is random, which sucks. Nobody likes to die randomly. Three, pain sucks. Ouch. Don't do that. That hurt me. Number four, some people have really weird hobbies and those hobbies range from hilarious to macabre and terrible. And that's fun to learn about, I guess. And number five, power is bad. When one person has like power over another person and they can do with that power whatever they want and they choose to torture a guy with that power, yeah, that kind of is bad. We kind of hate to see that. But as I said, I have learned some new things and I'm going to tell y'all about my new things right now. Number six, consider the source. Why are you watching the video you're watching? Where are you watching the video you're watching? And what is the context that is being provided to you? Are people telling you what's going on in the video and then you're to assume that the thing that you're seeing is correct? There's a lot of assumptions that are made about true crime where you're like, oh, well, clearly I know what's going on in this video. You might not. Who is showing you what they're showing you and why are they showing it to you? Later on in the list, I'm going to tell a personal anecdote about this exact incident, uh, how that somewhat informed my worldview in a negative way. Number seven, attempt if you can, to understand the politics of what you're seeing. And I mean, try to understand the nuances of the politics that you're seeing. We're going to get into a lot of stuff in this part that is probably going to wrestle some jimmies. A lot of people are going to be like, ah, oh boy, I don't know if I agree with you on that one, May. I don't care because I did the research. <laughs> I did the actual research. I sat down and not only did I watch the videos on this list that are horrible and try to get from those videos what I could to like communicate actual context to you. I read some books like in the meantime and we'll talk about that but there's a lot of things having to do with the political ramifications of these different areas, the places where these videos are often filmed that people don't even attempt to understand and if you don't attempt to understand them then yeah you're gonna be scared to death by some you know cartel beheading video because you don't understand the politics of that situation. Number Number eight, machines are an unstoppable evil that we must eradicate from Earth. Okay, so I know that technology is all Black Mirror, ooh, cell phone bad kind of vibe, but also um, uh, there are a lot of incidents that you'll see of machines taking a person and just reducing them to a puddle. So remember, next time you're hanging out with a machine, not trustworthy. Don't put your hand near that motherfucking machine because that machine might bite you. Number nine, remember the crucial rule 
of cause and effect. Nothing just happens. Nothing. There is always a reason. There's always a cause. And so when you see an out of context video of someone having their face cut off, remember there was a cause. It might not be a good cause. It might not be a cause either of us like. It might not be a politically correct or politically incorrect cause, but it is a cause. A lot of times when you're seeing stuff like this, you're seeing it with Without that cause, without that context, you're just seeing what happened to the guy when X thing happened to him. The most disturbing thing I think about not safe for life content is we can't contextualize it within a life as we know it. We ask ourselves, how did this happen? How is this possible? All of these questions instead of <laughs> this is like the way that certain areas politically deal with their situations. And if you don't understand that context, you don't understand that source, you don't understand the politics of what you're seeing, then you have a pretty decent possibility of falling down what I'm now going to refer to as the xenophobic not safe for life pipeline. That's where you go on to literally any not safe for life website. You go to the comments section of these horrible gore videos and you find everyone is racist. <laughs> You find out that everyone is like constantly being xenophobic and you go, oh, there's an encouragement of xenophobia going on here. You think to yourself, maybe, just maybe, there is some reason that we don't understand that is at play in why we're watching these videos. Also, most of the shit that we seem to know about cartels are like war on drugs propaganda that's left over from like a, a political, uh, we'll talk about it. So with, without further ado, my my friends, thank you for coming back here. Thank you for being here. Remember, I am literally just doing this to sell you this book, which I wrote. I am writing another book and it is almost done and y'all are gonna really like it. Let us go forth into that good night. Let us die together. An ego death. That's right, friends. We're going into tier five of the Not Safe for Life iceberg. Things get a little bit worse. Okay, so the first thing on the list is real cannibalism. So I think that this is probably referring to something very tangible, but also like cannibalism uh, is a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing that has happened. It's a thing that people uh, do. People have done. People continue to do. There's a lot of stories of incidents where people just dead ass became can just decided uh, in a moment to do a cannibalism. The Dahmer series is on right now. So a lot of people are talking about that. Homie was a cannibal. When, when people say like real cannibalism, perhaps they're talking about like any number of video on the internet of some homies deciding that they're going to eat a piece of a person. So I think that it, it, like the concept in and of itself of people eating other people can't be that surprising. I mean, I, I think that one thing that you'll learn when you watch like not safe for life content is humans are kind of like deer where they just they die and, and then people eat them and it, you're just like, ah, so yeah, that that super sucks to see a living thing get eaten. I think in any context. So we can talk about cannibalism till we're literally blue in the face. I like jokes. Jokes are funny. It's more fun, I think, to talk about cannibalism in the context of the cannibal, of someone who is who is desiring to do an eat of people. Now understand that human meat, like other meat, does not uh, keep. <laughs> you gotta get on that shit. So a lot of people think that they just be digging homies up and cooking them. No, not true. Like, you gotta be really careful because your human meat can turn into high meat very, very fast. If you're planning on eating your buddy, you've got to do it in like a day, a couple hours even, because rigor mortis makes shit really difficult. I know that I'm a creepy weirdo, but also a lot of people just be thinking that people just be cooking and eating people and that that's not something that is like delicate, difficult, and must be like intricately prepared. If there's a not safe for life concept in there, it's that in order for someone to actually do some cannibalism, they're either eating eating a raw person, they're eating a cooked person, which is equally horrifying, or they're eating a, a, a decaying person. Not great. So there, there are only the three real options. Keep that in mind. It's very important as we continue. Okay, so the next thing on here is escalator accidents. Machines are evil and they want to kill you. So we talked last time about the, uh, the Russian lathe uh, accident, which is basically just a guy uh, was, was reaching in 
into a machine, and then he disappeared like a magic trick and was replaced with a big puddle. Uh, the same thing can unfortunately be true of escalators. Um, I have, like, long hair, you know? I can get my shit caught in fucking machinery. It's a terror that we live with. Uh, cl articles of clothing can get caught in machines, and machines don't stop. Not for you. One time when I was a kid, I was at an airport, and I saw an old woman uh, trip and fall on an escalator, and the escalator didn't, you know, auto-stop or anything, because it doesn't. So the woman just perpetually in the same exact, like, three-step spot just kept falling and kept falling and kept falling. A horror to behold. Machines are unstoppable evil. I understand anybody mistrusting some big piece of metal machinery. Maybe just take the stairs. I, I find stairs to be rather reliable. Escalators, sometimes I'm like, I don't know. Is this going to be the last time I ever ride the escalator? Next time you're at the mall, make sure and be careful. Those motherfuckers will kill you. And of course, uh, because this is a not safe for life iceberg, there are plenty, plenty of videos of people on the internet having uh, their life ended horribly by escalators. So uh, try your best not to get killed by an escalator. Wow, we really are just starting starting off really, really gentle here. It's like, okay, cannibalism, careful. You gotta make sure and not do your cannibalism, stupid, because if you do, you're gonna end up getting a little bit sick. And then escalator accidents, it's like, well, yeah, people uh, get fucking absolutely wrecked by an escalator. That's that's possible and true, and that has happened, and that does happen, and there are videos of that online. But it's fairly innocent compared to literal dismemberment, which is coming up soon. <laughs> so hold on to your fucking hat. They're my, my bros. All right, so the next thing is the Burari hangings. This is a... Uh a complicated weird one that I spent a lot of time looking up because uh, I found this just fascinating but so so the thing is there there was a father in I believe it was Delhi India who died unfortunately sometimes people die so homie died and his family was like shit grieving sucks and then one family member said I have been possessed by the ghost of our dead father and he has asked me to put together an instructional booklet on how to hang and kill ritualistically every one of the family members. So supposedly this whole family of like 11 or 12 people ritualistically committed suicide together based on the ghost instructions that were provided by a daughter who went out and got the materials and there are photos of these hangings and they are grim as hell. Mostly because uh, part of the instructions were they had to wrap their faces up like almost completely with like a bunch of uh, cloths and shit so that's just like one of the weird instructions that grandpa gave them so they look very haunting uh, but also you can see videos of the people doing the hangings like who hung themselves uh, going out and getting the materials and bringing them back like together the the most horrifying aspect of this I think is that the people that did this actually kind of believed in what supposedly happened like they wholeheartedly believed that the daughter was possessed by the spirit of their grandfather who told them to kill themselves as a family i mean look we're all we're already in samsara okay uh life is also pain all right so uh yeah i don't know it, mostly it's kind of creepy because it's just like why if if this is genuinely the motivation why was this the motivation <laughs> Like, how did that work? And if it's not, if it's genuinely like, if that's not the motivation, we really don't know what the actual tangible reason for why this happened. So we have to take the story at face value and the story at face value is kind of bonkers. Like this family decided that their ghost father uh, wanted them dead and they were like, we should oblige him. <laughs> we don't want to piss off dead grandfather. <laughs> Either way, it's just a really strange story. It's worth looking into yourself if you're curious curious about stuff like this. Looking at the actual footage is a bit is a bit bizarre and a bit off-putting, but just reading about the story is fascinating. So getting gaining knowledge about it is not bad, uh, but maybe protect yourself from some of the images that you might see because they are a bit troublesome. Okay, so the next thing is uh, sponsored by Adidas. Okay, so this begins uh, the the what I'm going to call the ridiculous inundation of cartel videos 
by Plagued Moth in this iceberg. My dude has watched a lot of cartel videos and he wants me to watch them too. One of the very, very good jokes in the Not Safe for Life community is how often they will just name videos in really silly ways. Uh, you, you know that these are not like in any way funny or, or creative or cool, but the fact that it's called Sponsored by Adidas because Homie is wearing some Adidas in the video uh, is funny to me. I think it's funny and it makes me laugh. The video itself does not make me laugh. Uh, it, it is a it is a, a homie cutting out a piece of someone's lung and eating it. And supposedly he is from the cartel. Let us begin the discussion about the cartel. So I read a bit of this book. Uh, I, I read as much as I as I could. It's a translated uh, book, but someone suggested it to me and it's called Cartels Do Not Exist. Simply put, I thought this was a hot take. Uh, like the news is constantly in inundating us with stories about how the cartel do big, big murder. However, the book argues that there's a war going on in this area, and that is a war on drugs. So if you know anything about the war on drugs in the United States, you will know that the United States political power was simultaneously providing drugs to communities and then going to war against the same drugs that they were providing to the community and profiting off of. The same is very much true with the war on drugs that started in 06 in South America. So when people think of the cartel, think about that as a concept, the cartel. Well, first off, we, we know, uh, at least on the basis level, that there is no the cartel. There are many, many, many different cartels. Well, so what is a cartel? Well, it's a group of narcos, people that acquire drugs and then provide drugs, right? So a lot of people view the cartel through this lens, this, this almost like like fictional, ridiculous lens of them being like this gang criminal organization that's out there like snatching people off the street and just killing them because they won't join them and shit like that. And while sure, some of that stuff might be true, it also just happens to sound an awful lot like the way that people talked about gangs in the 80s during the war on drugs as Reagan was providing them with crack. In political power, there are people that are providing drugs to the communities and then also engaging in a street war between the military and these like narcos and and members of different cartels so it's a lot more nuanced than one is going to think because we're literally talking about like footage from a an active war scene and if you've seen footage from Iraq, you know that when it's war, the gloves fucking come off and people start doing the worst imaginable things to scare the enemy. So a lot of times in these videos, there are these myths about how they're like these sadists who want to like cause as much humanly pain as possible. A, a lot of people have missed the fact that consider the source, rule number six. Why are we seeing what we're seeing? Well, oftentimes it's an organization organization of people that have filmed this in order to scare a specific group of people to leave them alone. <laughs> All of our misconceptions about what a cartel uh, is, it, you know, we think of when we think of the cartel, we think of like a farmer guy in like a cowboy hat with like a Gucci shirt and he's got like a diamond studded gun and he like goes around eating people's lungs. This is absolutely not true and it's demonstrable by the video videos themselves that people see. Do the people in these videos do super bad things? Absolutely. Do people die? Absolutely. Is it like absolutely horrible? Yes. <laughs> but remember cause and effect. We're seeing this completely contextless. We can look up details about it, but understand that like in a in a world where there's like a propagandized war on drugs where the government themselves are encouraging this image of the cartel as this rich cowboy dude, Dude is trying to kill off rival gang members and shit. We're not looking at it for what it actually is. Rampant capitalism, it's a leftover byproduct of the reinforcement of capitalism. Uh, we talked about the School of the Americas in the last part, and that was your homework. Hopefully you actually looked that up. So my point here is that there, there are a lot of variables that go into like why we're seeing a video like this and what the like conditions of that are. Most people on the internet that are talking about Not Safe for Life content don't actually want to have a conversation about the, the intense polit political ramifications 
implications of what we're seeing or the like how this is the byproduct of that. Instead, they, they'd rather just contextlessly be like, yeah, this is the video where the cartel guy eats that guy's lung in everybody's head who's never really given this much thought and also doesn't understand a region of the world that they have never been to and never intend to uh, ever go to, they start to believe a weird mythological version of real actual events. And this can lead to horrific xenophobia in plenty of not safe for life comment sections about how, gee, it sure is bad to be in South America. It sure would be bad to be near those people as if people are different and not not the exact same in every fucking society. I mean, literally right now we have a Jeffrey Dahmer show on and everybody's like, <laughs> okay, so we're going to demonize the cartel, the cartel, uh, through information and contextlessness that we, we just like are never going to focus on. However, whenever it's fucking Dahmer, everybody's like, how fascinating. He, he, he was a completely independent entity. He wasn't helped out by the fact that the country was horrifically racist or anything like that, we should celebrate him endlessly as he did nothing wrong and is kind of a twink. Even shit like this can be politicized in the minds of Americans for purposes that are like, in my opinion, a little bit Aryan. They're a little bit like white people are great actually and other cultures are bad i believe that they call that white nationalism so i'm not necessarily accusing any of these people uh, of being white nationalists but i do believe that there is a there's a bordering with this using this for the purposes of white nationalism and with that out of the way yeah sponsored by adidas is a video of a cartel guy uh cutting out a lung of a guy and eating it. There's some cannibalism for you. And luckily he did it freshly. You know, he he, he got some raw meat in there, uh, a little sushi style, you know what I mean? Probably a bad situation between people that we will never understand, but out of context, it sure is shocking to see this person that isn't white doing act of violence, how horrible. I obviously don't mean to downplay the violence because it's horrific and terrible, but it's also just like, why are we uh, focusing in on the like the political angle without actually understanding it as some kind of justification for like enjoying the violence? I think none of this is enjoyable. Why is this somehow okay? The mimetics of the cartel video are one that end up manifesting down this whole list. Like there's a lot of stuff in here that if you go to the comment section, you'll see this mythologized version of these political events all over the place and nobody's actually addressing the real situation and with that we're at ghost rider so uh this is another one of those where the people who named it think that they're very very funny um and maybe they're right i don't know maybe they're right there's a guy and he is getting his face burned off and he gets his face burned off several times uh to the point where he is mostly just a skull and when he is just a skull that's like on fire and screaming, some guys that are doing this to him uh, are, are basically like, yo, he kind of looks like Nicolas Cage in that movie. Ghost Rider, you know, that one scene. And I think that it's the casualness of this that, that is really, truly upsetting. I think most people are like, wow, I sure hate the fact that uh, they are making jokes about what they're doing to this guy. How can they just like do that without any empathy whatsoever? And it's another one of those situations where we don't exactly know why this was filmed. Uh, that that is a question that we should be asking. Instead of why did this happen, we should be asking why was this filmed? There's this myth that if it's being filmed, it's being filmed because somebody was like, wow, that's crazy. I got to pull out my phone and, and document this. Not necessarily the truth. A lot of times documentation is the point. That's the point in and of itself. Them having filmed it to show you in a lot of sense, that is the point. So like we'll we'll get to videos later on where uh, people are like, Buh, why is it that they fucking did this? And it's like so that they could film it like. <laughs> 
<laughs> so they could film it so that they could scare people with their video. So this is one of those situations where I think if you're asking yourself, why is this being filmed and why is this being shown to me? It has a completely different context than if you're just watching it and being like, wow, that dude's burning alive. People burning alive is 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 bad uh, to see. No one likes to see someone burn alive. But oh boy, is it another one of those situations where people will take this video and run with it on the whole other cultures are scary, actually. I don't know how to tell you this, but you're not going to get ghost ridered like you in your bedroom there, you know, eating your Cheetos. You're not going to get ghost ridered. Here's what's going to happen. At 80 years old, you're going to trip and fall down an escalator and then you're going to die. Like, it's not going to be because some guy was like, I'm going to tie you up and eat your liver. It's not going to happen to you. Probably based on solely on probability. I don't think we're headed to a world where everybody wants to do that to each other. I don't really think that that's in our future. You know, by probability, you know, you're probably going to like, you're probably going to croak, you know, later on for some dumb reason. Like, I probably wouldn't be worried too much about getting Ghost Rider, to be honest. <laughs> All right. The next thing is the Rammstein Air Show disaster. This this is like uh, an older, very, very old piece of Not Safe for Life footage. Uh, basically, everybody is immediately going to be like, boom, fucking Rammstein is is that a reference? Uh, probably. I literally don't care. More or less, the bit is that there. This is on the surface web, by the way. I think this is on YouTube. I think you can just dead ass Google this. This is not hard to find. It's a piece of historical not safe for life footage. But plane crashes dead ass into spectators, and seventy people die. Like it, it, a plane crashes into spectators, and seventy people died. It's a real. It's a real horror. Uh, it's a real horror show. It's a real bad time. It's a real nightmare. Nobody likes to see it, but it's also like a piece of historical accident footage that it's it's more miraculous that we have it. So one thing about Not Safe for Life content is sometimes it is rather miraculous that these things are caught on camera. And I think one of the reasons why a lot of people are attracted to this kind of content is experiencing that miraculousness, the miraculousness of somebody just filming something when right before their camera and right before their eyes, something absolutely horrible happens and they just happen to be the one person filming it. That like miraculous element of this is something that a lot of people like are very fascinated by. The randomness by which we capture grimmest of realities and how that's been going on since like the dawn of cameras. So that in and of itself like I feel has quite a bit of value like it is fairly significant to uh, to experience that. Uh, you don't have to watch uh, <laughs> the 70 people die in a, a plane crash. The fact that it's just there like somebody was filming it and it was captured even so long ago is kind of amazing. It's one of the clearest examples of people capture crazy shit on camera all the time and isn't that buck wild and it's been going on for a long as fuck time. So the spirit of not safe for life content starts sort of right here in the <laughs> Rammstein air show disaster footage. They call it the goat, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So next thing is Junko Furuta. The, the bit here is this is not a uh, this is not a piece of not safe for life footage that has footage or uh, photos or anything like that. This is a just a story that's really, really bad. It's a really long story. Many other people have told it for different reasons and I do think they leave out a lot of details about how uh, if, if we're talking to me about what this story is about, I think in a lot of ways this is the male preconception to see women as disposable and to like kill women, but not just kill them, but slowly torture them. And not just slowly torture them, but like sexually torture them, control them and own them, but also completely get away got free and not only that but be rewarded later in life because they did that. So the real disturbing element here, you know, we could talk about how Junko was tortured beyond any measure uh, imaginable and then was basically dumped in a drum and dumped in concrete. So it's like she was found like mangled in concrete. It's just like the most horrible imaginable thing. I think with the true crime thing a lot of times people are like we should be talking more about the victims and so this is a situation where we talk about a victim. I don't believe this is necessarily true. I also believe that these are cautionary tales about the way we should be viewing our world. The story is about these guys who did this shit 
and then got away with it and found themselves rewarded later in life. And nobody seems to give a shit that they dumped a poor person in concrete. No, nobody, I think, is is trying to celebrate the killer here. But I think like talking about those killers and how those killers actually occupy uh, specific roles of power in life now is the whole point of this story if we're talking about what is not safe for life it's that people be getting away with this shit people be getting away with this shit because women's pain is somehow lesser or something like that people have talked endlessly about brock turner you know like let him off like easy because he's got his whole life ahead of him even though he caused horrible pain to a woman that she'll never forget uh jeffrey dahmer being freed multiple times even though he did terrible things just because he was a white dude and people are like, well, he's kind of a twink. The excuses people make for men who, who are predatory is it, it baffling. And if there's something to talk about with Junko, it's literally how that is a, the most direct example of how a society can completely fail women. All right. So uh, Bengaluru hangs son, uh, father hangs son. So uh, this thing is bad to see. Uh, I would try. Uh, do you have any bleach? You're going to need it because you're if you don't drink it, you're immediately going to pour it in your eyes. So one or the other. Basically, a daughter films as her father hangs uh, his son uh, to death. So there's not really much to say here. There's not really uh, I don't have any jokes. Um, usually I've got jokes or I've got information. Those are my like two things. I can either tell you more or I can uh, make you laugh. But in this circumstance, let me tell you, I, I did watch this and it sure did suck. Like something that, that ends up being a trend with the remainder of this list is that apparently in the eyes of the not safe for life community, if you really want to push yourself into seeing things that you don't want to see in, are increasingly uh, about childhood victims or young people being victims or family members doing shit to their kids and stuff like that. So like if you can imagine the possibility of a family member doing something horrible to a child, then you can't necessarily be surprised that there's a video existing of a father hanging his son to death. It is just surprising how weirdly, like... It's another one of those circumstances where instead of the cartel thing where I'm going like, why uh, did they film this? We don't actually know who this film was made to send a message to. We're just intercepting the message. This is a circumstance where I don't necessarily know why this was filmed uh, or why anyone would want this to be filmed or to exist. And as far as I know, uh, a younger daughter filmed this uh, incident um, probably out of out of some kind of shock or because they were told to. Either way, uh, that sucks. I really don't have much to add here. This one just kind of bummed me out. Okay, so the next thing is bot flies. So get fucked, weirdo. It's time to talk about the things you hate that can live in your body. <laughs> definitely been on a whole fuck bugs kick. I don't know. Just I, I saw an ant pile about a week ago that was like massive and the ants were huge and I got really weirded out. I was like, I don't want to talk to those ants. Those ants are not my friend. So when I googled bot flies and I found out that they are flies that lay eggs in your flesh and then create small weird little permanent pocket holes where they come out of, uh, I got upset. So get fucked, nerd. Now you know about bot flies. It's, you can get a fly to lay eggs in you and then you're just gonna like develop that weird the, like a bunch of holes in you where these flies come out isn't that fantastic i love it it's kind of like a mosquito if instead it was horrible or <laughs> It's kind of like a wasp if instead it was really bad. <laughs> it's kind of like an ant bite if it sucked. And the last thing on uh, tier five is cartel live dismemberment. I think the bit here being that, uh, did you know that there are members of certain, okay, as we're, we're gonna talk about this in the proper way, there are groups of people that are in certain narco groups that will uh, stream themselves 
killing people. Uh, and not just killing people, but they will, like, take them apart like Legos, my dude. But, you know, live and shit, where there's just no... So, with the birth of streaming, like, more and more and more people have turned to streaming for just all kinds of purposes. Very possible that the cartel themselves could be benefiting from uh, streaming platforms and being like, this is a great way to send our message. Uh, and they're not wrong. It turns out they are right. It is it is that. And they're very good at doing it that way. I mentioned earlier that uh, cartel TikTok, but it's just like, yeah, narcos exist and you know, narcos are people. And those narcos sometimes have TikToks and they sometimes share information about what they're doing at work. Like, is it that surprising that members of the cartel have TikTok? Is it that surprising that, that members of specific organizations are killing people and then streaming that? No, it's the same as if they were fucking filming it with their cell phone. What's the fucking difference? Like, genuinely, what's the difference? So, just because the cartel does do live dismemberment uh, doesn't necessarily shock me more or less than, I don't know, like the Sponsored by Adidas video or the Ghost Rider video. It's just expected. Like, it's expected. Not necessarily from the cartel. I think ISIS has beheading videos in 4K. The fact that people are streaming dismemberment cannot be a surprise to anyone. I mean, shit. Now, I've decided to add a couple to this tier because I wanted to balance it out with some actual truth. Um, it's not to say that our impressions of, like, these Not Safe for Life videos, specifically of, like, cartels and shit like that, are super off base. Uh, they are what I would consider to be phantasmagorical. They are true that they exist, and it's horrible that they exist. Uh, it's horrible what that particular war on drugs looks like in that part of the world. We have our own wars uh, over here in, in our literal backyard, and those things people have a tendency to not see as being fun. So I don't like the idea that cartel violence is somehow fun and enjoyable to talk about the stuff that we personally in our society right now are dealing with is somehow taboo to deal with. Big disagree. Big fucking disagree. So if we're talking about not safe for life stuff, we should talk about stuff that actually affects us. Because as I said, you're not going to get ghost ridered. But these are things that do happen right here. It's bad. And for whatever reason, it just uh, didn't end up on the not safe for life iceberg for some reason. Interesting. Okay, so police shootings. Uh, you know, a lot of people would immediately bring up, like, the fucking George Floyd video. Everybody saw that video. Everybody saw it. And it was not safe for life, can we agree? Uh, and it, it, it was so not safe for life, in fact, that it prompted many, many, many people to get off their ass and actually try to stop the police from doing this shit to people right here in our backyard. Matter of fact, I think it's almost weekly that uh, somewhere on Twitter, I'll be scrolling and I'll see a video of the police beating somebody to fucking death or shooting somebody to death. And this is a reality that we've faced since the dawn of the internet. We've been seeing videos of this kind of shit for a really long time. And now we're at the point where like black communities in the United States can, they, they can no longer be denied the truth because we're seeing it on video. An argument I, I've made prior is that I feel like if ghosts were like super duper real, there'd be like a video a week of somebody running into a ghost and that'd be like just a reality in the same way that you know if ufos were like that we'd be seeing way more of it uh the same is true of police shootings only we do every week see a new video of something happening like that and so as like if you're a marginalized person in the united states you fuck the cartel you're not afraid of fucking uh being fucking funky towned you're afraid that you're gonna go fucking do the goddamn grocery store and get shot by a, a police officer for no fucking reason and that in and of itself uh, ends up being videoed and then like martyred and that martyrdom is difficult to process as a marginalized person the concept that it could happen to you your video would would be like the sacrament by which people finally take action to protect people like you it, it almost tells marginalized people that their value is to die in these videos and that is is a very hard reality to live with. That in and of itself, I feel, is is some of the strongest not safe for life content that we have to face now. And if you genuinely have not felt an inch of fear about that, like 
in in this country, if you're in the United States, if you've not felt an inch of that, like perhaps you're not the target of that particular group because they're pretty fucking ruthless, my dude, and they have a tendency to get away with it. Okay, so the next thing is, uh, do you remember Charlottesville? Everybody remembers Charlottesville. There is the fucking video of the guy that got tired of the counter protesters protesting against the white supremacists who were proudly telling people that they were uh, going to do violence against marginalized people. Uh, a guy drove his car into those protesters and that video has been around for a long time. We've all seen it. And if you haven't been somewhat deeply affected by the fact that some guy could just in a split second decide he was sick and tired of people for standing up for the rights of marginalized people that he could just like ram his car into them. It's horrible. It's so horrible. Yet it happened right here. <laughs> it happened right fucking here. Uh, the JFK assassination footage is a great example of like, you do see that man's head explode in Dallas, a place I used to live. So understand that growing up in the shadow of the JFK video in Dallas is a completely different vibe than seeing the JFK video when you're like elsewhere in the country and you don't understand the realities of the region that you're living in. That video haunts that community and, it, and it, that whole incident haunts that community. Okay, so uh, there's no happy way to be like the next thing is the Las Vegas shooting, but the next thing is the Las Vegas shooting. So that truly, I believe, was some of the scariest shit that anybody in the entire United States had to see or deal with or even try to comprehend. And there are tons of videos of every second of that incident. And uh, there's even edits online where people have edited together in linear order different videos from that incident. So you could really feel what it was like to be there during that Las Vegas shooting. So for context, guy goes up into a hotel room with a bunch of bullets and fires them all down into a crowd that was all at a country music festival. You you learn a lot about humanity in, in those videos. Like you see people people doing anything they can to save people. You see people like providing medical attention while they're being shot. You see people carrying people across fields and running for their lives. You you see people get shot and then not really know how to react to it. The body count and the, the gore uh, in those videos is unbelievably shocking. And yet this is something that randomly happened in the in in Las Vegas, dude, like Las Vegas. <laughs> you know, who isn't at least somewhat afraid to just go party out at a music festival at Vegas when you know that, like, that is something that's possible. It was so unfathomable when it happened because, like, genuinely, you can't process the concept of that many people experiencing that level of pain. It's just unbelievable. Yet it is our American reality. It's an American reality that we all have to face and accept. And facing and accepting that is great growing up in this country. And that affects us so much deeper than shit we saw on the internet that's not safe for life and all bloody and gory. I, I feel like a lot of times, a lot of uh, like people have a tendency to watch a lot of not safe for life content because they genuinely don't believe that these things will ever happen to them. And like the phantasmagorical element of that is like an escape from the realities of what might actually happen to them in this country. And if there's one thing that we should probably be doing doing something about it's all this so the next fucking thing i just wrote public shootings because like there's too many to count and the reasoning uh is is all over the place but i'll put it like this i moved to colorado about six months ago and when i moved here there was a walgreens that i frequently uh went to and i i would find myself just going over there just randomly then one day they were closed and i didn't know why so i googled it the reason the place was closed was because somebody a, a kind of incel sort of vibe stabbed a woman that rejected him to death 
in that Walgreens. They've closed the Walgreens, they remodeled the Walgreens, and then they reopened the Walgreens. <laughs> there is this like a level of erasure that goes on with a lot of this where we're kind of getting used to it. It's not we're kind of getting used to it. We are, we are used to it. No one, you can't get used to it. Like you can't get used to this. Uh, and and this, is a, this is a terrifying reality that we all face. No matter who you are, if you you have a, a loved one and that loved one is out at a bar and you're not there, there's at least a 1% fear that something fucked up could happen at that bar. Like you weren't there to protect them. And this this becomes a, a, a horrible element of, of growing up in the United States. And a lot of those shootings uh, were fairly documented. You can watch them. You can watch the like white supremacist prick from Christchurch go through that process. And it's horrible horrible. And I know that like me saying it's horrible almost seems performative because obviously it's horrible. But it's not just that. Like the the actual tangible effect on our psyches that has come from knowing that even exists, that's even possible, is terrible. And like marginalized people have always always been afraid of violence that could come uh, from the part of the majority. This has always been an element of life, but now it is documented now it is there. You can Google it. You can see it. And so you can't deny it. You can't deny it because it's literally right there in your face. And so these are a situation where we do know the context. We do know why this was filmed and why these things happened and what exactly happened. We do know. And those things deeply affect us because they are actual cause and effect realities of our society. Like the great replacement idea mixed with online mobilization has led to the deaths of many, many, many people in the United States in the last five years. Like a correlative, observable problem. It's a lot different than these like intangible problems that we are like throwing overseas and then like oogling at as if they're entertainment when they aren't. They're a reality for a different area of the world is coping with like bad shit that is manifested in their society. But we have our own. So we cannot, absolutely, we cannot demonize another culture and say that that culture is somehow primitive or, uh, you know, savage because of the death that happens that's documented in their country. Because clearly, it's bad here too. It's bad here too. And it's documentable, observable. And if you give a shit, learn about it and try to prevent it. That's as much as you can really even do. That last Lack of control is something we've all had to accept. I was in a mall shooting once. I saw uh, I saw a, a cop uh, gun down a, a guy who was shooting people into a crowd, like shooting at people. And yeah, I mean, it completely changed my worldview because I immediately got agoraphobia, immediately started to see things like completely temporary. Like no matter what it was, like I always assume that last time I see somebody, they're, they'll die. I know how common it is and I know how what it looks like and I know the reality. It's fucked up beyond your ability to process how fucked up it is. And even a video will never do justice to, to what this actually is and what it actually looks like. All right, friends. So guess what? We've finally arrived at tier six, where things pop off so bad that you just want to take off your pants and go running outside. There's not a good thing here. Not a good thing on this list. But also, just like with the last tier, there's a lot of shit that I'm going to I'm gonna add in here. Conversation about these things that probably needs to happen that has never been happening. It, no one's ever <laughs> tried to actually massage our fears about this kind of stuff. So, like... We're going to try and have as legitimate of a conversation about these things as possible. But it's worth noting at this point, I've said this before, like as we go down this list, things are going to get worse. And I have my own arguments about that uh, and, and whether or not I think that's OK. Uh, we're, there's a whole debate to be had about that. We're going to talk about these things because at least these are still things that we have all come to observe as parts of our reality that we've all had to deal with and process. 
process and they aren't yet to the point where I feel the need to hurt someone. So uh, no one's getting hurt just yet. Sometimes my camera just like decides to turn me into a Simpson. I don't like that. Uh, tier six. <laughs> All right. So uh, tier six doesn't really have a theme other than that it sucks. So let's just get going. <laughs> All right. So the first thing on tier six is Snuff R73. The, the thing with this is that it's like a mixtape compilation where the marketing on it was kind of spooky. And so people had a really hard time figuring out whether or not the things that were contained wherein were actually secretly illegal because there's supposedly like a short version that's bad, an hour long version that's deplorable, and a three hour long version that's illegal. Although uh, supposedly the three hour long version is a myth and not real. So keep that in mind. The other thing is I, I wanted to mention this. I've mentioned this prior, but the FBI hires people now look, listen, I'm not uh, endorsing the FBI or whatever here, but I, I, I'm, they, they do one good thing, okay? They do one fucking good thing at least. Document child pornographers by literally scrubbing through a lot of this kind of shit that exists, like child shit that exists, and capturing screenshots of the people involved and also like photos of their environment and then finding them and then prosecuting them. This is good. We should do this because uh, it's bad to do. Uh, don't do it. I feel like if you're going to proudly put yourself in the video of you hurting children, then you've probably got what's coming to you at that point, my dude. Fuck you. You, big old fuck you. <laughs> Can we just big old fuck you to whoever's fucking with kids, right? I, I think that anybody fucking with anybody kind of sucks. Like there's no great murder. There's no murder where you're like, yes, this is fantastic. And I sure enjoy this. But when it comes to kids, everybody, I think goes, ah, oh, boy, that one's the one I'm going to fucking go after like white knight for that one is indescribably horrible. And yeah, it's indescribably horrible. I mean, the people that do this job where they find this stuff, like they have really serious mental health problems from having dealt with the shit that they've seen. You know, a lot of people say that when they when they got a hold of Josh Duggar's computer over at the FBI and they were going through it, like looking through all the child porn, they had to do it in shifts because the PTSD was so fucking horrible for everyone who looked at those fucking computers. I bring this up in tandem with Snuff R73 to say if a three hour long version of this existed and it had in it the things that people say it has in it, then there would be screenshots from this posted on the FBI website literally right now for anyone to go look at and find these motherfuckers. That I think lends to the concept that this is a myth, <laughs> obviously, that, that there is this like horrible extra version. And if there is, it's probably somebody either profiting off this myth, being a bastard. Enough cannot be said about how much people that do this kind of shit are fucking bastards. Like people who are like, I'm going to put together a whole hour long mixtape of children being hurt. Wow. I was going to fucking knit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I got books to read. Um, I was thinking about going outside. I mean, fun for you if you want to fucking sit at your computer and literally put the worst shit in a linear order for somebody to consume and be like, ah, oh, yes. Fucking why? Fucking why? Go fucking ride a roller coaster. Like, go fucking get on an airplane and fly to an exotic new place and see the world. <laughs> like, go do something with your life. Why the fuck are you doing this? So, I think, I think why why the fuck are you doing this is a pretty valid question, but I think a follow-up question is, why the fuck do I care? Like, the FBI is literally, like, the authority on, on snagging these assholes. My vibe is, I don't necessarily think we need to be looking at it. Hot take. So, uh, what we probably need to do about the Snuff R73 is, uh, stop giving a fuck and move on. So let's stop giving a fuck and move on. Uh... <sighs> All right, the Guerrero fling. Great. Good. My favorite. It's another one of those things where people are like, the cartel! There's there's a guy, uh, he is supposedly a cop, 
is a cop. So what do you think he did? Probably something cop-like. And uh, a group of people that did not want to uh, get fucked over by the cops decided to behead him next to his son and then flay his son, pull his heart out, and supposedly they just like, they hold his heart in their hands. Basically, it's just like a really bad video, dude. If you've ever seen a beheading, it's kind of like that, only they also flay a guy. It's not something you need to see for sure. Uh, it's like, if there's anything, there's like this medical aspect where you're just like seeing them with without delicacy they are uh they are flaying a person just like degloving the chest of a person and that in and of itself i think is 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 horrible i i think a lot of people would be debating whether this is worse than the worst one but uh they're all pretty bad i mean they're all pretty bad they're all pretty bad they're all pretty bad i don't know if i mentioned this prior but there's also this uh this cartel executes like guy beheads guy with a chainsaw this is this is a video that exists that you can watch where they do this and it's another situation where just like the Guerrero fling it's so phantasmagorical that you're just like wow um damn we don't necessarily know the context and whatever context we're given is seen through a completely different cultural lens. So we don't necessarily understand what happened that was so bad that they had to flay this person uh, and behead this other person uh, next to each other in the same way that we don't necessarily know why uh, they had to be chainsawing people uh, and their heads off. They they did it. They did do that. Um, those are things that happened. But it's another one of those situations where people are like, are people feeling filming this because they're like, wow, this is wild. Or are they filming this to send this to the police department to be like, can you get the fuck out of our neighborhood? We don't actually know. We can know some, but a lot of the stuff that we find is very anecdotal. We don't necessarily know to what extent war on drugs propaganda manifests in the press in, in that area. So it's hard for us to really tell whether the state themselves are being honest with us about what the problem actually is through our cultural lens we have a tendency to make all these like rash ridiculous assumptions which isn't to say whatever happened is like justifiable or good but it's certainly not quite as like ridiculous or xenophobic as a lot of people in in our culture make it out to be and so i'm going to talk about something at the very end of this that ties all this together and i'll, I'll it'll explain uh more or less why i feel so strongly about this but um we're gonna keep moving guerrero flaying bad guerrero flaying bad guerrero fling it's pretty bad all right the rwandan genocide uh you know there's videos of this this is not a not videoed event um if anything i think that this is one of the most shocking like Wow, mass videoed events. Like, um, basically, if you don't know, there was a, a very bad man who paid for basically these trucks filled with like machetes and some guns, I believe, to just travel into villages, drop the weapons off, and be like, uh, with the explicit uh, purpose of killing like a different uh, tribe of people in the area. Uh, there were like a war, there was like a warring factions in the area. One went after the other with this like state sponsored. Uh, genocide armed regular people and told those regular people to just go door to door and just start genociding everyone they didn't like just get rid of all the marginalized people like that's that's the plan it is genuinely a, a horror because it's so simple it's so simple that somebody was just like i bet things are so bad that if i just filled a truck filled with weapons and then brought it to them they'd probably go ahead and just start killing people and the most fucked up aspect of that was that the, that guy was right they were that hateful that they were willing to do that pretty much immediately enough has not been said in modern times about the rwandan genocide in my opinion i feel like it's one of the things that you know if it's not being portrayed in some sort of like western lens then people don't necessarily want to understand it or care about it but it's not wildly different than genocides that have happened in our country you know native american genocide if you've ever been to Sand Creek and you know about the Sand Creek massacre it isn't all that different from the Rwandan genocide uh, the 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 thing that's fucked up about this is that number five thing where power is bad somebody just having money and having the means and knowing that people hate each other enough he can just eliminate the people he doesn't like from his country like that very fucked up and very bad and it has happened to plenty of people throughout history even in American history Yo 
quiero agua. Oh boy, oh boy, oh no! <laughs> this one sucks. In my notes, I wrote, guy without a face is thirsty. I am clever. So uh, yeah, this one's pretty simple. It's a guy uh, that has been tortured and his face has been removed and you kind of think he's dead, but he's not dead. And he just kind of like keeps hopping in and out of, of like kind of going to shock world and and then coming back. He, he re-enters the K-hole, you know what I mean? But uh, at one point he, he kind of like comes back awake and there's like a jump scare. And then the guys that are like fucking with him and filming him are just like, would you like like some water. I bet you want some water, homie. And uh, they're just like taunting his screaming faceless face. I mean, everything I just said sounds fucking terrible. <laughs> it sounds like you don't want to watch it. Um, it sounds like a not good movie. I, I would give it a thumbs down on IMDb. I don't think that that's how that works, but you know, the, the only effective moment is the jump scare, to be honest. Like everything else is just disgusting. Um, but yet again, it's another one of those instances where it's like fantastic phantasmagorical violence so if you're like oh people are made of meat that's crazy then congratulations you've here's a way to learn if you want like to learn very quickly this is a way to learn that people are in fact made of meat you can also learn here that pain sucks and power is bad all the observable facts uh, all right here in Yokiro Agua such a great service to us to learn these things but yeah if you've already kind of accepted the fact that uh, people can look like that with enough work people can look like that. Uh, if that is true, and you know that that is true, then maybe this video isn't all that shocking to you. I don't know. Maybe it is. But to me, I, I feel like it's just kind of unfortunate. It's just kind of unfortunate. It's shocking, but it's also just kind of unfortunate. But it also falls directly into the category of things that people are like, the cartel, the cartel is so bad. There's many cartels. We have already been over this. All right, so the next thing is surviving a bear attack. Um, so you know how I said about Yokiro Agua, and especially that guy's face, you're like, ah, oh boy, that's unfortunate. This is somehow slightly more unfortunate, in my opinion. I prefer, in my opinion, to die from a bear attack. If I get attacked by a bear and it does this to me, I would probably rather just go ahead and, and um, just go ahead and let that one go. Just head back into Samsara and try again next time. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 there is a video uh, of a man who has survived a bear attack and there are a lot of photos of him uh, and he looks pretty less than good. He looks like aspects of him are no longer. He looks different. He looks like it. he was changed by the th the experience he, he had. I mean like one time I watched a lion attack video and uh, I saw that guy get fucked up real bad. Like that guy died which was probably for the best but oh boy surviving that shit and then just having to be like like yeah, I'm, I mean, if you if you're if you're ever like, what happened to your face? Just remember, a bear tore it off. So a bear tore it off. Um, bears, it turns out, are mean little shits, and they'll tear it off. They'll rip it right off. So again, there's not much to say other than like, I mean, do you want to see a mangled person that's still walking around? Well, you can look that up, I guess. I probably wouldn't. Matter of fact, I wouldn't look up any of this shit. I would instead go back outside and play with a ball. I would kick a ball back and forth or, or I'd get on a bike. I'd get on my bike and I'd just ride and let the breeze blow through my hair. Oh, that's my favorite feeling. I love that feeling. I also love the rain. Like, I love it when it rains. I love just sitting out in the rain and just listening to it, smelling it. It's like amazing. I mean, but you could Google surviving a bear attack, I guess. Dissected Chan is the next thing and I hate it. Um, so it's, it goes, I mean, it's, it, <sighs> Okay, people murder people. People murder people, it happens. Uh, it's true, we, we know this to be true. There's like a million true crime videos for soccer moms. I'm making one right now, my friends. This video is for soccer moms only, sorry. But there's plenty of videos about true crime incidents where people killed other people. So uh, that aspect of this is not shocking, but the fact that the, the person that did the killing here in the dissected Chan thing posted a bunch of pictures of it on 4chan and then also like at length talked about 
the the sexual process of doing this dismemberment. It's kind of like if Flower of Flesh and Blood was real, uh, which it doesn't need to be, which is, yeah, uh, self-explanatory. <laughs> Does not need to be real, it turns out, but is. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to see fucking, it's just a woman being dismembered. Something that I mentioned, I think, in my Disturbing Movies iceberg a long time ago was that, uh, like, there's only a, a limited amount of things that people can really do to each other, like, on a horrible basis. And, and ultimately, that all boils down to the same shit. It's like causing pain or, you know, cutting somebody up, killing them, quartering them, things like that. Like, these are things that can happen. And, um, you know, this Dissected Chan thing covers most of those bases. Pretty much takes care of it. Okay, the next thing is uh, is Dr. Gloves. Uh, Dr. Gloves, the glove doctor. Okay, so this is actually like a hot button issue right now, apparently. I, I, I did a lot of Googling um, on all this stuff because that is part of my job. I, I know that y'all don't love the fact that I'm damaging my brain for your entertainment. There's also a vindication element to it where I, I can handle this shit. Like, I've handled this shit all of my life. So when I see this stuff, it, it gives me the opportunity to look sort of past the, the, the necessary thing and then more toward the truth of it. So um, maybe this is utilitarian. Maybe this is pointless. I'm not exactly sure. All I know is that Dr. Gloves seems to be a person, like a morgue worker, who works on dead children and for whatever reason is really excited to show off their dead bodies to cameras. So so he dresses all spooky and then he holds up dead children and takes pictures. And, you know, that sucks. Like, seeing a lot of really bad shit happen to kids in these pictures is, yeah, it's, it's bad. It sucks. Like, who, who the fuck would want to see that? To make matters worse, it seems that in, in the last little bit, he's pivoted to hurting a living children and there are videos supposedly of Dr. Gloves hurting living children and the FBI has supposedly been informed and is working on it. So keep in mind that we might actually get an update on the whole Dr. Gloves thing here pretty soon. I mean, he's a scary looking dude who apparently does bad shit to children because he was vindicated by being able to do them to dead children. So now he's doing things to living children. Who's surprised? It turns out that a lot of these people that are doing this, these gore videos or at least they're like active in the gore community have a tendency to uh, to lead to actually them just like genuinely hurting actual people. So that fucking sucks. So uh, we hate that that's true. All right. Um, so the next thing is something that I, I've never heard of this. So um, maybe it's crazy. I guess we'll find out. Uh, it's called Funky Town Gore. Here, you know what? Let me just Google this real quick. See what this is. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know how I missed this. This is this seems like it would be pretty important. Oh shit. Oh. Oh boy. Wow, I feel really different now. Okay, these are jokes. I've I've seen this around. This has been around for fucking ever. Well, it's not been around forever, but it's been around long enough for everyone to know about it at this point. But yeah, it's it's Funky Town Gore, which is basically just a very shocking video of a guy having his face uh his face is cut off, his hands are also cut off working on killing him they also let him go at one point and he tries to grab his own face with his not hands and he's just he can't you know uh do the thing so he cannot um but more importantly the the thing about this the meme i would even say about the funky town gore video it doesn't look like you think it's going to look like you you imagine you know a dark cd room where like a bunch of people are like talking and they're listening to music and they're cutting people up and they're screaming but it's it's uh it's just like a very white plain room and they're just doing it on like a like a floor and there's no carpet and that that part of it is really weird why when i watch these videos you know i i watch them you know sure for whatever is the shocking aspect so that i can know what the shocking aspect of the thing is but also i watch it to comment on the fashion most primarily uh the thing that people don't realize about the funky town gore video is that it proves everything that i've been trying to say this whole video something i said 
said, a lot of times we have a, a tendency to assume that whatever we're seeing on the fucking video is there by happenstance. Like somebody just pulled their phone out and was like, this is crazy. I'm going to film it. Well, the Funky Town Gore video is actually edited. It's edited in a couple of spots. Why would someone edit this video? They would have to drag this, this, uh, into their editor and then cut that thing up. So uh, that's weird. Um, another thing is that uh, people be memeing constantly, talking about this constantly, how it seems that they are pumping the guy whose face is gone with adrenaline so that he will feel all the pain. Um, no, it turns out. If I had a theory here, I think they're keeping him alive live so that they can film him uh, experiencing this while alive. The entire goal of this is to film his living reaction to what they had done. And so if he died, then they're just filming a bad dead body that they that they got. They were like, let's put adrenaline in him so that he continues to live so that we can observe his death and film that uh, for entertainment purposes. Well, not for entertainment purposes, but to make a, a film, to make a piece of cinema and then deliver that cinema all over the world to be for people to be terrified of so you can't very well watch the funky town gore video and be like oh wow they they really hate this guy they want to hurt this guy really bad they already did homie they already did like he's on his way out when the video starts the fact that they are filming him it, they did something very bad to him they gave him enough drugs to stay alive and then they filmed his like reaction to the thing that they had done. The the whole point of this was to make something the height of scare tactics. And so I've mentioned this before, but the School of the Americas has a huge influence on this like area of the world. And the School of the Americas is like an American school uh, for torture, murder, and war uh, shit to teach people to kill communists to protect capitalism. Torture methods uh, and also scare tactics were taught by the American military and propagated across all of South America. When you get a Funky Town Gore video and you go, wow, this is extreme uh, in a lot of ways. This is extremely horrible. You have to understand that uh, they probably learned it from uh, shit that we told them to do because it works. It works to send a message with like horrific scare tactics like this. If you were a police officer and you were looking into investing a group, uh, investigating a group of narcos and you found out that those narcos cut off a dude's face while he was alive, you would probably not want to go fuck with those narcos. It's just a very simple cause and effect. This video is made for the purposes of intimidation. Don't ever forget this. It's made for the purposes of intimidation. Intimidation can have a lot of reasons. The other thing is they're wearing like shorts and sandals and shit in this video. There's like a bunch of that kind of stuff. So this image people have of like the guy in the Gucci shirt with the cowboy hat and I'm a narco? Not true. Not true. It's just a guy. A guy does this. Like, a guy practically is like, ah, oh, I'm a narco and I must protect whatever or I must send this message. So he and a bunch of friends do this to a guy. I'm not saying it's not fucked up. I'm saying that if you look at this completely without context, it's really, really, really scary. But if you look at it with at least a little bit of context, you'll see that that A, you're not going to get funky towned, and B, uh, I don't know if this really concerns us. You know what I mean? Like, this is a situation that we have absolutely no understanding or involvement in. <laughs> and there are so many comments on every page of this being like, yeah, a guy supposedly did this because somebody fucked with his girlfriend. Yeah, bullshit. Like, yeah, bullshit. Are you kidding me? Who is he trying to intimidate in that situation? Fucking nobody. You think he filmed this for is wax stack? Have you lost your mind? People don't do this kind of shit unless deeply motivated by some sort of like deep-seated desire. They're trying to send a message. Except that this is a message that was not intended for you. And move on. However, there's one more little thing I'm going to bring up uh, in, in tandem with this Funky Town thing. There's this video called Simply Hi, which is uh, supposedly in the same room as the Funky Town video was shot. And they're just kicking a head around from a, of a guy that they they killed and they're just playing soccer with his head. Bad video. Pretty bad to look at. The point is, it's in the same spot. So the uh, the assumption is that this is taking place
place in some sort of unified area. And that unified area could potentially be this specific mansion that was purchased by a bunch of like uh, narco capitalists quite a while back that did previously house the School of the Americas. So the assumption is that the School of the Americas is actually still going on and it's like a militarized introduction to torture where they're demonstrating torture. And the reason the music is playing so loud, the song Funky Town and Sweet Child of Mine are playing so loud, is to drown out the screams because they might literally be doing this as a teaching method or an intimidation method constantly in this place to protect capitalism from communists. Understand that communists have done a lot of revolutions in South America, so the capitalists there are afraid, angry, and violent. So there's an aspect of that going on as well. Don't forget that. That's also important. So the fact that this is the same spot points to this perhaps being the location that vindicates a lot of the things that I was saying about literal torture factories, but they were like manufactured by the U.S. and the manuals, while in Spanish, were written by the like United States folks. They, they never really translated these from Spanish when they were like investigating the School of the Americas. These ideas have been propagated for a really long time without question. Very important to note. There's a lot going on here that you in specific can't just observe. So don't forget that. It's important. It'll be on the test. I wanted to tell a personal anecdote about a piece of Not Safe for Life content uh, that demonstrates a lot of the stuff I'm saying about xenophobia and about the propagation of bad ideas. So a long time ago, I was in the car with my grandparents and I talked about how much I thought the rest of the world was very neat. And I really liked, you know, like Brazil. And I thought Brazil was a cool country. And I liked India. I like India. I, I think that it's a neat country. And I uh, I love the culture of India in the same way that I, I enjoy South American culture quite a bit. I, I'm very interested in it. I was talking about this and my grandparents said, Brazilian people are savage primitives, which I thought was a hot take. Uh, and I turned and said, no, no, they're not. What are you talking about? That's really xenophobic. And they told me about an incident where a bunch of people at a soccer game did not like the results of the soccer game. So they all leapt out of the stands with weapons, ran up to the referee, cut his head off and put it on a stake, and then quartered him and left his dead body on the field. This happens all the time because this is just normal there because this is how they solve their problems. And over here in Western culture, we don't solve our problems like that. Clearly, we are a superior culture. Now, I understand that this is white nationalism. What what I'm hearing, what what I'm saying that my grandparents were, were trying to in, in, indoctrinate me into is white nationalism. So when I Googled Brazilian soccer massacre to learn exactly what they were talking about and see if it was even real, I found out that it was real. But the first article I read was from Fox News. Take it with a grain of salt. I have a feeling that the people that are talking about this are doing so with specific shady, scary purposes. And also, I want to note, the story is not that. The story is a referee got in an, an altercation with a player. And then the referee pulled a knife on the player and murdered him in front of his family. Stabbed him to death in front of his family. And then his family, with a group of, like, an angry mob, ascended on the fucking guy and tore him to pieces for what he had done. It was mob justice, but understand that mob justice, while being shit, is also, like, there's a cause and effect. It's not like Brazilian people just randomly do this to people. They were wronged, and they responded with an equal amount of violence as the violence that was given for no fucking reason. There is moral here. So when people are like, they're completely immoral, they just do whatever they want. Not true. Not true. And if you saw your family member literally murdered in front of you, you probably would react some 
somewhat violently. So understand that when we demonize other cultures for their reactions to very like tangible, observable problems, I almost want to call it the victimhood of a bad idea. You become victim to this idea that other cultures are somehow different than your culture and that your culture is special. It's not. It's not. People react to things with an inherent morality. When somebody wrongs you, people have a tendency to respond. That objective morality has a tendency to propagate itself in a lot of not safe for life content. But when you remove the context intentionally and then show people the aftermath and then you put purposes behind those those things and you claim like a bunch of xenophobic shit is actually true actually because of what contextless piece of media you're seeing you are propagating the idea that other cultures are bad actually or primitive or savage or there's just a different way that things go out there and that's not true that's not true the capability of a white supremacist with an ar-15 the same as anybody else with an ar-15 only they have a an insidious horrific agenda a, a purpose that ends lives. This is something that we should be complaining about. And I understand being xenophobic apparently is really easy and it's very reactionary. But we need to learn to stop being so reactionary. But everything on this not safe for life list built with the express intention of trying to get you to have a reactionary response to it. So obfuscating the truth is actually preventing you from being media literate about the thing. So you have to take everything said about shit like this that's without context with a grain of salt because you genuinely don't know what's true. You don't know what's true. Something I said a long time ago and I'm going to reiterate now is that shit like this can color your existence. You watch it and you think that the world is a scary, horrible place filled with horrible violence and gore and murder and mayhem. You know what? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Those things are true. It is objectively true that murder and and torture and pedophilia and shit like this exist. They exist and people do it and it's wrong and bad and we hate it. But as I said earlier, get on your bike, go feel the breeze in your hair, walk past a fucking grocery store when it's really hot and the door is open and the AC comes out and it hits you in the face just right. And you're like, wow, life is beautiful. Go hang out with your fucking girlfriend, dude. Go hold hands with someone. Go walk at a park. Go wear an oversized hoodie and smoke a cigarette. Fucking go live your life because this kind of shit is not going to live your life. This is not your life. Your life is a beautiful life that you were given to do with whatever you want. And you've chosen to sit here with me and learn about this. And I'm not necessarily saying you shouldn't sit here with me, but I'm pleading with you, begging you even not to stop living because of this. This is not worth it. I love you. And I want you to know that. And the reason that I say this is because I don't want you to be afraid. People will so quickly say Brazilian people are scary and evil, but they won't say I love you. And that's fucked up. It's fucked up. That's the true not safe for life thing that people will take this and exploit it to freak you out and make you more afraid of life because you shouldn't be afraid of life. Life is a beautiful gift and you should share it and you should enjoy it and you should love your life or you should find little ways to love your life. It doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. None of this matters. Nothing matters like this in the grand scheme of things. Death happens every day. It's happened to everyone who has died and it will happen to everyone who is alive. Accept it. Accept it. Accept that you're made of meat. Accept that it's not the way you really want it to be. But use this. Use this as a motivator. Not to get off your ass and not to do something with your life. Almost quite the opposite. To do less. All of this stuff is, is fucking pointless and it's preventing you from enjoying the air conditioning when you walk by a, a grocery store or the wind in your hair or the, the smile on the face of the person you love. Those things are infinitely more valuable than a fucking two minute video of some guy getting his face cut off for political purposes that you can't even begin to understand. So do yourself a favor and forget this. Forget me. Forget all of this. Unless you want to remember 
that this doesn't matter because that's the only thing to take from this. The only real lesson is that none of this shit matters. Not a goddamn thing. The only thing that matters is that smile and that love and that happiness because that's fleeting. That's fleeting. It will be gone one day. Your little ice cream cone will melt. And when it does, you're going to wish you still had it. But if you spend your life dreaming about the end of that ice cream cone, you never actually get to taste it. So go taste it. Thank you all for watching. I'm sorry that this has been the most depressing and dour and disgusting thing. But at the same time, I'm beginning to feel that it's necessary because there's a lot of bad shit out there. And there's a lot of shit that people are, they're just not hearing. They're just not hearing because they'd rather look at something horrible and say that that defines them when it doesn't. I've been Mei and I love you. Thank you for, for watching me for years. Thank you for liking my videos. Thank you for subscribing. I hope that next time time I have something at least somewhat more positive to show you. I've been recently uploading my music over here because I like making music. It makes me happy and I like sharing my music with people. That also makes me happy. Honestly, what's the point of having a YouTube channel if not to make myself happy? At least somewhat. So sharing my art with you is the way that I, I feel happiness. So thank you for enjoying this, but remember that there are things that about me that are better <laughs> than this. I will see you next time with the last part of this and it will be the last one and it will be mean and I will not pull any punches. Uh, I have a lot to say. I put it off in this video because I thought that it would be too big. Next time, we're going to close the loop. Thank you all for watching. Please support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash nixfears. If you enjoy my words, my thoughts, you might enjoy my book, Fluids, which is available um, on my website. You can get uh, a link below. Thank you for watching. I will be with you until the end. Good night. Hello YouTube, it is I, again, May Leets, the internet's busiest goblin person. I have been in a dungeon. Hello, I was chained to the wall. It was great. We all got horny. Okay, I don't know if I could say that in the opening minutes of a video. Maybe I can. Maybe I should. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good to do. It's good to tell the people at home that you're a horny goblin or else they don't know and they need to know everything. Speaking of knowing everything, welcome to the uh, Not Safe for Life Part 5. You know, I started really smoking cigarettes on, on part one. Uh, now I'm dead. I've died. Also, I'd like to briefly apologize for the two months delay on this. Uh, I was riding my bike, um, having fun. What else did I do? So many wonderful things. I've been busy having what the kids are now calling a life. Decided at some point, I guess, that uh, watching people die on the internet was perhaps less than healthy. However, I am back to once again... <laughs> watch people die for money, so. Okay, that's a joke. We're actually gonna take this video very, very seriously, and by the end of it, you will cry. I know this because I will cry. <laughs> okay, this is, these are jokes. Jokes are funny, and I like them. Um, before continuing, I should probably say that you should subscribe and also like this video because I uh, am completely fueled by metrics and numbers. Those, number go up is the only thing that, that scratches my internal itch, if you know what I mean. That G spot that legendary zone. This is the legendary zone for me. So hit like so that I can, okay, I can't, say, I can't keep saying things like this. Um, okay. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I can say whatever I want because at this point, everything I say is bad. If everything I say is bad, then nothing I say is bad. And that's the rules. I don't make the rules, but I do follow the rules. You know me, love to take direction. God damn it. Briefest recap on what I've been talking about so far. If, for whatever reason you decided to tune into the fifth part of a series first, like a maniac, the, the things we have learned on this Not Safe for Life iceberg have been wonderful and great for our brains. The first being that we are all made of meat, which is good. We like to be made of meat. Luckily, humans are also made of meat. So if you're ever curious, there is, you know, the goaded legendary secret meat. Why not try it? I don't know. I'm, I'm open to anything. Two, death is random. Sometimes you can be walking along and die suddenly. I've seen it happen. It's been great. One time I was at a bookstore and a guy just fell over. <laughs> we all laughed. 
Okay, this is not, it's not funny. It's very not funny. I'm not allowed to laugh at this. And also, you should take this very seriously, deadly seriously even. Th- from henceforth, no more laughter. Uh, laughter has been recently canceled. It, laughter has recently fallen dead at a bookstore. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, three, pain sucks. Uh, I have been in pain once or twice. I disliked it, except for when I liked it. Cannot keep doing this to myself. No, pain is good. I mean, bad. It's bad. Four, some people have weird hobbies like enjoying pain. Listen, I don't mind people having weird hobbies as long as they're not hurting other people or sneaking into graveyards, digging up dead bodies, and then fucking them. That, in my opinion, a little bit of a putrid hobby. I would try to find a different one. Have you considered painting? Power is bad. That's number five. If you've ever seen an election, then surely you have already learned this. But let's pretend that you're new here. Hello, and welcome to the world. May I be your first and only guide to uh, the the worst imaginable aspects of being alive. The first being that power is bad and we're all slaves to it. Isn't that great? I have such a wonderful viewpoint today. Okay, but these are actually serious. These these next ones are serious. Please take these seriously. I know I made a lot of jokes, but I have been serious about them enough to where I have earned the right to make these jokes. Uh, Six, consider the source. If somebody is telling you something about somebody dying or showing you a video of somebody dying, you must understand that you're seeing something completely out of context. The reasoning for them showing you that might be insidious, perhaps even evil, perhaps bad. And if they are bad, then you should consider unfollowing them on Twitter. Also, Twitter has recently died, so I guess unfollow everyone, and including me. My number will go down. This will unfortunately prolong my ability to uh, orgasm for quite a while. Seven, understand the politics of what you're seeing. There are politics at play in everything. I know you don't like to hear it, but it is true, and we do all have to accept and deal with that. Understand that there is a context for a thing that is shown to you without context. That context is probably worthwhile. You should check that out. Learn about that. Don't be a goddamn rube. You know what I mean? Is rube a good word to say, or is rube a bad word to say? I just say it, I, I said it simply because Hunter S. Thompson has said it, but I am now realizing that not every Everything he said was good. Eight, machines are an unstoppable evil that must be stopped. I love that there is a demon living inside AI now. I don't know if you've heard about Loeb, but there is a demon that lives inside AI and it will come and get you. And that is just one example of how machines are currently demonically possessed beings that are here to kill us. Uh, if you've ever seen someone fall off an escalator, first off, I'm sorry, but, but also I didn't do it. It's not my fault. Number nine, remember your cause and effect. Even if you don't get the context for something, even if you don't understand the politics of something, you know, nothing happens for no reason. There's always like something that happened that led to something else happening. You have to add up this kind of thing. Nothing exists in a vacuum. Uh, this makes me feel better when I see someone die. I'm always like, well, it's not that they had it coming, but that bus was coming. Bus driver was drinking. There are reasons we just don't like them. Number 10, when people talk about drug cartels, they're probably just delivering you war on drugs propaganda to make you think cops are good. They're not. They're bad. I know because I've met a couple and they gave me tickets. Uh, Completely base level reason for hating police. But no, seriously, I have had bad run-ins with the police. I think we all have. So why are we listening to them when it comes to uh, our beliefs? I'll let that hang in the air and we'll be uh, just moving along now. There are more rules, uh, regulations, things to learn. I could tell you all about them right now, in fact, or I could just wait for the video to happen and you could learn that way. I think that might be healthier for all of us. There are two tiers on today's uh, episode. Is it an episode? Is this a show? Is this entertainment to you? And now I'm not the kind of person to be like, this person did a bad. I want to, I have been withholding this for everyone's benefit to withhold this but I am going to show you a horrifying image. This, hold on over here. We're going to put it on this side of the video, I think. This is the iceberg. Immediately, what you'll notice is that it looks like an iceberg. Oh, what if it is more than an iceberg? (laughs) I feel like the iceberg thing, as it's been a thing on YouTube, has actually been rather fun. It's gotten me many subscribers, which means I have to say it's great. However, something I've just learned, today in fact, 
this iceberg here might secretly be evil and trying to kill me. There are, in, in fact, a couple icebergs out there that maybe when it gets to the bottom rungs, you should just scoop, you know? Just take your shit and go home. Grab your bat and just head on back to the bus station. This one, in fact, is bad. I'm not mad at anyone. I'm not. Listen, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Okay, so so when I say we're doing tier 7 and 8, you're going to notice something if you analyze this about tier 7 and 8. And I'm going to put voice to it, but in no way is this meant to be any kind of uh, call out or anger. But you will notice that this pipeline... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, did I call it a pipeline? I meant to call it an iceberg. This is fun. Um, This iceberg is actually a pipeline to get you to Google child abuse. Doesn't that suck for you and also me and also everyone? Why did we do this? I, I know that right now, currently, uh, the boy Plagued Moth is working on a different iceberg. He is making an improved one. And I think this is a good idea because something horrible could happen. Like, I could come along and say that, you know, while this is unintentional, objectively, a list of things to Google to learn about things and the first of them are bad and then it gets worse and then eventually you're looking at pitch black darkness we're talking about end of times kind of shit and do do any of us need to know that other than the fbi and the people that should probably be in prison for these things now listen i'm not i'm not the kind of person who's all prison industrial complex or whatever but there may be a couple of people that maybe deserve to be in a little room for a hot minute i think abuse Using your children in such a way should get you that uh, ticket straight in there uh, to that little room. I think everyone on earth would agree with me. I don't think there's anybody out there that's like, no, we should forgive them. Uh, let's try not to. <laughs> we have tier seven and tier eight. Tier seven, uh, darker than dark. It's kind of like, um, I honestly, I can't, I'm, I'm at a loss. I cannot think of a thing that is dark in the way this is. However, big however, my friends, uh, tier eight is unacceptable. <laughs> unacceptable. So we've talked about this kind of off and on, and I know y'all really want me to get to this iceberg. It, it's sure we, we're going to get really exciting about it, but uh, no, 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 no. It's not uh, okay. But tier seven is the first one. And what we're going to do here, before I was like going through the list and I was like giving personal anecdotes about the things and I was trying to like make some kind of draw some kind of connection between our lives now and our lives uh, seeing this and how we can kind of process this mentally, but on a very um, blatant level, there is no uh, way to do this without dipping into exploitation for money, which I hate. I think that it kind of sucks that this has become normalized because it is exploitation. It, it, it's exploitation of people dying, sure. Also, videos that are crazy and shocking have been on the internet forever, and a lot of people enjoy learning about them. So I don't think that that's a crime, per se. But as you get down here, some of these are crimes. Uh, most all all of them are crimes. So when we're looking at that, um, things enter a new ballpark called this sucks and is exploitation and should not be normal. So I just right off the bat would love, love more than anything that this should not be normal or allowed. I don't really uh, want to make any money today. I just kind of want to get this over with so that I can go back to having fun. I'm not going to sit here and linger on all this stuff. I'm, I will say simply tell you about the things, and then we're going to have a big conversation about it. Get ready to be condescended to for 30 to 45 minutes. If you don't like that, might I recommend subscribing? Because I definitely don't do that. No, I'm not like that. Uh, so tier seven, let's just go right into tier seven uh, before I change my mind. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing is the uh, the Chinese textile factory accident. Now, I don't know if you've seen this, but basically the bit is that uh, sometimes when you're working in a factory, they don't necessarily, like, put 
a lot of safety measures in place to protect you from being killed by machines. A thing we talked about earlier, uh, there's totally a video of a man becoming a paintbrush, which is cool. Uh, it's neat and groovy, actually, to see a man become a paintbrush. Exploitation is cool. Uh, we like to be exploited by capitalism and also to exploit that with YouTube videos like this one. Right here, I have six-year-old calls 911. Uh, this is a bad phone call. I highly recommend not listening to it. Matter of fact, I think I've mentioned this prior, but before I was saying something like, you shouldn't Google this. It's bad for your brain. But now I'm saying, don't do it. It's bad for your life. Like, it's called not safe for life. And you can't take that not seriously. You have to take that very seriously now. We're all going to take that very seriously. So let's all nod in agreement, raise our right hand or something. I actually, I'm right left dyslexic. So I think this is my left hand, but I have no idea. We're not going to Google this uh, at all. We don't want to have the quality of life that we have be ruined by bullshit. And we don't want to end up on any of these amazing lists. Honestly, if you're Googling some of the stuff down there and if you've actually sat down and watched some of it, I am, I am, um, I am feeling a bit suspect about you. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that, but if you're just like, I'm all into learning about Hurtcore, then I'm like, ah, well, we shouldn't be friends first off. <laughs> So anyway, keep that in mind. A six-year-old calls 911. Uh, she hears her mother be killed by a man on the phone while she's on the phone. She's trying to communicate to the police that this is happening. These things take time. And in that time, bad shit happens. And she literally hears it while she's on the phone. And it's, so it's, uh, it's bad. I don't know what else to say. The fifth nail is the next thing. The fifth nail is a blog kept and maintained by a uh, serial serial killer and rapist. If you like learning about the internal workings of one of those people, luckily there's a blog for that. However, big however, uh, the man did go to prison because of the crimes that he committed, which were bad. But the fucked up part is that he continued maintaining the blog after he was in prison and just wasn't caught for a while. So you can just read about that. Uh, I made it through three sentences of this, so I probably wouldn't do it. The uh, the next thing, father eats his baby. Uh, very literally happens. I know that some of these, they're so phantasmagorical that you just like say them out loud and you're like, that, that didn't happen. It did. It did. It did happen. It did happen. Um, a man was on Spice. Now, I don't know anything about Spice. I do cool people drugs. So Spice seems like it's a, it's a spicy choice. Hey! Uh, no, I, I don't know if I would do Spice because apparently it makes you eat your own children. So I'm not going to say don't do not do drugs because drugs are cool. I, don't, I can't say that on the internet. I already did. Uh, I'm not your mom. You can do whatever you want. If it's between eating your baby and not eating your baby and drugs are there, I would probably try really hard to order a different food. Surely you can eat something else. Yeah, so uh, this is on video. Uh, it's on video. The more significant part, if there's any part about it that's interesting whatsoever, don't not the video. <laughs> However, there are photos of the aftermath of this, the father, covered just sort of here in uh, blood, is sitting in a chair, staring off into space, just thinking about what has happened. That photo is crazy. <laughs> Enough said. Castrated, flayed, and bled. Wow, I wonder what happens to him. This guy uh, died. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I feel like some of these are just like, there it is. I don't, I don't, I don't know. What, wh why am I here? What am I here to tell you? How am I, what am I to show you here that it's fine? Let's, I have to maintain my air of professionalism. A man is hung upside down and this thing that I said one time and not again uh, happens to him. So if you want to watch that, I don't know if you're okay. Have you considered therapy? Cartel football. I think that this is in reference to a different video that I have seen, which I regret, uh, simply called High. Somebody uploaded this on the internet and just called it High. Powerful. However, it could be one of two things. Cartel football video, which is apparently shot in the same place as the Funky Town video, uh, which as we've talked about before is probably having something to do with the School of the Americas. Uh, they are just a kick in a head around. And isn't that funny? But if it's not that, then it is a different thing, which I also Googled and also regret. There's like a prison 
Teen Riot, and uh, they did this thing to a boy. More significantly than that, because I have to make jokes or else this will just suck for everyone, the police report that they found 77 baggies of weed at the uh, incident. So I don't know. When I, sm- <laughs> when I smoke weed, I don't do that, but maybe I'm different. Okay, necrophilia media. Necrophilia, as it turns out, is weird. The things people don't realize about this until they're literally seeing it is, you know, a lot of people think you just, it's just a lifeless body. It's kind of, yeah, but no, it's not. Uh, it's We're talking about like a, a bloated, hard, miserable thing. And this person is doing this admittedly difficult task. And that's great for them. I don't recommend it. I've not tried it, but I don't believe that you have to try everything to dislike these things, which is out there. That's the crazy part is that it's out there. You know, just like people vlog about, I don't know, anything, their car, their family. Uh, Some people vlog about their hobbies. This one's a bad hobby. I would get a new one. All right. The next thing is uh, this one I hate uh, with my whole being. And genuinely watching this made me have to sit down. What am I doing with my life? Why am I doing this? Surely there's a film on. It is there is a baby in a box and it is being eaten by rats. Someone just filmed that for for us. (sighs) So there we we get to uh, the point where we have broken, right? Can we agree? I tried to speed run this thing to get to this point because this is the moment. Like, this is the moment where you go, I don't, I, hello, I'm Steve Harvey and I don't want to host this show no mo. <laughs> Hallie Wacker. Uh, me. I don't want to host this show no more. Like, I would like to stop. And so we're only, I'm shooting, of course, it's going to be different in the edit, but I'm 25 minutes into shooting this thing. And I'm over here thinking to myself, like, and credits. Like, (laughs) there it is. It's the end. We're done. Uh, But it's not. There's more. And I don't want to do it anymore. So we're going to do this so fast so that we can get to this other conversation because that is the whole reason why we're doing this. And I am just wrapping her up here, folks. That moment there is, is the Line. And I know that there is there are lines throughout this that that have been already crossed. Like I can't sit here and say that we have not already crossed lines. We cross lines on day fucking one. Now this unacceptable. Like unacceptable to even continue. Like anything beyond this, you should feel ashamed if you've seen it or heard of it. So with that, here are all the things I'm ashamed of knowing about. Okay, but also I would like to point out that in tier eight, which we are going to blow through, like it's um like amazing. I I didn't look any of this shit up. I didn't Google any of it. And I'm not gonna because it's stupid to do. Don't do it. A matter of fact, I can think of five better things to Google. Cats, corn, um, fucking dolphins, fucking, uh, uh, have you ever heard of, um, okay, I can, I promise I can think of better things, but, but this, but seriously, please listen to my words here. Don't fucking do it. I have like five thoughts going on right now and they're all stop. Uh, so, so stop. Uh, just stop. Just simply give it a rest. Tier eight. And as I said, oh boy, is this pipelining you into some dog shit? I have to blame this. I have to. I can't not blame it. I can't blame anything else. This is wrong at this point. It could have been fun, you know, for three or four tiers, but now, no, no more fun. Fun is canceled. I have withheld my own opinion on this because after a while, it kind of became like at least I can do some good. This is me just trying to be honest. I could do some good to talk about things that darkness that we've all experienced for the hope that we might get over it or not even get over it, but accept it or move on or find some new way that's better. And and it's kind of like unifying. We all get to come together and be like, yeah, this is something that we've all had to deal with and experience and we all hate it. There are some things there's nothing to say about, really. There's nothing to say about. I mean, you can you can see perfect professionals for years and not get any leeway on this kind of shit. There's nothing of value whatsoever in remembering these things at all. So tier eight, there's this band called the Lost Prophets. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the band. The lead singer is an asshole who decided to groom women. Now that's removing some blame because the women also did it. So that sucks. Uh, Also tricking these people into letting him do bad things to their children. He was caught and there is a 
court document out there where a judge rules on whether whether like what they're supposed to do with the guy known that he did this and was so out and proud about it. And more th- importantly than that, a lot of people uh, just kind of looked over it, didn't really give a shit. I love living on Earth. Yeah, his name is Ian Watkins. Not worth a Google. Don't read this court document. I read the court document. And if there was a moment past the stupid video of the fucking baby, this was the moment where I was like, this is wrong. It's wrong, I feel, even to make content about this. I I feel like we've all been on this true crime kick for so long that we're just like, darkness, darkness. It's everywhere and we don't care. Like, this shit is so putrid. I've put it as simply as I possibly can. Passwords on his phone were about the things that he did. He was out and proud about it. No problem. So... Great. The thing is, I've mentioned this before, the whole power is bad thing, but I feel like there really is no greater power than that of like an adult over a child. What's a child supposed to do? And I've experienced a lot of my own share of childhood trauma. I'm not going to say I, I haven't. It's not content. This None of this is content. There's a mixtape called Amber Alert that's just Kids getting hurt. So you love that? You happy? How are you doing good? There's a thing called hurt core. It's parents uploading images of them hurting their own children. Are you happy? Are you having a fun? Is this fun for you? Um, Daisy's Destruction is a fucking video that is considered the worst thing on earth by fucking FBI. So Google that and die instantly. Uh, the Ecuador prison riots. Now this is a, a nice reprieve because all they did was kill a lot of people in great gruesome ways, which we're going to now ignore and move on. There is something called dark web zoo sadism, which I don't give a shit what that is. I don't give a flying fuck what that is. I don't want to know, but I did write down next to it, the dark furry. I don't know why. Necro zoo tape. Same thing. It's just there are dead animals and people do things. And then there's something called marissa.zip, which was on Josh Duggar's computer. So if you don't know anything about Josh Duggar, he had many kids, too many In fact, uh, especially given the context of his life, because he's a fucking bastard and has done fucking bastard shit since he was like a teenager. But he had this thing on his computer, and apparently that makes this thing significant. It's not. The significant part is that Josh Duggar had a computer so bad that the FBI had to look at it in shifts. And that is the last fucking thing on this iceberg, which means I'm free. I get to die now. I get to, uh, I get to go back into the abyss and never ever think about this again except now we have a very big conversation to have about all this because we really need to process why this has happened i can i can say i think from some on some level that i can't say i'm not partially responsible for having done five parts of this to encourage people to know about this i did my best to try and like warp it into something with meaning that's not what's happening on the internet you know when when like a piece of art is not received well and you're like, I can say something that'll make people think more about it or something that has value. This is not how this is being received. People are receiving this and then figuring out that this is like some kind of entertainment. And it's not. It's not entertainment. It never was. I can sit here and make jokes. I like making jokes. Jokes are funny and we all get to laugh. There's no humor. That's the joke. And everything about this is exploitation. How do I put this? How do I start (laughs) saying these things I, I must say? So So on a very personal level, I got super burned out. I didn't want to do shit. I didn't want to touch this. I didn't want to think about this. I have had a ton going on in my life that is infinitely more important. You know, Patreon supporters sure love content, and I know that my YouTube subscribers sure love content, but um, my life is more important than content. That's the big conversation, is that my life is more important than content, Uh, and so is yours. Are we so used to being exploited that we're fine with this? Has true crime really really become such a dark and infinite abyss. This seems exciting. I hate that. I hate that for me and I hate that for you. It's really gotten to the point where YouTube as a as a website is encouraging this kind of thing. That's why people do it. That's why it's gotten this extreme. It's not because they're providing some sort of commentary on something dark, make everybody feel better about it. Fear-mongering for clicks. What up? I'm doing it too. Isn't that great? Don't you love that? Literally encourage 
encouraged by this website. It's encouraged by the entire internet. I've learned this lesson a million times in my life, but that is that bold choices are the ones that get seen. And so if you make a bold choice, people are going to come out and watch you. Bold choices change at some point. A bold choice was coming up with a like a funny character. People being like, oh, you got a funny character. That's cute. Really something to say about the personal relationship you have with art or something like that. That used to be a bold choice, but that no longer qualifies as a bold choice. We've had to up the goddamn ante to the point where we are all participating in exploitation while also being exploited to pay our rent. Don't you love that? I wonder why I'm burned out. I genuinely wonder why I'm burned out. There's so much exploitation involved. At no point does it ever really slip into a place of fun or happiness or excitement. You know, I know a lot of people enjoyed this series and I'm not mad at you for enjoying this series. I put my heart and soul into it because I put my heart and soul into everything. I don't want to put my heart and soul into something that is not good for me. It's not good for me and it's not good for you, but when it when it comes down to it, this stopped being fun forever ago. It's a job. It's my job. And when I look at my job and I think, well, the numbers are there. It doesn't matter. Fuck my brain. The numbers are there. I know people have been saying this for years. My goals and also my platform are at odds. They are fighting against each other. This moment is the moment where you can't ignore it anymore. Beyond the ability to ignore, I must be really okay being exploited. Why? Why am I so okay being exploited? Clearly, I too had issues in my childhood, right? Like we all did. And now here we are looking at this list of things where it's like parents abusing their children for attention. And then here I am continuing that abuse on myself for attention and that attention to make enough money to pay rent. It's a self-perpetuating cycle and I can blame nothing other than the shit tier constant machine marketing in capitalism, the hungry, hungry vibe of people wanting, want, asking for this, receiving it, actually watching it. So something I learned a long time ago is that it, it's not necessarily that you're getting a lot of views that matters. What, what are, How are we actually receiving it? What is the vibe that we're actually getting off of the thing? We don't actually know. Well, all you, all you can really do is encourage some asshole to be like, this is content and that's all. You can voice some level of like criticism. I don't think this is right. They can choose not to listen to you. And when it comes down to it, the machine, the dopamine, the joke I made at the beginning about how much I need those numbers, I don't. It's all good because it's content is bad for us. It's bad for us. It's bad for our brains and our hearts. It's kind of fucking our generation pretty bad. This kind of shit is not what I want to be doing, but it is encouraged by the platform. I have participated in the platform. Great. Another thing I'm constantly being told after this is over, I should just give myself a really nice, sweet task. I should give myself like an animal iceberg, like a cute animal iceberg to look at animals and be like, look how cute this animal is. That's not why I did this. I did this because I wanted to fix the fucking internet. And I personally cannot fix the internet. Like the internet is so beyond all of us. It is us in a lot of ways. I've watched as every social media has destroyed somebody's life around me. I've watched as YouTube itself has like literally killed people. So there is really no fixing the internet. I wanted to take on on this because I wanted to fix the way we're looking at this kind of shit. I wanted us to actually have a voice in the back of our heads when we see shit like this on the internet and be like, actually, no, this is not fucking okay. Hello, I'll be the voice. I will be that voice. I don't really see that as some sort of point of pride. Like, you know, someone's got to fucking do it. Someone has to fucking be the person to say the thing. I'm fine with that. I will take the brunt of that. I'll take the brunt of being the person who said the thing. So I said the thing, please listen to me because it's not worth it. It's bad for you. This is all so bad for you. It's bad for me too. If we if we were to make a bingo card and it would look like this, it, we'd black out the card. We've blacked the card out. Everything bad imaginable, we've done it. We've seen it all. So there you go, right? You've seen it all. You're done. You're free. I'm free. We don't have to do it anymore because I know every imaginable bad fucking thing that somebody can just whip up real quick and it's all right there. We cannot fear it. We we know about it. We know it exists. Nihilism itself is the problem. Being reactionary is the problem. Seeing this as an opportunity to react to something is the problem. And and in my brain, that's, yeah, that's nihilism. There, The other aspect of internet nihilism is the endless scroll. This endless desire for content has made people take such extreme, absurd strides towards doing things that they themselves don't view as healthy just 
for attention in the endless scroll because it's been normalized now. It's normalized. We've all accepted it and we should not. I saw a quote recently encapsulates very well this whole ex experience and that is, oh misery, I've drunk thy cup of sorrow to its dregs, but I am still a rebel. We've seen all sorrow. We've seen all pain. We, we all know of this. We grew up with it. It's been here our whole lives. I started this series off by talking about 9-11 because that began this curiosity that still is killing us, even still, even now. We don't have to be nihilist. We don't have to lose our passions, and we don't have to accept things that we don't like and that we don't want to be in our world. I saw all this shit. I looked up all, almost all this shit on this whole iceberg. I saw some shit that will turn your uh, skin pale as fuck, and that's why I wear so much makeup. My point is, I saw it. It did not kill me. I, I don't necessarily think that there is a message here. I don't think there's something that you can walk away with and be like, I learned something today. <laughs> this is more of me genuinely asking. Let's not encourage this shit anymore. <laughs> if it gets worse than this, I don't know what that would look like. If it gets worse than this, I can't imagine. Uh, just last week, I live in Colorado Springs, which everyone seems to know, so that's fine. Just last week, there was a shooting at a gay nightclub down the street. That is the reality of the world we're living in now, where people so filled with hate can do whatever the fuck they want. Mobilized by the internet, I was having this conversation about, you know, there, there must be such a dis like desensitization going on that people can imagine themselves killing people and that be fine with them. Well, where does that desensitization come from? It comes from this. It comes from this kind of shit. The perpetuating of hate, getting used to seeing it happen. We're all used to it now. Anybody happy about that? Because I bet you, I bet you all the people that died are not super stoked about it. And that's become our reality. And that is the fault of us. It's all of our fault. The, the actions of a reactionary are not like reflective of, of your actions or my actions. If we've encouraged it at all, if we have somehow made it available, we fucking, we fucking suck for that one. There is kind of a big cloud hanging over everything now. Because it's another reminder that, you know, you want to live your life to the fullest. You want to be free. You want to go out. You want to have fun. But you can't. This shit follows you home now. I don't want to be the kind of person to encourage that. So I would much rather sacrifice this wonderful entertainment experience that we're all supposedly having here just to say it's not fucking worth it. Don't engage with it. Don't allow it. If you see exploitation on the internet, fucking do something about it. Say something about it. It's wrong and it's killing the audiences and the creators. I'm never doing this again. I want you to know that. I am never doing this again. I think I've said that before. And the reason that I've said that before and then not followed up on it is because I'm so thoroughly encouraged by both my audience and the platform to do it. But not anymore. Now, there's not going to be some cute animal iceberg or some shit like that. Exclusively, I'm going to be doing things that I'm passionate about and I care about. And that's the only way for me to avoid burnout. So the question is, do y'all want content or do y'all want want no content. <laughs> Because if it's between doing this kind of shit for money, doing something I'm passionate about, or doing nothing, I'm going to pick passion or nothing because this is not content. <sighs> so uh, I guess this is the part where I'm supposed to do some sign off so that people uh, give me money or something. There are links uh, if you really have to. <laughs> Fucking don't give me a dime for this. I don't want to make money off of this anymore. Like, I don't want to make money off of this. I don't, my my channel cracked 100,000 subscribers recently and I felt nothing. I felt literally nothing about it. I got the play button in the mail. I felt nothing. It's not because of something I'm passionate about. I wrote a book, right? I care about this because I wrote this. And also this book is about this thing between blooming and nihilism. And there's nothing I can do because I am a small person. I'm passionate about that. I'm passionate about writing. I'm going to be writing. Writing is great for me. Thanks for encouraging me to do that by the way i would like to continue to do that i make music i've been making a lot of music lately i enjoy the shit out of it beep boop mo noises make my brain go good much better much better than this much better than every second i've done doing this and everybody always acts like this is my big thing like this is the thing i'm gonna be known for or the thing that people care about you know i have people come up to me fairly frequently and tell me that <laughs> it's not Short of literally just shutting it down and being like, I'm a writer now, 
now. I don't really know what else to do to encourage people to see me as more than this because this is a footnote on my life and this is not the whole thing. So if you want to give me money for something, fucking buy my book, you know, buy my music. That's, I don't know. I have nothing else to say. So thank you all for being here. Please consider subscribing, I guess, if you want to see content. I'm going to try and do content that actually is better now. I think we've all gotten this out of our system. I think I've said everything there is to say. If there's more to say, I would be amazed. Either way, thanks for watching. Thank you for listening to me for years. I don't necessarily think that I'm the, the kind of person that's right all the time or has the best take or I'm based. I'm pretty willing to say the thing that everyone's thinking, but no one's actually saying. I hope that's what this means to you. And that's about it. I'll see you next time with something that actually has merit and value. And you have yourself a good day or try. The thing I have continued saying throughout all of this is that live your life, be happy. I think happiness is the rebellion. Just do something you love, feel love. I literally tattooed it on my bucking body. <laughs> like it's real and it's worthwhile. More worthwhile than anything else. Do it because it's important. See you later.